So for that, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, guys, you can put your mobiles on the silent. So I'm going to put my first. So mobile will be on the silent, but make sure that you can see the uh, mobile because if you have any urgent call, so you might let me know if it is too urgent, but I think that you have uh, uh, kept all the uh, appointments off. Okay. So by chance, if any of you is disconnected, so you can immediately call me. Okay. So the mobile is off. So I'm going to switch off my cam and I'm going to share my screen. So once I share, share my screen, so I'm going to, because of the Abdul, I'm having some dragging noise from your side. Make sure that your mic is not just scratching against any surface. Because if, if you are using that hanging mic, and if it is uh, scratching on some on some cloth, no, some... uh, I I suggest we should all keep our mics on mute, and whenever someone wants to speak or say something or ask a question, then they should unmute and say. It. Absolutely fine. So let's keep. Uh, so uh, everybody, please keep your mics on the mute. So I'm going to mute all right now. Okay, okay, fine. So when you need to ask a question or when you need to interact with me. So you can just put a message into the chat box and then you switch on the mic and we can talk again, right? So guys, I'm going to switch on the screen. I mean, switch to my screen. So any one of you can confirm that you can see any one person. Yeah, we can see. Okay, fine. So uh, guys, this is my intro in short. So I'm going to maximize. So this is my intro in short. If you look down, so I started my career, so here in 1990, this is a timeline which has been created using the Microsoft project. So that's my that's where my career started. So th these are all the technical roles till this point. So during these two years from 2002, so these were the years which were spent working in the United States. And after that, I came back to India. So this, my training career actually started in parallel in 2006. So it was literally like five days and here in the, and in the web training. So I was doing like two, two days a week. So it was almost like 28 days in a month. So I was doing something. Okay. So it had to be done because uh, the IT industry is sort of a volatile industry. When the, when, when the user, when the client needs you, you needs, he treats you like a king when he doesn't need you. So the IT, the projects are first to be shelved out. So that's why I went into the training. And uh, so then I built up a reputation for the, myself in 2013. I um, quit my full-time job in the IT industry and then went into the project management consulting. So this is what I'm doing these days. So, so these days my ca ca career is here, okay, in, in, in the yellow rectangle. So I'm doing project management consulting and training both. So because these are, both of them are related to the project management and this is what I do. So that's my intro in short. So my four main topics of the training, which I train people for, this is the PMP, Microsoft Project, Project Online, then the Oracle Primavera. And Primavera has a, um, the Primavera Lite. So they also call it the Primavera Online. So they have no model date on the project online. So that's also a very good product. But the Oracle Primavera that you are going to learn, that's a more detailed product. It is the EPPM, Enterprise Project and Portfolio uh, Management Software. And I'm a certified trainer from the PMI because uh, these days it requires you to have an instructor test and a license to do the PMP training. Not everybody can do it. Okay, so that's all. So now I know, know about you. So guys, the first rule in my training is relax. So relax means that you should be physically relaxed, but mentally you should be focused on the training. And when I'm going to give you a demo, so this is very important. Do not try anything different or experiment. It can lead to wastage of time for all because you know, sometimes uh, something might get stuck, then I'll have to get it unstuck. So then it might get stuck. So guys, this is a very important point. I love questions. So you should ask me the questions because the, the way you ask the questions or the questions that, that you asked, it gives me a feedback that you are interacted with me and interested in the training. And uh, then 
I would be able to understand that where your understanding is currently. I'll make sure that you get a very good practical training and you are in control of the project. Our main aim is to not only learn the Primavera, but be able to control the project. Okay. So the, the topics which take more time will be given more time and uh, mo mobile phones you can put on the uh, si silent mode and I don't think this is going to apply. And today being a Friday for our Muslim friends, it is a day of the prayer. So first of all, let me set this thing right. So uh, first of all, the time zone uh, we have, which will start first is, uh, uh, so um, uh, Najam, you're in the, the Australia. So is your... Yeah, I've already prayed. I've already prayed. You are already done. So yeah. Mazarul, please tell me uh, in, in Indian Standard Time, when would, would you like to go for the prayers? So uh, 1230 to 1.30. Okay. Hour. Okay, so one hour you will be gone out for about 20 minutes. How much time is it going to take you? Are you going to the mosque or you will be praying at, at your place? Today is Friday, so we must go to the mosque. Okay, and what about you, Abdul? So you, you will be also going to the mosque? Uh, the Abdul, can you please switch on your mic? Uh, Abdul? Uh, Abdul, can you please uh, unmute your mobile? Um, I'm sure you, you can hear me. Okay, fine. So I think in Indian standard time, uh, it will be like 120. So we will see how we are going to adjust. Okay, fine. So uh, I'm going to share my screen once more. So I'll have to call Abdul separately. I don't know why he's getting disconnected. Okay, so now... Guys, this training is going to go as per the logical thinking. See, there are three things involved in engineering, maths, science, and logic. Is that right, guys? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Okay, math, science, and logic. So we will use a lot of logical thinking in the project management. So guys, tell me that... So you can un unmute your mic, you, you can tell me out of the sequence which is being shown here randomly, which is the first thing that you will do when you are going to construct a house? Number what do you B. Do first? That will be B. So what you are going to do next? So what does it look like? What should be the next step? The next step will be uh, number D. So I'm the putting here two. And what do you think next? A. No, uh, it will be number C, sorry. Not bad. So that's it. And then? Number A, yeah. of course. Then? And then F and E. Yeah. So yeah. we are going to put here, then the, the, finally we do the painting job. So, you know, th this is the way. So all the examples, see, project management is a gift of these uh, civil engineering. So the civil engineering is the first engineering of mankind. And the proof of the civil engineering is I call it the civilization engineering. So you come to know about these civilizations by looking at this civil engineering done. For example, uh, you can understand about the ancient Egyptians by looking at the pyramids. You can understand about the ancient part of India. If you look at Mohenjo-Daro ancient China, you can learn by looking at their Great Wall of China. So, you know, the, 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 the civil engineering is the first engineering of mankind. Maybe after that, structural, mechanical, electrical, electronic, then uh, uh, computer, uh, software, genetic engineering, you know, all this kind of engineering are in place. But all these engineering, they have a common subject that is the project management. And the best project management tool is the Primavera. That's what we are going to learn. So first we understand the subject and then we understand the tool. You know, that will give us a very long lasting and permanent uh, skill and memory. Okay, so that's what, what we want. So in, in three days, we are going to have a long lasting training and which is going to be uh, nearly the perfect to use. So in introduction, the, the setting the workshop expectation is that you should be able to manage your projects using the Primavera. Then we will talk about project management concept. Then we will learn about the P6 interface that what does it look like? What are the various parts and what do they do? Then we will learn to set up the P6 environment. Then we'll understand the structure of the data which is kept inside the Primavera. That is the organizational breakdown structure and, and, and enterprise project structure. 
then we will learn about the work breakdown structure and activities and activities and task okay in the primavera p6 then we will learn how to work with the resources in primavera then we will learn that how to create the budget in the primavera how to baseline compare and track project and generate the various reports in primavera so we we will be uh, basically tracking the project as per the pmi life cycle process the first is the initiating then planning, then execution, monitoring, control, and closing. So we will make sure that we are covering them all in the Primavera training. So, you know, the, before I go into the training, I want to say the tribute and thanks to the, the founders. So, you know, these are the three civil engineers, civil engineers, guys. Les Saskin, Dick Ferris, and Joel Kopelman. So they conceptualized the Primavera in 1979. 1979, just imagine that where were you in 1979. So in 1983, they started a company called Primavera Systems Incorporated and they launched the software called the Primavera. So guys, in 1983, you can just imagine the computer technologies. So computers uh, were very huge machines, costly machines. They could be afforded by only big businesses because big businesses means that huge amount of data is there. And so they need the computers and they need the software. Right, guys. Now, the Primavera, uh, from the beginning itself, it was created big. It was created to cater to the big business and it still is. It caters to the large projects. So there is no other software greater than Primavera, which could make huge structures in the Middle East and in, in the America and in the Europe. All the big infrastructure projects, they are running on the Primavera only. They have been planned on the Primavera. Okay, and they have been executed on the Primavera. They have been completely, uh, I mean, finished on the Primavera only. Okay, then what happened since the Primavera from beginning was using the Oracle database. So this company, this Primavera was closely interacting with the Oracle. Then what happened that in 2008, the deal was signed in which these three guys, uh, they took their billions and they sold the intellectual property Okay, the original code and all that to the Oracle Corporation. So Oracle Corporation was a big company. It had it has a lot of software engineers. So they further developed the Primavera and they made sure that the Primavera is much more comfortable to use. And today the Primavera can be run on Windows and Linux, not on the Mac directly. If you want to run it on the Mac, then you'll have to uh, install a third party the software to create the Windows operating system. Install it, then you can run. So the Primavera can connect to any kind of the database like uh, originally the Oracle, then SQL Server, SQL Lite, and these days people prefer to use the Oracle Data Center. The Oracle Data Center is running on the cloud technology. It is based in the US and it's very, very fast to keep the data and retrieve from there. So that's good. But for your purpose, for the purposes of training, the version which I have provided you is the latest version. And this is having a database called the SQL Lite, Lite as the name says. So it, this is based upon your laptop only. Okay, you can use it in a standalone manner. You don't need to connect to the internet to do some work on it. So you can use it for a long time. So the Primavera includes the project management collaboration and control capability. See, collaboration comes when you are connected online. Okay, and it also connects to many other software and the ERP systems. So that's also this thing is over because I don't mix it in the class. The installation part is done. So now we are going into the project management concept. So guys, here I want you to interact with me. I'm not expecting a correct answer. What I expect is an interaction. So feel free to give me an answer. Just don't bother about whether it is correct or not. So guys, so if someone can tell me, so what do you feel when you hear the word project? What do you feel about it? When you hear the word project. Like uh, building something from scratch. Okay. Yeah. So that's one. So and, and, and the person. Okay. So, but this is, who is this? Your mic is making a lot of jarring noise. So please mute it and make sure that the mic is not stretching against anything. Okay. So just make sure that uh, you're not blowing into the mic while speaking. So make sure that it is 
See, when we are breath breathing, na, it, when it goes into the mic, so it creates a stormy noise. Okay. Now, next person can say something about what is the project. So, feel free to give me a wrong answer. That's okay. Task will be completed. So, any, any task. Any task. Okay. Anything else? Someone would like to add more or say something different? Okay, guys. Okay, so not, not a problem. So I'll just tell you that what is a project. So the project according to the PMI, so you know, they have defined it. So basically what is a PMI? PMI is Project Management Institute, which was established in 1969 by the engineers only. So various kind of engineers, civil, mechanical, aer aerospace, electrical, electronics, all kind of engineers, they will share their notes and they um, they, they will uh, be basically talk about how they are implementing, how they are managing their project and what are the problems faced by them. So they created an institution to create a common standard. Okay, so according to the PMI, it's a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product or a service. So why it is a temporary and how, how temporary? So it is temporary because it has a definite beginning and end. It is not an ongoing effort because the project is undertaken to create a unique product or service. So it is undertaken with an objective. So when the objective is achieved, then the work in the project ceases. When the objective and team is disbanded, upon pro project completion, not only just disbanded, but the team members are distributed to some other ongoing projects. So another live project uh, where can use the team members and the and the resources. And uh, and the project characteristics in the pro in the project, the product characteristics are progressively elaborated means that if you have a very long term project, so what you can do, you can plan the first year in detail in the prime prim prim era. And the rest of the uh, project, like uh, two, three, four, and fifth year, you can keep, keep it at the top level. Means that this is the total time to do the second phase, third phase, fourth phase. This is the total budget, but don't create the WBS or the detail. Now, what happens in such kind of a project when you work in the first year? So you gain a lot of data and knowledge. You can use it to plan the second year in detail, third year in more detail, fourth year in more detail. So when you are ne nearing the end of the first phase, you can plan for the next one. So like that. So this, this, this is also a technique which can be used. So this is called progressive elaboration. So that's what, what we do. But make sure that it is a temporary endeavor. So why it is a temporary? Now, philosophically speaking, we guys are also temporary, right? Right, right or wrong, guys? Yes, yes. So now, since we are also temporary creatures, so you know, every, every every human being, so who is a client or even myself, so we want to see the fruits of our labor during our lifetimes. So we want to enjoy that. We want to make sure that uh, whatever hard work we have done, so we can get the result and you can use and en enjoy that result. Okay, so that's why we say. Now, the project can be visualized like a triangle. So it is a con 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 consisting of uh, there is a one triangle time and another is called the cost and another is called the scope and the cost and the scope and the fourth one which is embedded between these three is the quality. Okay, so it is called a constraint. So guys, do you understand what is the meaning of the word constraint or do you have a feeling for this word? you have a feeling for this word? So what do you feel when you hear this word constraint? So in this, uh, in this one, it would mean like to limit something, I guess. So constraint means, let me tell you, constraint means limitation of either time or resource or money. Yeah. So, so, so suppose a client comes to you, he says, look, this is the project I want you to get done. Then what do you do? So you look at your engineering process and then you calculate that this pro project is going to take two years to complete. Now your client says, look, I'm going to give you 18 months. 
instead of the 24 months which you have calculated according to your engineering he says please complete this pro project in one and a half years not two years now this situation creates a constraint so constraint means limitation means that you want something fully but you don't get it fully you get only part of it then you tell your client that the budget for the project will be 10 million no then the client says no 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 please give me a discount you get it done in 9 million so that creates a constraint of the budget then there is another constraint suppose you want 100 skilled people of a, a particular type so you are not getting 100 so you are getting a 90 skilled people and 10 people are just freshers you are not so you know there is a constraint of the human resource so constraint means limitation but constraint doesn't prevent you from doing something if you're smart with your planning if you're smartly using the primavera then you can work with the constraint. Now, the first of the constraint and the foremost constraint in the entire universe is time. So time is the most limited thing, the most limited resource which you need in a project. And client does not give you the time which you want. Client always comes with a finish date. He says that, look, this is my project and this is my finish date. If you can do it, then you get it. Okay, otherwise I'm taking the project elsewhere. So if you want to do business with the client, then you'll have to work in the constraint and to work within the constraint. So we need to learn the project management with Primavera. So time has got two components. So I'm going to write their names. Then I'm going to ask you that, what is the meaning? She schedule. So guys, what is duration and what is a schedule? Guess it. Duration, uh, the the time it would take for a certain project to complete, and schedule is like uh, like uh, uh, like you know decide how to uh, do all the work. I guess. Okay, well, someone would like to tell more. Duration is uh. Abdul, Abdul, uh, Abdul, your mic is uh, creating a lot of uh, jarring noise. Uh, we are not able to hear you pro properly. Just, uh, just to see that how you, how you can fix it. Okay. Sir, I'm uh, your, uh, the, I can hear your voice, but the thing is that your mic is giving a very jarring sound. So your your uh, your words are getting mixed up, muffled, jumbled. So uh, fine, I want you to in interact with me. Just try to use another mic or make sure that don't use the external mic. If you're talking through your phone, just to pull out the uh, pull out the external mic and the, and that thing, and try to use the mobile mic only directly because I I believe that would be much better. The mobile mics are much much better than the external ones that yeah. we use. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So can can you please do it and say? Sure, sir. Okay. So after you pulled it, say hi. Did you pull that out? That external mic. Okay. So can you tell me what we what you were saying? Yeah, sir, are you able to hear my voice uh, clearly? Absolutely sir? clearly, absolutely yes. clearly. Now we can hear. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's very nice. Okay, now just uh, tell me what you were saying. Uh, duration. The duration is the amount of time which yes. the scope or a task is able to consume the amount. Whereas schedule, the person or as a scheduler must schedule the accordingly the start and end time of uh, each particular task or a uh, for uh, task or a uh, activity. Yeah, very good, very good. So, so the duration are the units of time. Like what is the smallest unit of time we can represent in the primavera? I'm going to write it. So you guys can take a further hint from there. And I want you to think constantly, okay? So guys, please look at the, ab the abbreviation. So you can guess that what is the first time, then H, then D, then W, then MO, then Y. Guess. M, M, so the, what is the M? Month. No, guys. Month, hour, days. No, start with the smallest unit of time. Like I will, I will give you the hint. Like when I'm going to measure the what is the smallest unit of the hours, measure? Hours, hours, days, months, minutes, meter. hours, days, weeks, months, yeah. years. Yes, exactly. So you know this uh, duration is they represented then what is the schedule the schedule is the start date 
plus time of an activity and to finish date plus time of an activity. Start date and time and finish date plus time. So what happens, guys, let me tell you that the, the duration is provided by the user and the schedule is calculated by the Primavera. So not only Primavera, but any project management software, when it is calculating the schedule, there are two components of the start. So actually the start is con consisting of start date plus time. So internally, every date which is calculated, it has the time component also. You may switch off the time from the display, so that's fine because we don't need to always look at the time unless and until we are doing very small projects. Like if I'm creating a three days training program, then it is very important for me to look at the time. But if I'm doing a three years, some construction project for me, it is not important to look at the time, then I'll be using the bigger units of time. So for me, the time is not important in that case. Okay, so the duration comes from where guys? Where does the duration come from? Guys, tell me, where does the duration come from? Uh, the owner, I guess. The, the duration of each and every activity comes from the... Predefined uh, one, sir. Already uh, predefined uh, time. Engineer. No, that is you. You de decide how much uh, this activity or this task is going to take. Where, where where can you guess what is the duration? You don't have to guess. Basically, you know, when you join any industry, you, are, you have joined as a technical resource. So in the beginning, you are not given the planning job right away because you don't know anything. So you are put through minimum five to six years of the experience. So when you've seen the complete life cycle of the project, then what happens? So, you know, all the memory accumulates in your mind. So that is called experience, right guys? Yeah. The memories of all the work done during the five, six years, it is called experience. From the ex experience, so what you can give is expert judgment. So then you use your knowledge, which is gained during the last five, six years to do the planning. So when you are doing the planning, you are de deciding the activities which need to be done based upon your knowledge, which you have experienced in your own role as a technical, uh, as a technical resource. Then what do you do? When you put the duration into the software, the software will create the schedule that, that is the start date plus time, finish date plus time. So guys, I believe that some of you might have created the schedule painstakingly using the Excel. Y yes or yes, no? Yes, yes, you have done, done that. that. Now, uh -huh. you, now you just imagine you have created a schedule of 500 wow. activities, then the client suddenly increases the uh, increases the requirement. He increases the features of the product. Now, what happens that there are 500 activities already in the Excel and after the 200, you need to insert another 50 activities. Then what happens, guys? Inserting the 50 is easy, but what happens to the activities below that? They need to be rescheduled, right or wrong, guys? Yeah. Their start date yeah. and finish date, start date and finish date, you'll have to change. So yeah. do you think it's easy to do that in the Excel? It's very hard. It's very hard. It's very clerical type. I'm taking time yeah, taking. Yeah, clerical type job. It's not so easy. So scheduling is better left to a specialized software called Primavera. And Primavera is the master of that. And you have to become the master of the Primavera. So the duration comes from the engineer. That is you. It comes from your experience. It comes from your, your knowledge, which you gained during, in, gained in the college. Right, guys? Your BTEC degrees, okay, they teach you a lot of engineering there. So you get an, get a very good idea when you work in the industry that which activities are to be done and which activities should be given, which how much time. Then your total experience also is a consisting of the industrial experience, industrial training, organizational experience and organizational training. Okay, and all these combined to, together put you in, in a very good position to become a planner. The planning manager or planner or a pro project manager. So the engineering knowledge which you earlier used to do the job, so that engineering knowledge is used to do the planning. So in the planning, so you not only create the activities, you create their duration, you create their sequence, then you apply the right resources. So what are the resources? Man, machine, material. 
So guys, coming back to the main point, we are trying to understand time. We understand that time has got two components, duration. Duration is provided by the engineer from his experience and schedule is created by the software. That is the prime aware. Right guys, is this clear? Yeah. Okay, good. Now we, now we come to the next ter terminology. The next ter terminology is also related to another terminology called the price. But the price is outside the purview of the project manager. Project manager is controlling the cost. So guys, but these are related. So guys, can you guess that what is the meaning of price and what is the meaning of the word cost? So guys, just guess. I Sir, don't want an exact related, answer. Cost related to exact amount invested in manufacturing to deliver a product or hmm. price uh, is a price tag or else a, a price tag of that product. Ah, so what is the price tag? I mean, price what is the, the amount of, of the price? Cost included with the profit. Sir, so, so how do you get, get a pro, pro, profit? Okay. Okay. Fine. So good effort. Someone would like to add more or someone would like to fine tune what he said. He is, he is very much right. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, you know, the cost and price guys, let me tell you that what is the similarity between them? Cost and price are both or the amounts of the money. Cost is money and price is also money. Now, where is the cost spent? Cost is basically spent to do the work in the project. So cost is mainly spent for Guys, please read what is the meaning of a cost. The cost is the amount of money which is needed to do the work in the project. And it is mainly spent on what? Please read that. Main machine, materials, cash, subcontracted work. Subcontracted work. Because uh, for the subcontractors, we are not going to measure his main machine material. We are just interested in the result. For example, if I'm doing uh, constructing a building, so in the building, I might hire an electrical contractor. So I'm the main the pro project company. So I hire the electrical contractor. Electrical contractor, I'm not going to measure. I just tell him the result which I want. And then I ask him that what is the lump sum cost he's going to charge me to get that done. Okay. So main machine material, I would be measuring uh, if the people are working from my own team. I'm going to use my own machines. Then I'm going to use my own materials. So they will account for the cost of the project. So cost means the amount of money which is used to do the work. So when I am basically, you know, quoting to the client, so the amount of money which is quoted to the client is called the price. And what is the price? Price is basically equal to value of product, right? So what is the product? The product is the outcome of the project. So outcome of the project is a highway. Highway is a product. Outcome of the product is a software. Software is a product. Outcome of the project is a shopping mall, a building, a residential complex. So that is a product. And sometimes it could be also a service. Okay. Now I'll just tell you that what is a service. Suppose we launch a satellite for our client country. Okay, so one of the countries in the Europe, they approach us, a small U European country, they want to launch a communication satellite. So we launch their satellite. So the outcome of that project is a service. So that also has a price. So the price is also an amount of money. Cost is an amount of money. And difference between price and cost is the profit. And profit runs the organization. And the cost management is done by the project manager and price management is done by the marketing manager. How the marketing manager is doing the price management? 
he is trying to make sure that the marketing effort is creating a good image about the company and the clients have a good perception to give the project and the clients have the good perception to give the maximum price possible despite the competition right guys so is, is that clear so price is basically pushed and projected by the marketing guys right and the cost is basically managed by the by the project manager why because you cannot always push up the price due to the competition the competition creates a limit on the price but if you optimize on the cost then you can maximize on the profits right guys is that true if you if you opt optimize the cost by rightly planning your main machine material and cash without wasting or without using less so then you can optimize the cost so the cost management is done by the project manager and price management is done by the marketing manager right so they he tries to push up the price but after a limit so that can't be pushed so we make sure that we optimize then then we come to the scope See, scope is uh, related to another word called the requirement. So, guys, I would like you to guess the word requirement. Please guess it. Requirement. Works to be done. Hmm? Works to be done. Okay, then what is the scope? No, requirement will be the material and the machinery and the amount of labor and the amount of people, the technical and non-technical required for uh, some project or work. Mm -hmm. Anything else, guys? Would someone like to dif differ? Okay, so guys, but let me tell you with a story. I will illustrate this. Let's say there are four people, they go to a restaurant and they're seated. Now, what, what happens? The waiter will come to them and the waiter will ask, sir, what would you like to have? Then four people, they have four preferences of food. So the waiter is going to note food item number one, two, three, four. Right, guys? Right or wrong? Right. right. Yeah, yes, sir. Now, the, uh, the food which is noted, one, two, three, four items, so they are requirement of food, right? Requirement yes. of food for these four gentlemen. Now this re requirement, he will take the list in his hand and he will take it to the back end. In the back end, there is a kitchen. Every restaurant or a hotel, they have a kitchen. And the kitchen is managed by a role called chef, right? Chef is the main person who is managing the kitchen. Now the waiter will tell the chef, look, this is the four items, four food items required by the customers so he will look at the list he will tell 20 minutes so the waiter will come back and tell the customer sir please wait for 20 minutes your food will be cooked uh, fresh and ready now what the chef will do the chef will ask his team members to do some activity what kind of activity he will ask one person to cut the vegetable cut the meat mix the spices and uh, you know he will ask one uh, one person to fry something boil something blend something bake something put something into the microwave put something into the blender he will give them various activities to do right or wrong yeah right right because then what is the scope the scope is the work to be done Guys, please read this. Guys, please re read this. Work to be uh, to be by the engineering team. Oh, oh I the... missed the word done. Work to be done by the... Work to be done by the engineering team to meet the client's requirement of the product. Oh. Now, let me tell you that what is the product?
So guys, please read this re requirement. Requirement for the of the product features and facilities are detailed by the client. Yeah, features and functionalities as detailed by the client explains that what is my requirement and requirement is usually gathered and managed by the business analyst. There is a role here in the IT industry, but in some other industry, I believe that it can be gathered by on-site engineer or it can be gathered by the marketing people. This has to be do documented and signed by the client. So once the client has signed off his requirement, then what happens? The scope is means detailed work to be done. It is created by the engineering team, the product engineering team. So what do they do? After looking at the requirement document, they create an engineering design, a technical design in which they create a prototype also. Sometimes you have to give a proof of concept. So you can create this proof of concept either via a scale model, which is created as a small scale model of a building or a 3D walkthrough or a wireframe de design in some AutoCAD or some designing software these days. These days we prefer to do that. Every industry or every kind of engineering use, whether it is civil, mechanical, electrical, or even the IT industry, when we create our data centers, we use the AutoCAD, so which gives an idea to the client that what should be there so, and what I want, so how it is going to look finally. So what do we do? We create a prototype. Okay, we create a sim simulation and then we take the client feedback. So after uh, three, four times, we take the iteration of the feedback. So then the design is final. So when the design is final, then we devise the work breakdown structure. Inside the work breakdown structure, which are the logical group of the activities, we put the act activities and the achievement of the activities by marking them with a milestone. So that is called the scope of the project. Scope of the project simply stated the work to be done by the engineering team requirement is the wish list. Okay, so we can say it is sort of a wish list of the client. So client wish list regarding, uh, re re regarding the requirement of the product and features. Right, guys, is this clear? So yeah. wish list of the product and so client gives you a wish list and you, you create an engineering design. You create a prototype, then you get it verified by the client. So once the client has verified it looks good, then you will do the work on the actual execution. So now in between these three triangles sits the quality. So what is the meaning of the quality? Quality means acceptance criteria of the client. So let me write it very simply stating. So a quality is misunderstood by the people, but you got to understand it. Guys, please read. What is the quality? Acceptance criteria based upon performance level of various products, features, and functionalities. Yes, guys. Now, let me tell you very clearly, the scope will help you create the products, features, and functionalities. But what is the performance level of those? That is called the quality, right? For example, so, so, suppose uh, you guys... Suppose you want to buy a new TV. You already have a TV, but you want, want to buy a new one. So, you know, they, there must be some acceptance criteria to buy a new one. So, guys, what is the key performance indicator of a television set? Key performance or indicator. Or you can say that what is the key quality indicator? So guys, can you tell me what are the key quality indi indicators of brand? Number no. one brand? No. No. See, okay. see, you are an engineer. Think of it. I'm writing one. Uh, I've re written one. Then you tell me the next one. 
contrast resolution resolution yes contrast then after that led or lcd resolution no that is not a the quality it can be any technology re re resolution has to be good underlying technology could be led lcd or what resolution then what color depth the software system no the color depth color color depth okay so it should be able to represent a wide range of color so yeah. contrast resolution color depth then there is one more so i'm sure you can uh, ag agree with this yeah yes sir brightness and i'm sure that uh, you can agree with this uh, one more yeah right yeah the yes, t t tv just shows picture that won't be enough then you say oh Oh, that's very dim. It means that the brightness is a parameter which is low. Then you say, oh, everything is fine. I can't hear the sound properly. I'm not able to understand the person or the news reader. It sounds very muffled. That is the sound quality. Is it? Then you say that, okay, everything is fine. But you know, I'm not able to see the various shades of gray or the in-depth of the flowers or the colors of a scene. Then the color depth matters. Then the resolution, it says, oh, that looks grainy. It means that the re resolution is not fine. Then you say the contrast, the colors are merging. I'm not able to see the contrast between the dark and the light. Okay, if you see a dark room, so it shows you some uh, faded whiteness. And when you're lo looking at a bright scene, it is showing you a dimness. So it means that the contrast is not good. You know, these are the key quality indicators of a TV. This is called an acceptance criteria of, of a TV, right guys? So, you know, what you will do, you will write this acceptance criteria, then you will go to the shop and the product that you see in the shop, if that is better than your ex existing TTV set only, then you, you will buy it, right? Guys, I'm sure you are not going to buy something which is already existing in your home. If you want to buy a new one, right or wrong, guys? Yeah, of course. Of course, the, yes. the TV at home also shows a picture and the TV in the shop is also showing a picture. But... Which one is showing a better one? You will say that is a better quality product. Right, guys? Is, is, is that clear? So, guys, yeah, yeah. tell me, would you buy anything uh, defective in quality? No. No, you won't accept it. Now, let me tell you clear, clearly, neither will your client. Okay? So, is that clear? So, right now, you are the, basically the working for someone's business. So guys, let me tell you, if you are going to work in your business, so you would like to take care of all this time, scope, cost and quality. Because guys, tell me that wouldn't you like to uh, deliver to your customer on time or not? Yeah, of course. If you are going to run your own business, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. If you are going to run your own business, would you not like to make a profit for yourself to run the business for a long time? Mm-hmm. So then you will do cost management. Then you would you not complete the total activities to create the complete product, right or wrong? So you will do scope management. And would you create something which is acceptable to the client? Client says, oh, very nice. Yes, good. It fits my requirement. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. Would you not like to hear such a compliment? Mm -hmm. Definitely, because if you hear such a compliment, it will ensure two things. One, repeat business from the client and the client's good word of mouth within his uh, circle of influence. Right, guys? So that will en ensure a repeated business. All businesses are successful. They have got repeat orders from the same client or new, new, new clients. Right? So quality is the thing which makes a product valuable and, qu and quality creates the price. And the price minus cost is the profit. So more value you put into the product and more accurately working and good performing products. So they create a very good value. They create good quality. And quality is basically leading to the profit. Okay, so that's what the Japanese companies are doing. So guys, you have to take care of the triple constraint. And that's why we are going to use the Primavera because the Primavera steps in to control the time, cost, and you can control all the work to be done and you can ensure a good quality by controlling the time scope and cost because you have a limitation here. You are not given unlimited time or cost and uh, and you have to create the quality with planning. Quality is not by chance. 
quality is by planning right guys is this clear quality is not by accident quality is by planning to be done by the engineering team to get the desired performance level so is that right guys yeah okay yes. fine so now we 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 go to the next one so the next one is like this so we in the planning so we identify the total st stake uh, stakeholders and the scope so stakeholders are those people those who are involved in the project so you are a stakeholder your boss is a stakeholder your client is definitely a primary stakeholder and your stakeholders are your vendors suppliers and your portfolio manager your company director you know the stakeholders they want the project to be successfully completed okay so they feel positive about the project they are optimistic they have got very high hopes but the responsibility of the delivering the project is on the shoulders of the project manager so the word project manager has got various meanings so which i have in interpreted during my tenure as a project manager we say pm so you know one of the most important part of the uh, project manager ma management is people management guys people management so why is that so people management means that you have to lead a team of people to get to the objective right guys can you do without the people can you do without guiding them can you do without creating a plan for them can you do without delegating the right task no. you can't you have to manage the people and then you have to manage the profit profit management you have to do so guys what is the profit profit means that optimally planning the resources so that you can reduce the cost of the project to a point where you have the minimum cost but the maximum quality without affecting the quality because quality is the value for which the client is paying the price but the client creates a pressure right guys is that true mm -hmm. okay so you have to understand that you are doing the profit management then you are also doing the process management what kind of process industrial project I mean, industrial process, then your organizational processes, then the quality processes, project management processes. You have to understand which pro process are going to be applied and you have to manage them. Then you have to do the problem management, right? If any mm -hmm. problem is faced during the execution of the project, you have to sort out that problem. So you are the problem manager also. Then you are the Another management you have to do, that is the productivity management, right guys? Productivity. Productivity means that the people, those who have been provided to you, you are to ensure that most of the time they are working, they are not idling their time. There should be no idling of the machines and people, right guys? Yeah. If there is an idling of the, the machines and there is an idling of the, the people, then what happens? It is, it is going to increase the cost of the project and in turn that is going to reduce the profit. It's going to eat into the profit, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Profit is the gap or the difference between price and cost. If the, See, you can't push the price, right, guys? You know it. Why? Because the client always fixes the price. He says, no, the price is not flexible. This is my price that I'm going to pay. If you just tell me if you can complete the project within this price. So what do you do from the, from the price? You calculate backwards. So how much pro profit you want? And that way, then you are going to calculate your cost and you are going to make sure that the cost is not escalated during the execution of the project. If the cost is escalating, then what happens? The difference between and the price and the cost is reduced. So you are productively using and applying the resources, men, machine, material. Okay. The material should not be wasted and nor should be the man hours or the machine hours right guys is this clear so yeah. you have to do productivity management also then you have to do uh on top on top of it all you have to do promise management so guys what is the promise so guys tell me can your company get a uh, project without signing a contract with the client no no so guys, what is a contract? Contract is a written promise, right or wrong? Mm -hmm. Contract Thank is you. a written promise to the client that we will create this product for you within this budget. These are the main thing. So who is going to manage that promise? The promise is signed by your boss. 
boss unloads it on your shoulder so you are the promise manager right guys yeah okay and then on top of it all you have to guys do you know the, what is this to handle all, all this hmm? project no product management manager <laughs> master okay right and pm yeah. also means right yeah so what you should be the perfect in you should be perfect in communication guys it really matters a lot if you if you are in the role of the project manager so what kind mm -hmm. of communication verbal written you must have seen in the jd now how do you communicate you also communicate through the primavera see guys when you are creating a primavera plan when you show that gantt chart to the people actually you are communicating that how we plan to do the project right guys is this clear Mm -hmm. you have to be a perfect man in your communication in your appearance in your presentation in your spellings and in your knowledge of the technology in your knowledge of the project management so there are a lot of things you got to take care of so definitely when we do the planning we apply all these things in the background so you know all these things are in your background in the back of your head managing the people managing the profit managing the process managing the problem making sure that everybody is working productively uh, productively people are not wasting their time in the project though machine is sitting idle and materials are not being misused they are not being wasted and you have to manage the promise so you have to finish the project in a timely manner and you have to be a primavera master right guys is this clear Yeah. Okay. Fine. Good. If you want to be a primavera master, then you work hard with me for three days, and definitely you will master it, and uh, definitely it will be good for you and me. So what we do, we identify the deliverable. Now, what is the deliverable? Deliverable is the part of a product. For example, I am constructing a shopping mall. So I'll tell you that what are the parts which have to be done. Actually, it is a four-story shopping mall. so the first deliverable for which the client is going to make me an installment payment is basement level minus 2 parking after that basement level minus 1 parking then ground floor first floor second floor third floor fourth floor so guys how many deliverables are there five okay it means that the product has been divided into five parts so when each of the part is completed i'm going to get a installment of the payment right so guys the client pays you for the achievement right guys is it clear yeah the client pays you for the achievement client you mean uh, milestones yeah also right see the okay. milestones are the dates on which the deliverables are shown to the client sir the basement minus 2 is complete so what the client will do he will examine the basement minus 2 according to his quality acceptance criteria but this criteria has already been agreed between you and the client so when you complete your work you will run the basement minus 2 under this quality acceptance criteria when your quality assurance and control team finds that it is matching the criteria of the client also so only then you will invite the client to have a look after the client is satisfied or the client may ask you to fine tune something or um, the fix some small little thing so after that he will write an acceptance letter he will tell you basement minus 2 is meeting my experience uh, acceptance criteria and i am satisfied with the work done and you you can write to my uh, you can raise an invoice to me so you raise an invoice and uh, you get the the payment so that's how the businesses work okay so for that if you want to reach uh, the acceptance criteria so then you'll have to plan all the activities so you will be planning two kind of activities activities which make the product and ac activities which check the quality of the product right guys both the activities have to be planned in check plan do act okay like that so to produce the deliverable 
identify and optimize use of the resources. So guys, tell me what are the resources in a project? Main material and machine. Yes, main and machine material. Man, uh, and money, also, money. Also, also the cash. So every, every engineering domain is using main machine material. Whether it is civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, software engineering, even if you are making a movie, so you need main machine material, right or wrong, guys? Okay, and plus you need some planning for the cash expenditure for the subcontracted work. Every industry is using these resources. Every kind of project, every kind of engineering needs them. Then we have we we have to evaluate if the target dates may be met. Target dates for what? Target date of the milestone. So if I'm doing this uh, shopping mall project, I have a target date for basement minus two. Then I have a next target date for basement minus one. I have a target date for completing the ground floor, first, second, third, fourth, and so on. Then we identify the risk and plan to minimize them. That activity also has to be included into the project activity. So guys, tell me that what is the meaning of the word risk? So I'm I'm sure that you have used this word and you can risk tell assessment. You mean uh, before starting a project? No, no. Uh, just the risk. What is the meaning of the word risk? So what do you feel it means? In this case, it could mean like uh, like will will it be delivered or not in time? So that could be a risk. No, guys, that is not a risk. Okay. This means an uncertain event. If it occurs, it can cause a loss to the product or the project okay. itself. Right? Okay. That is okay. a risk. So okay. what are the risks which, which are predictable? Rain is a predictable risk. But earthquake is an unpredictable risk. Right? So we have to identify the risks which are known ones. Knowns are like rain, fire, falling of a crane, falling of a big equipment and people injuring themselves on the site and uh, disruption in the supply of materials okay disruption in the su supply of external resources so there is risk in a project and we have to plan to minimize them so we so guys you must have kept that in uh, you must have noticed that in big buildings the fire ex extinguishers are kept in a very visible location why so there is a risk of fire if there is a risk of fire then how do you minimize that in case of a fire what do you do any person, even if a new person is visiting the building, he can see the fire extinguisher and he can use it to put out the fire. Right, guys? Is that clear? So in the project also, the project team, the planning team can foresee the risk based upon their knowledge and experience and they should create a plan to minimize them. Okay, then provide a baseline plan. What is the baseline plan? Baseline plan is a plan which is having the best values of the schedule best values of the resources and the best values of the materials. So men machine materials have the best plan and which is a minimum optimal time plan and based upon which you will start doing the work and you will do and the work and you will uh, compare the actual time with the plan time. You will compare the actual resources consumed with the planned uh, resources and you will compare the actual cost with the planned cost. So the baseline plan is a plan which is highly um, the re reliable to compare and determine if you are having a variance in the execution. And then you can control the project. And, and in the planning, you have to assist in stakeholder communication. How? By creating the various reports in the Primavera. So you can create the reports in the Primavera or you can export the data to some other software like Excel and you can um, you can assist in the stakeholders uh, communication and you can also assist the management to think ahead and make informed decisions. So that is the aim of the planning and you are the main person to help in all this. So guys, let, let us look at a hypothetical situation number one and two. In the situation number one, the project manager tells his team, so you know, we are not going to spend too much time in the planning. We are going to get the job started quickly, right? So we will quickly start uh, start our work quickly. The sooner we start, the sooner we can finish the project. This is what he thinks. Now, what happens when he does the work, he realizes that it is not matching up to the quality acceptance criteria of the client. So he will undo. Guys, do you see that it is taking a U-turn? 
So after doing the undo, he will do a redo. So this is how the project will proceed. Guys, do you see the loops? Hmm? And then the, the final product is shown to, to the client. Client says, okay. Right, guys? Is it clear? Do you see these loops here? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Now, in the second case, the project manager says that we will use the PMI process and Primavera to plan and we will take a little bit more time, but the reasonable time to create a plan and we will create a baseline. So the baseline is nothing, but the baseline is the very reliable plan having very good estimates of uh, uh, the estimates of schedule of the resource man machine material and the cost. So when they start the work, the work looks like this. Guys, do you see this uh, green line? Hmm? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you, they're trying to be very near to the baselines, but sometimes it varies, then they control, they bring it back. Then it varies, and then they bring it back. And mostly it is staying near the baseline. And this is how the project is completed. And then they show it to the client. Client says, okay. But when they are using the planned values in the project, they have certain benefits. So guys, what are the benefits of planning? Can you please read? Uh, saving of saving time, cost, and resources. Okay. So now, in the first instance, the organization is able to deliver 10 projects per year. In the second instance, the organization size is the same re regarding the men and machine, but they are able to deliver 14 projects per year. So guys, tell me that which organization is going to uh, make more profit and last for a very, very long time? Number two. One or two. One or two. Which no. is going to make more pro pro profits and last long? Two. Yeah, number two. Because okay. they are minimizing on the time and the resource, but they are creating the same value. But they are creating more value. They are able to deliver more projects. So, you know, due to which they might have reserves and they might be able to face these situations like uh, we faced during the COVID. So, you know, during the COVID, the companies which were not so efficient, you know, they got... Uh, dismantled okay they lost their manpower they lost their the assets and all that and all the organizations those were very cost effective so you know they had some resources and they had some cash reserves to pay to their people so they kept their people on the payroll for even at half the salary and they managed to spring back into business after the corona was controlled right so that is the benefit of the planning and you must do planning using the uh, Primavera, which is the best tool and the number one tool in the world. Okay. Now, guys, please re read this. Project fail in the beginning, not in the end. So what does it mean that if you started with a poor plan, so the result will not be immediately visible. So in the end, then the client will say, oh, that does not meet my acceptance criteria. So your you, you then it will be a fa failure. So guys, make sure that you have a good engineering drawing, you have a good work breakdown structure, and of course, to represent that well and manage that well, you have prime aware. So is, is that right? Okay, now, what next? So then, what is the project management? So project management is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities in order to meet or exceed stakeholder needs and expectations so you should uh, you should apply your knowledge of the project management knowledge of the tool knowledge of your engineering knowledge of your experience all this and who is a stakeholder so stakeholder is uh, is a person individual or organization they are involved in the project like a client is a stakeholder you are a stakeholder your boss is a stakeholder your pmo project management uh, the office is a stakeholder your Financing bank is a stakeholder and your suppliers and your vendors and your subcontractors, they are the stakeholders. So, you know, all the stakeholders, uh, those in the project, they are affected either positively or ne ne negatively by the outcome. So it's a great responsibility on your shoulders to make sure that you always have a consistently 
positive outcome. So what is a positive outcome? The positive outcome is quality, acceptance, and satisfaction of the client. And client paying the full price. Right, guys? Is that right or wrong? Correct, correct. So think of it, if you're going to run your own business, how you're going to run it? You, are, you would like a complete uh, satisfaction of the client. Okay, so that is the stakeholder management. So stakeholders, they think positively and they want a positive outcome of the project. Okay, and the responsibility is on you. So guys, now we come to the two terminologies because we are using the Primavera. So we have to understand these things, the, the sub-project and the program. So, so guys, do you have any idea of what is a sub-project possibly? Hmm? Any idea that you must have heard this word, sub-project. So do you understand that what is the context of the sub-project? So basically there is a big project and then there are smaller, tiny projects underneath. So you give them out to someone else. Correct. Correct. Very good. Very good. Very good. So thank you for the answer and thank you for the interaction. See, I'll make this clear. So how is that? See, do you see a black strip here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So guys, this is a contract which I have got from the government. So what is this pro project about? This is a hundred. So I have to construct a hundred kilometer highway. Okay. So this that is the project. Now, on this project, there is a special requirement of, of the client, uh, that is the government. The, the government says that since this uh, uh, since this highway is running in the middle of a desert, we don't have any electrical grid system. So we want you to put uh, the, uh, the lighting system using the solar lighting. So during the daytime, the batteries will charge and during the nighttime, the batteries will provide the electricity to the light. So then what happens? So guys, let me represent this. Okay. So you can see the lights here. So the red dots. Now what happens? I ask my team members. So guys, can you do the solar lighting engineering? So my team says, boss, we can learn it, but you know, it will not be so good to meet the acceptance criteria of the client. It is better to be outsourced to a subcontractor. R right guys? Because okay. this is a specialized engineering and all my team members are mostly civil and mechanical engineers. They're not sort of the solar or electronic engineers mainly. Maybe a, 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 a couple of electrical engineers are there, but uh, they are into the heavy cabling side, not into this solar. They said that should be subcontracted, right guys? That's re re reasonable. Now, what happens? This highway is uh, referred to as main product. Okay. Guys, is this clear? Th this yeah. is called the main product. And the so solar project is called the component. Right, guys? Now, yeah. I subcontract it out to a, a another company. So they are specialized into doing the solar lighting projects. And guys, tell me, can I give them more time than I have? No. No. Can I give them more money that I'm going to get? No. No. So I set their time limit and I set a budget for them within which they have to finish it. And I tell them, look, this is my acceptance criteria. <coughs> I set them an acceptance criteria that the batteries should be charged during the daytime within a maximum of three hours. And the lighting should be provided for minimum 12 hours. And the lighting should be there on the rainy days also. You know, I say that this is my acceptance criteria. Then I divide the project into four parts. Okay. Why do I divide the project into four parts? Because these are the milestones of the client. One, two, three, and four. So for every 25 kilometer, I'm going to be get paid by the client. So, you know, my first part should, should be completed at 25 kilometers. Right, guys? Then yeah. next 25 kil kil kilometers, I will get a payment. 
and when I complete another 25 kilometers, I'm going to get, get a payment. And another 25 kilometers, when com completed, I'm going to get a payment. Now, is to tell me, should the sub-project come up with a component which does not meet the acceptance criteria? If that happens, am I going to get paid by blaming the contractor? No. No. So, you know, so checking the work done by the contractor is whose responsibility? It's also my job. It is my responsibility. So if I tell the government, look, subcontractor made a mistake. So you please make my payment. Uh, please hold uh, his deduct his payment. Then no, the client will say no. I'm not concerned that whether you are using your own people or whether you are using a subcontractor to complete this part of the project, it is your responsibility. You have selected the wrong subcontractor. Right, guys? Is it clear? That is the point of view of the client. So the sub-projects are the projects which are creating the components which are often contracted out, then it is your responsibility to set the time limit, the budget limit and acceptance criteria. So your acceptance criteria should be same or a little bit stricter than the acceptance criteria of your client as signed between you and your client in your contract. So you will sign a contract with your subcontractor that what is your time limit, what is your, uh, what is your uh, budget and what is your acceptance criteria. So acceptance criteria which you write for your subcontractor should be the same or a little bit stricter. It could be a little bit stricter like the sub, uh, like the contract you have signed with your client so that he comes up with something good. Right guys? And it fits well and it is complimentary. So it is written in the contract that there should be no dark patch between two lights. Okay. And each of the lights should be having a brightness of 600 lumens. So, you know, that is an acceptance criteria, okay? Quality is not by chance and quality is not vague. You have to have a clear acceptance criteria listed out so that it will be checked by your subcontractor after finishing his work. Then you will check it before accepting it. Then the government will check it before accepting it and making your payment. Right, guys? Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that is a sub-project. Now, guys, what is a program? So let me write here something. I'm going to write here something. For, for example, space program. Okay, so in India, we have got uh, various space projects. I'm not talking about program. No, what is the project? One project where we are launching communication satellites, then we are launching the weather satellites, then we are launching the geosensing satellites, then we are launching the GPS satellites. Then we are launching uh, the uh, the. Um, but then we are launching certain uh, the monitoring satellite like the spy satellites. So you know that is different projects. Now, guys, what is the common bit be between these launch? These between these launches. Say, what is the common thing between communication satellite launch and the weather satellite launch? You, they need to be, they all need to be synchronized after launch. No, they need not be synchronized. The common thing is that they all use the same rocket science. Yeah. yeah. So rocket yeah. science is common between these launches. The rocket is a truck. It's a sort of a truck only, you know, I see it like that. So it's a truck which carries the satellite into the intended orbit and leaves it there. Okay. It is, we are doing for our, and we are doing for many other, but 35 client countries. So, so we, we call it a space program. So in the space program, so what do we say that if the, if the solution in is found in one of the projects, it can be used in rest of the projects also, right? So they have a broad general goals and managed in a coordinated way. So we can share the same scientist. We can share the same te technology between the project to project and that optimizes the cost of every project. If each of the project is going to solve the same problem multiple times, that's going to cost a lot of time and money. Right, guys? So yeah. it's better that we create a program and we um, band them together. And if there is a research and there is a benefit in one project, we can share that benefit in the next project also. Right? Okay, so is that clear? So that yeah. is a program. So Primavera can manage the sub-projects and Primavera can manage the programs as well. Okay, so that's why I have included these two terms. So programs is a set of projects which are related in technology and related in the outcome. 
so that the resources can be shared, technology can be shared, platform can be shared between the projects and which will optimize the cost of each of the project and reduce the delivery time. And sub projects are component of a project that are often contracted out. Like if something can't be, uh, something is very specialized and can't be done by your team or it is too small in value to be done by you. If I'm constructing a shopping mall, so I will, um, the, I will um, the subcontract the landscaping part. We are an engineering company. The landscaping is the job of people, those who understand plants and uh, trees. So I'll just tell them that, look, this is uh, what kind of landscape we want. We want some big trees and small small flowers and all that. So they will make it look beautiful. They will install the fountains and the trees. So, you know, that will enhance the looks of the building. But my guys are good civil engineers. So they are not into the landscaping, but they have it in the diagram. So, so that will be done by some subcontractor. So that will be a sub-project. Sub right, guys? Is that clear? Okay, so now let's see that what is the next. So guys, this is the life cycle of a project. So the first thing, the first process which happens in a project is the initiating. So what is the initiating? Initiating means that we are doing the initial groundwork. So we are initially interacting with the client. Client comes to us with a, uh, with a project, then we provide a proposal. So in that, so what happens when we when we undertake a project, we do a commercial feasibility and a technical feasibility. Is it possible to do it technically? Yes or no? Is it possible to do it profitably? So guys, would you take a project if technically it is possible, but it is not giving you any profit? Tell me yes or no? No. No, you won't do it because you are running your business. You are not running a charity. Okay, mm -hmm. everything can be done technically, but then you say, why I'm here? I'm here to do business. I'm not here running a charity. Okay, so you will and the, and analyze the project technically and commercially also. If that goes through, it gets a green flag after the initiating, after estimating the size of the project and the top level risk and the top level milestone. So you will start detailing the work to be done in the project. So guys, number two is what? Planning. Planning. So what do you plan? You plan the schedule, you plan the cost, you plan the resource, you plan the quality, you plan for anticipated risk, you plan the communication management, you plan the procurement. What is procurement? Getting the materials and stuff from outside the project. Vendor. In, okay, outside, yeah, from the vendors. So, so that is called procurement. So you'll have to plan that and time it and you'll have to do stakeholder management and you have to do in integration management so that all these are detailed out in the PM box. But I'm bringing something here so that you can understand in context of the Primavera because very soon we are going to get into the Primavera. After the planning is completed, so what do we do in the number three? Execution. Execution means doing the work as planned. Right, yeah. guys? Yeah. Doing the work as planned is called execution. But when you are ex executing, you are al also doing the number four. So guys, what is written in the number four? Monitoring and controlling. See, monitoring means watching, controlling means taking a corrective action. So guys, let me ex explain to you with a situation. S suppose you are driving your car. So driving the car is execution. Right, guys? Yeah. Okay. Now, when you are driving the car, you are watching the traffic going around you. Mm -hmm. So what, what is that? Monitoring. Mon monitoring. So you see another vehicle is trying to come very close to you. So what you are going to do? You are going Control to get, get away from that one. So you are going to maintain a safe distance from any other person making a mistake. Right, guys? So what would that be called? Control. Controlling. So you are driving the car you are watching the traffic around you and you are keeping your car safe. So how? By controlling the car. So this is what you do in a project also. You are doing execution, monitoring, controlling. After your project is completed, then you do the closing process. So this is the life cycle of a project. Now, let me tell you, where does the Primavera fit in? So Primavera fits in like this. Guys, do you see the red uh, highlighter? Yeah. So this is the yes. area 
covered by the prime avera. Right, guys? Is this clear? Yeah. A part of the initiating is out because that could be mostly like your discussions meeting. So discussions and meeting, they don't require the Primavera. But when you move into the documentation phase, yes, Primavera has a good management interface for storing the document. It can store the document. It can retrieve the document. It has got a very good search facility also. You can put thousands of documents into the Primavera and you can search them out. You can put maps, drawings, document, PDF, doc, Excel, everything you can put into the Primavera and Primavera can store it, it into the database. And if you want, you can search them by the criteria or yeah. by the search words. Right, guys? Is this clear? Yeah. Okay, fine. So then what do we do next? So what is the next thing? Let me see. Yes, this is a very sensitive thing for, for you to know. Very, very important. So guys, just imagine that you are running your own business. Okay, you will find this training very, very meaningful. So guys, this is the, um, this is the, this is the in initiating phase. This is the planning phase. And this is the execution. And execution plus monitoring and controlling phase. And this is the closing phase. Okay. Now, if you're spending $1 here in the initiating, then proportionately you could be spending $3 here. But when you move into the ex execution phase, you are using a lot of men material machine. You could be spending something like, uh, I can say $200. Okay. And in the, in, and in the closing, you could be spending like, $2 to close the project. So guys, where is the maximum amount of the funds being spent? Execution. Execution, yes. Because the execution uses the main machine material and it uses the services of the third party. Now guys, so tell me, correcting a mistake is cheaper in which phase? Initiating, planning or the execution? If you make a mistake, where it would be cheaper? Planning. In the initiating and planning, both. If your concept oh. is not clear, you can again redesign the concept. Then you plan for it using the Primavera and you create a product day design in the AutoCAD. You're not even printing these days. You're yeah. not even using the, the paper to share the in information, right? <laughs> if you change a plan, you can spend another two days to reach, uh, rewrite the plan and you have something which is nearly perfect. But if you take a faulty plan to the ground and, and, and if you construct structures and if you have to pull down the structures because they are not meeting the safety or the acceptance criteria or the client, so guys, will not that be a greater loss? Yeah. Yes, that would be great. So that is the lesson learned here. So guys, according to the PMI, 68% to 70% of the project total Budget is spent on execution. So guys, be very careful. So how uh, so how how to be very good here? So so guys, you have to be very 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 good in applying the primavera here in the initiating and the planning. And of course, during the execution also, you have to do the monitoring and control. If you start with a very good plan, but if you do not monitor and control in the green phase. So then again, your problems can arise and you can face a loss. Okay, see, in the, in, in the closing, very little things can go wrong. But of course, in the closing phase, which is the pink part, so you have to basically make sure that the client's acceptance criteria has been met and you fine-tune uh, something very quickly before the time runs out. Right, guys? Is this thing clear? Hmm? So guys, now do you see that what is the importance of the Primavera? Primavera is important in initiating, planning, execution, monitoring, control. And during the closing, it's more like administrative thing in the Primavera. You are not tracking anything. Mostly you are making sure all the checklists for the closing which have been created, they are completed, right? For the quality acceptance criteria. So, so guys, that's all on the project management part. 
Now I am uh, com coming back to the previous slide. Okay. See, all these slides have been share shared with you. I'm coming back to the first one. So guys, this take a snapshot in your mind. Triangle. Do you see the triangle? Time, scope and cost and in between is the quality. Now guys, do you understand that when you get a project in hand, you should you should evaluate what you should you should evaluate whether you can match the quality acceptance criteria within the limit of the time and cost if you don't do it then what is going to happen you are going to create an unacceptable product and does anybody pay for something which is defective or unacceptable Guys, tell me clearly, yes or no? No, no. No. So in the beginning, you have to apply the triple constraint. You can do what is called the level one plan in the Primavera and make sure that whatever is the price which is being offered by the client and whatever the time limit set by the client, it is good enough to achieve the quality. So guys, as engineers, it is our responsibility. We should not create any structures or buildings or something like that. Uh, in which people are occupying those spaces and those crashes. Okay. Right, guys. Is this clear? So we should evaluate that we are not only creating a pro 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 profitable business, but we are creating a safe structure in which people. So we should evaluate the triple constraint in the beginning and not in the end. Okay, guys. Now I'm pausing for questions. Questions, please. Questions on the project management. So, guys, is the project management clear? Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes, yes good. Sir. So, now you want to manage this tri triple constraint using the Primavera. You are ready? You think that you, you should be doing it? Hmm? Yes, sir. Guys, guys, you should be ambitious enough to run your own business. Just think of it. So just imagine, put yourself in an imaginary situation that after three days of the training, I'm going to run my own business. So how you are supposed to run your own business? You have to be on time. You have to have the right and optimistic cost so that you can maximize on the profit. And you have to complete all the work that is the scope and create a quality which is acceptable and good for the client. So when the quality is good, then the client pays the amount of money, which is called the price of the product. So price minus cost is equal to profit. So if you are a businessman, definitely you want a profit, but the profit should be created with on, on the honesty, good planning, good value. Right, guys? Okay, good. So if the concepts are clear, then we can move hands on into the Primavera. Right, guys? Okay, so here I am on the cam. So That's guys... Uh, sir, tell me any questions you have be before we move hands on into the Primavera. Sir, please give me permission to record the session, sir. I was oh. left from the recording one. So okay, done. So now you quickly start it. Okay, sir. Guys, any questions? So let us move hands on. So let me see. So most of you have the two screens. So let me uh Siddesh, you have got two Siddesh. So Siddesh, uh Siddesh, yeah. So this is Siddesh. So the Abdul, you share your screen. So we will start with your screen. So the uh, Mazarul, you tell me that uh, right now Indian Standard Time is twelve fifteen. So what is uh, your time for going to the prayers? Sir, uh, after fifteen minutes later, I must leave. Fifteen so one five. Yeah. Okay, fine. So, okay, so let us do this thing. So, Abdul, you share your screen. After 15 minutes, we'll pause it here and then we'll start it here. So, it'll be gone for how much time? Sir, uh, actually, uh, after that, the uh, launch time will come. So, I need actually one hour. Okay. So, Abdul, can you uh, cover your prayers too within that much time? If if we guys are gone from 12.30 to 1.30, will that be fine for you too? Will that uh, cover your prayer time? Uh, Abdul? Sir, I'm here, sir. Uh, so, Abdul, what I'm trying to ask you is that 
does 12.30 to 1.30 cover your prayer time too? No, sir. Uh, 1 to 2 it will be enough for me, sir. For me, 1.30 the prayer starts. So, okay. <laughs> uh, 1.30 to no issues, sir. If you, if you take up, uh, have, I will start by seeing the recorded session, sir. So why there is so much a difference? Because Bangladesh time and Indian standard time is only 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, so uh, be, because I have to uh, see if he's going to the mosque, so we have to be giving the one hour. So Abdul, how much time you are going to take for your prayers? For me, 15 to 20 minutes. Sir. 15 to Max. 20 minutes. So that's fine. So I think uh, uh, from 12.30 to 1.30 that uh, covers both of you. Mm, for, uh, I will take the time in between so you can start the session because for, in my near mark it starts on uh, one thirty. so it, uh, it will be deferred to near the mark. basically what he's saying he's saying that in every place there is a namaz in every place in every place Kabikis Majid may ek bajoti, kabi do bajoti, kabi de for our convenience only separated the time between the span of uh twelve forty five to two o'clock and uh nearby our mosque. Okay, fine. So uh, we, we will break off at 12.30 so mm. that we will take a one hour break. So the, you, so rest of the guys, we can have our lunch and these two guys can have the lunch plus the uh plus the uh, plus the prayers. So so, uh, so uh, Abdul, you share your screen, okay? Fine, you you share your screen. So we'll be here for another thirteen minutes, and then we will be gone for one hour. Fine, sir. Uh, is my screen visible to you, sir? Yes, your screen is. So, guys, I hope it is clearly visible to you. So, what you can do, you can close this, uh, uh, close this uh, chat, and you can launch the Primavera. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. And you can stop this conversion. You please stop it because you know it's going to make your system slow. Yes, it takes a lot of the CPU processing power. You just stop it. You can again convert it. So that's not a problem. So okay. you know there is a stop button down there. Stop conversion. The below this white box. So you pull this white box up a little bit up, and you you can see that there is a uh, pull this up here, drag this up, yes. and oh, click okay. on the stop. Okay, sir. And you, okay, okay, fine. So now you start your Primavera. So guys, so first we are going to understand the Primavera in the interface and then we will continue with the setting up of the environment. So I think we can do it in 12 minutes. So that's not, not a problem. I'm going to mark parts of the screen and going to tell them what do they mean. So click on the okay, so that the Primavera will uh, load and occupy the full screen. So guys, please look look at the top, the red rectangle. So what do you read there on the top left? I'm aware of Professional 21, no current projects. Yes. So the first of all, show, uh, the Primavera shows that which is the version and no current project means that we have not loaded any project into the memory, right? So we just yeah. started the Primavera and it says no current project. So when you load a project, the project uh, uh, ID will appear there on the top. So, so you can load one project, you can load more than one also in the Primavera. If the multiple projects are loaded, they will appear on the top. So guys, keep a lookout on the top. So which you can immediately see from where you can immediately see if you have got one or more projects loaded. Now I have uh, identified this part of the screen. So with the red rectangle, it says the option file edit view and uh, project. So, you know, guys, this is called the main menu, main menu. And it has got the structure of a drop down menu. So if you click on the file, so Abdul, please click on the file. So this is called a drop down menu because it is dropping downwards to show you the options inside the file. So click on the edit. and click on the view on the right side. Do you see that it has a very long drop down? Drop down, it's called a drop down menu structure. So drop down menu structure uh, used to be there in the Microsoft product also, but now they use the ribbon menu. But here, if you look, you'll have to remember it. So guys, uh, I told you to print the file number one. In the file number one, 
the document 01, you would see that there is a page in which all the drop downs are mentioned. Okay, so you can use that one to remember. Now, guys, there is another way to activate the drop down menu. If you look carefully in the drop down menu, for example, if you look at the file, you see below the letter F, there is an underscore. Okay, just do just do this thing. Uh, click on Alt F. Just do Alt F. There is an Alt key on the keyboard near the space. Uh, Alt plus F. Do you see that uh, the file has come? Then you do Alt E. Alt yeah. E. You see the drop down for the, then you do yeah. Alt V. So, you know, with the Alt key also, if you are comfortable using the combination of the keys with your left hand, because I am very much comfortable. So, whatever is near my left hand, I use that. And whatever is near my right hand, for the right hand, I use the mouse. For the left hand, I use the Control and Alt combination. Now, if you do Alt N, you will get the Enterprise submenu. Alt N. Do you see that? Because why? In the, in the word enterprise, it is the N which is underscored, right? So this is your main menu. Now, after the main menu, there is a screen portion of the screen, which is, uh, which is called the menu panel one. So this is the top pa panel number one. So there is one more panel, which is right now not visible. We will activate it. That will be the panel two. And on the left side, there is a left, panel and on the right side there is a right panel so you know these panels are consisting of menu icons icons means symbols so symbols of the command if you look at the printer it gives an idea that you can print something if you look at the table so it gives an idea you can activate some table view or something you know each of them are having a different meaning so these are representing small little uh, representing the commands using small little pictures. So these panels are highly configurable. So the panels are like uh, your top panel number one, top panel number two, and this is the left panel. Left. And this is the right panel. So the panels can be configured by us. Okay. The panels can be configured by us. So they are highly configurable. It's like AutoCAD, right? Huh, it's like AutoCAD and many other software. Actually, you know, AutoCAD came later. So you yeah. can just uh, you can just imagine. Uh, see, when uh, Primavera came for the first time in 1983, I had no idea of the computers. I was in the 10th standard in 83. So I had heard about the computers in the science fiction that I used to love to read. So I'd heard about computers. They can do a lot of computing. They can do maths. They can do calculus. A um, lot of things, you know, I was wondering if I would be able to touch a computer one day. So after five years, you know, I went to the college and I could see a computer for the first time in 1988. So 1988. So but computers, they didn't have the graphic interface. They used to have the character based interface, which used to have 25 lines of the character and 80 lines of the columns. OK, like 25 rows right? and 80. Awesome. Black, black and white DOS based disk operating system. So yeah. we didn't have that. So the graphical computers for the first time were created by the Apple, Apple company, Apple computer created. So the first yeah. Apple computer, it used to have a graphical interface. It used, it was born with the mouse. The yeah. concept of the mouse itself was given by Steve Jobs. Yeah. Okay. By so Steve Jobs, he came up with the first graphical and then later on, all the computers which were created by the IBM company, HP company, they started to adopt it. And then the Microsoft company, they had, it launched the Windows operating system. And when the Windows came, the Primavera shifted to the graphical interface. So we have a graphical interface. One of the earliest software to have the graphical interface is the Primavera. So Primavera is uh, highly successful since 1983 in the world of the project management. And it is still the number one. The number two is Microsoft Project. There are many other softwares which came between. I, I, I can tell you the names of 15 to 20 other softwares which were launched from the uh, start of the Primavera, but they are disappeared from the market because they could not meet the demands of the work to be done by engineers in planning. 
So Microsoft project is successful in its own way because it is very, very user friendly and it is very quick to start a pro project plan. But Primavera is engineer friendly. Engineers means civil engineer, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, structure engineer, and user friendly means even a housewife can use the Microsoft project to plan her kitty party. You can plan an event, you can plan a movie. Okay, so the movie producer, director, they can use Microsoft project. They don't need the Primavera to do the planning because Primavera is used for very detailed engineering projects. Okay, so Primavera is the engineer friendly and since you are an engineer, you will find that you like it much more. So many of my students like Abdul, they have used the Microsoft pro, uh, the project also. He has trained for Microsoft project and he will find that he can do more detailing here, even though both of them are good for him. Okay, but he will find that he can do more detailing here. Okay, so this is the panel menu. And then what we have next is the table. So, you know, this part of the uh, screen, let me mark it with a proper tool. So this is the table and this side is called the Gantt chart and uh, the portion which is below it is called the detail. So let me label them. Okay, guys, so table Gantt chart and the table is consisting of the columns. T table is consisting of the columns. And the Gantt chart is consisting of two things. The first trip that, that you see here, it is called a time scale. So I'm going to write the name time scale. So uh, Gantt chart was uh, created by a person called Henry Gantt in 1904. And th this is called timeline. Okay, the time scale has got two layers. In one layer, you can see the month. In 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 the layer below, you can see the weeks. Do you see see that here? Yes, and in the details view, and what you are seeing is the detail tabs. Okay, guys. So this is the structure of the Primavera interface, and we will do more on this. So I think it's uh, time for uh, you, you guys to go and uh, do your needful prayers. And uh, so Majarul, let it fine. Um, yes, yeah. um, I expect you to come back and uh, indicate to us that you are back. So I'm going to write in the WhatsApp group, the break starts. So uh, when you come back, so you write I'm back. Okay. okay. Fine. Okay. Fine. Thank you. So the, what you need to do guys, just listen before going, uh, yeah. pause the recording, pause it, but yeah. don't stop it. There is a pause button. Why? So that the yes. blank period is not recorded into otherwise it will occupy space and uh, oh, okay. so the recording button, it is below you yes. can play and it will start the recording. Okay. And then you can share the Primavera screen here. Yes. No, your Primavera link should be here on your taskbar. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, actually, I, I won't keep there. So I kept in. Uh... Okay. Okay. So um, your database connection, uh, uh, did you remember, did you put any different password than admin, admin? I had yeah, asked yeah, admin, admin only I get, but I have changed this Primavera work area, that's all. Okay. No, that is why the database is not being... No, yesterday, actually, after changing this, I have checked this, whether it is opening or not. Yesterday, it was working, actually. No, no, that's not going to work. You bring it back to the original location because it is lo looking at that path. Okay, you just rename it as the work area only. Yeah, like that. Okay, so now it is going to connect. Good.
So guys, everybody please confirm that uh, you can see the demo screen. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so it's good. So we have yeah. got people from different locations around here. So different lo lo locations are US, Australia, Bangladesh, uh, and India. Okay. Of four places people have logged in. So that's great. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit from the, from the backlog. Okay. So, you know, guys, this is your panel one. This is your top panel two. You know, at the panel two right now, it is not there. Of course, we are going to build it. And uh, this is, yeah, Siddesh. Okay, fine. Siddesh, now uh, let me give you the recording permission. Just a moment. Yeah, Siddesh, done. So then this is your panel. So, you know, these are called top panel one, two and left panel, right panel. In the panel menu, you can basically set up the icons and you can set it up as per your convenience, right? So we had come to the point where we were trying to understand that is the next part of the screen was here. The next part of the screen is like this. So I will divide the screen into three parts as you can see. So the left part, it is called the table. The right part is the Gantt chart and the lower part, the bottom part is called the bottom details. So, you know, these kind of uh, the screen division can be optimized use. Suppose if you feel that on the bottom, you want to squeeze out some more space. Okay, so you can adjust it. And this is the divider bar. Okay, now uh, Kranti, just do one thing. You grab the divider bar. Everybody, please uh, grab the divider bar and you move it left and right 50 times. Okay, L like this. No, uh, not 50, <laughs> 10 times only, <laughs> not 50. So 50 will be too, too much. So you do it 10 times. So I want you to feel at home and I want you to feel it completely as it is with Pr Prima Vera because there are people ranging from those who have used it, ranging from people, those who are seeing it for the first time. Okay, I want to, to make sure that everybody has the same knowledge and the same hands-on feeling after you. So, you know, you just drag it like this. So let me give a demo. So I'm sure that Kranti, you are using a mouse. Okay, just grab it like this and you take it to the extreme right. And then you take it to the extreme left like this. And do this thing 10 times. Left, right, left, right. Just sweep it ac across the screen. Yes. You know why? Because you know this is ABC. ABC, it is just like driving your car, accelerator, brake and clutch. So this, this is going to be common. Okay. Okay. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you about the table. Let me divide the screen into 50-50. Now, this is the table part. So what do we have here in the, so the, above the table, what we have is a tab area. Now, there is only one tab right now because you have not opened any project. So, uh, Kranti, just do this thing. You select this project, uh, Saratoga Senior Community and open it by right clicking. Guys, do you see that what happened? As, as soon as he opened the project and you see that what is there on the top line? Yeah, it updated. Yeah, so basically it is showing you the project which has been loaded into, into the memory and the data of the project. So guys, listen care carefully. The data of the project is shown in the tab activities. Activity shows the currently open projects data. One project or multiple project you can load. Activity is, uh, tab shows the project's uh, internal data. That is the purpose. And how the project has been divided into the logical groups that is shown by the by the WBS tab, Work Breakdown Structure. So click on this button. This shows the... So do, we need, do we need to do all this as well? Yes, 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 yes. Guys, uh, one second. Let me make this clear. I do not run, run any demo here. This okay. is not a demonstration. Right. See, today we are going to take a little bit extra time. The usual target time is the 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time. We might have finished around 8.30 today. Guys, be very much prepared. Let me make it very clear to all. 
everybody has to do whatever is being demonstrated on the screen, whether you have used Primavera or not, because I want to bring everybody at par. Okay. So guys, make sure that you have opened the WBS tab. This is a hands-on training. I do not run demos or seminar. I don't do it. Simply. I don't run any free seminar. People want to serve free demo. No, I don't do it. You can go and see my YouTube. You know, when you come to my class, it is not a demo. I'm asking you to do it. Okay. It really does not matter if you have used the Primavera for 10 years. It really doesn't matter. If you are in my class, you have to do it. And everybody has to do what I'm ask asking you to do. I don't care which parts you know. I only care that after my training, you should know the Primavera completely. Guys, this is, it is in a group, but this is a individually focused coaching. For me, every person is important here. I'm not uh, teaching a crowd, okay? I'm teaching very serious engineers and be very serious about receiving the training also, okay? I'm known for that. Okay, now guys, so we have got three tabs here, but there are more tabs. So if you click on this human figure, this is representing resources. So re resources, see what kind of resources are there in any kind of project, man, machine, material. So even though it has got a human icon, but understand that in the list of the resources, we have got man, machine, material. And then there is one more tab which has to be opened. And if you look carefully, it looks like a piece of document. So this is reports. Reports is another tab in which the listing of the inbuilt reports is provided. See, Primavera comes with a lot of inbuilt reports. You can use these reports. You can modify these reports to create newer reports. Okay, you don't have to create any report from scratch. You can create a report from an existing report. So you, you definitely will find a report which matches your current requirement. And definitely you can make copies of that and you can create different versions. Okay, you can create more new reports. So you don't have to create any report absolutely from scratch. Now, uh, Siddesh, you, you, you have the recording the permission and please make sure that your internet connection is stable. It stays on into the Zoom. And next time you lose the rec recording permission, just don't worry. I will give it to you. Okay, I will give the recording to you. But it's good to have your own recording. That's okay. But uh, we make sure that we are continuing with the flow. Sir, one thing, sir, even if you are running on my screen, so it will be also recorded, right? Definitely. Yes, yes. It will be also recorded. Everybody will get the same uh, recording. Whatever I'm showing here, so everybody's re recording will be absolutely the same. It really does not matter whether, I, whether I'm using uh, whoever screen I use, everybody's mm -hmm. recording will be the same. Right, guys? That is the beauty of the Zoom, okay? In the Zoom, you get the cleanest picture, which is not even possible in the Google Meet or the Microsoft Meeting. They have got a little bit of fuzzy picture. So guys, whatever is the resolution of the uh, of the demo screen, you get to see that on your uh, on your screen, okay? So it gives the cleanest and the very the sharpest picture and the sharpest. So I hope my voice is clear and the picture yeah. is sharp here, yeah. So that is the, the benefit of the Zoom and everybody uh, gets the right to re record and everybody can be given the permission to click also. So right now I am using the uh, click the permission. So guys, what I am showing on the top, so this area of the screen is called the tabs. So tabs are nothing but different groups of the information. Okay, now let me tell you uh, about the first three tabs. In the first three tabs, as on the demo screen projects, activities and WBS. See, these three tabs are a little different. They are special because they are having three parts of the screen. Okay, so let me show you. So I go into the projects. In the projects, there are three parts of the screen. So the left part is the table, right part is the Gantt chart, and, and then below is the bottom details. Similarly, the same structure is followed in the activities also. In the act activities tab also, you can see table, Gantt chart and bottom details. And in the WBS also, you can see the left side is a columns and the right side is the Gantt chart and the bottom part is the, is the details part. 
Okay, so anything which you select on the top, its detail will be displayed here. Do you see that? Its detail yeah. is displayed here. And this is the timeline of this. Do you see that timeline for this? So this is the timeline of the WBS. Okay, so th this is the same structure followed in all the three screens. So let me create some boundary lines. So I can show it to you better. So I'm creating three partitions. And then I'm going to switch the screen. Right now I'm in the WBS, I'm going into the activities. So, so guys, you, you can see they are having the same structure here. Do you see, see that? Yeah. Same structure. Now I'm going into the projects. So as I go into the projects, I'm going to map the division of the screen into the boundary line. Do you see that? Same structure. Because these three screens, these three pieces of data, they require the timeline to be shown. Because the timeline in the case of the project, it is belonging to the length of the project. So this is called a timeline. So this is the timeline of the project. And the timeline of the project is very long because the projects are running into the duration of multiple years. But we can shrink the scale. See, I'm going to click here. The scale will be shrunk. Now, what is the, what is the scale showing in the uh, upper portion? Guys, please read. years and what is the scale showing in the blue portion read that what is there be below the years quarters. quarters it is it is using a very very condensed scale this is the most condensed form of the time scale so guys let me write the write the name here time scale and this is activity timeline so guys is this clear activity timeline or in the project screen it will be called the project timeline and in the wbs it will be called the wbs timeline so it could be an activity timeline or a project timeline or a wbs timeline so right now it is the active it is the project timeline okay so let me use the appropriate level here. Now guys, I'm going to ask you a very simple question. Just look at the screen carefully. This is the project Juniper Nursing Home, as you can see on the screen, right? I'm connecting it with the arrow. Now I'm connecting the timeline to the scale. So guys, as you look at the scale, can you tell me that what is the approximate duration of this project in, in how many years? this uh, juniper nursing home just look at the timeline three years, four months. yes three years and uh, three one months. one one quarter one quarter is consisting of three months three right months. so three years three months is the length of this uh, project so this thing was created by henry gant in 1904 so in the earlier days the engineers will create oh, the uh, excuse me uh, i have a uh, question for yes, me, uh, the gang chart on top, it's showing months and days. It's yeah, not good. Showing... good question. So please click on this minus button. This is the zoom out button and the Gantt uh, scale will become shorter. It will oh. condense because the scale is flexible. Because if you're looking at the project, so the projects are running into multiple years. So your timeline will be shrunken. You need to shrink it, right? When you're yeah. looking at activities and WBS, you, you need to look at the scale of weeks and days. Then you'll have to stretch your time scale. Take okay. it. Right? Is that right? Yeah. Small yeah. periods of time, then you uh, stretch the time scale. When large period of time, then you shrink the time scale. So here, the timeline is the most condensed data, most condensed format. So that is the year and the quarters. So you can see maximum level of the time, maximum quantity of time. So now guys, if you look here carefully, I'm going to use a black line to connect. Do you see that? Black line, I've connected to the right side. Do you yeah. see what is the duration of this project? You can read the start date and the finish date and then tell me. The start date is on the left side and finish date on the right side of this activity, of this project bar. One month, 14 days. One month, two weeks. Uh, this is like one and a half months. If you look, 1st August starting, 
15,000 yeah. September is the finishing date. Do you see that? Yeah. So, you know, you can get a perception of big project, small project, medium project from the comparison here. So, you know, this is a wonderful idea created by uh, the Henry Gantt in 1904. And the and the project engineers they used to use. I'm sure you must have used a, um, a drafter to do engineering drawing. No, but that's mostly With hand. civil. Have you done? You created the, the the isometric views. So you know what the engineers used to do? They used to connect templates to the drafter, and they used to use the drawing sheets which we use for engineering drawing. I believe that everybody you have done uh, mechanical drawing or engineering drawing, as we used to call it. Right. Yeah. So in which we used to create a 3D isometric view. So this is basically a flat two dimensional view to show the length of the project activity or the WBS. So the structure is the same. If you go into the activity, you will be able to see the relationship line also. Okay. So here you are seeing the start date, finish date, and you are able to measure the project against the time scale also. That is the structure of this. Uh, uh, the, of this part. So that is the Gantt chart. So this is the timeline, that is the time scale, and this is the columns. Now, this part is the columns, the column area. Do you see that? Project ID, project name, total activities, strategic priority. So you know, the columns are flexible. You can add more columns, right? If you wish, you can add more uh, columns, and you, you can do the same thing in the activities. In the ac activities also, if you feel that you need more in information to be displayed, you can add more columns. And in the WBS also, if you feel you want to uh, display more info, and then you can add more columns. Or if you want to fit the time scale, so you can shrink it. So guys, do you see that? I click on the zoom out and the time scale is shrinking. So you can see. Uh, so guys, can you tell me that what is the duration of this project? Look at the topmost bar, green bar. Mm -hmm. Approximately how many years and how many quarters? Look at the area enclosed in the black rectangle. Three years, two and a half quarters. Three years and six two months. months. Look carefully. You should be able to read the time. See, it is uh, going through uh, quarter three, quarter four. So right? it's like three six years months. and six, five months, I think. Yeah, five, it is like uh, uh, three and a half years. Yeah. Because, you know, it is uh, touching a little bit of the quarter two also. Mm -hmm. Little bit of the quarter two also. So you can get an immediately idea at a glance without even reading the start date or the finish date. You don't have to do the maths. You can see the visual measurement. It's like a measuring tape. So I'm sure that you must be using the measuring tape also frequently, right? Yeah. yeah. So you can see this is the total length of the project. Then you can see that what are the activity groups. So you can see this is the length of this group of the activities. So how, how much is that? It's like uh, two and a half years or two and a half years like that. And th this is a small uh, group. So this is like uh, three months. Right, so you know this is the benefit of using the um, using the Gantt chart. So the Gantt chart was created to represent the time visually. So he 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 converted the time to look like a measuring tape. So using the measuring tape and the length of the bars, so you could say that this is a longer project, this is a longer activity, this is a longer WBS, this is a short. You could get visual comparison. Okay. So this is the structure of the two screens. And then in the re resources, so what you have is a listing of the resource. So what is a resource? Resource is man, machine, material, right? Okay, now guys, what I want you to do, so ca can you please click? Can you please click on the small li little triangle here? Do you see a small little triangle? And you click on the option filter by. Okay, uh, Karanti, just hold your screen, hold your screen, because you are the demo guy. So, guys, you are up to here? Yeah. Okay, guys, in the filter by, you have to select all resources. Just click on the all resources here. All. The option number two. Yeah. Okay, so after you click it, you will see the looks have changed. 
Okay. Do you see the looks have changed? Yes. Now you are seeing uh, it in the structure of a parent child. Do you see a parent child tree like st structure, right? Tree yeah. tree like structure you are seeing. So this is basically showing you the reporting relationship of the resources. That who is reporting to whom? Who is in the reporting manager? So which manager is having how many resources under him? So this is the filter display all resources. Guys, please cross check. Do you have this filter display all resources? Yes. Same. Okay. So you know this is quite long and you know it can take up to um, thousands of resources. So here I believe uh, at least 500 resources are here in the sample data. So if you work in a real company, in a big company, big group, multinational group, spread over multiple geographies, you could be seeing up to 10,000, 20,000 people. Okay. So I have a client oil in the ONGC, Oil and National Gas Corporation of India. So uh, once I estimated there are around 25,000 people represented as resources here. So that's a pan-India group, pan-world group. In fact, they are doing uh, projects for the uh, other countries also. So you can see the project managers, resources, all listed here. That is the resources. Then we come to the reports. So guys, do you see these reports here? So these are the reports which are provided to you by default, right? Okay. Okay, now we are going to configure the structure of the menu, we are going to configure the software to show us more panels. Okay. So guys, please click on the edit button. Uh, no view, sorry, you click on the view. So when you come toward the bottom, you will see an option called toolbars toward the bottom. And in the toolbar, at the bottom, you will see customize on the right side. Just hold the screen. Guys, please look at the demo screen view, toolbar, customize. The customize menu appears on the right side and uh, it is at the bottom. Right, guys? Is it clear? Yeah. Now, guys, everybody, if you are seeing that, you click on the customize option, which is at the bottom on the right side. So, everybody will get a toolbox. I, I call these as toolbox. Guys, do you see the customized toolbox on, on your screen? Yeah. So, everybody is able synchronized. Uh, Abdul, Abdul, you are synchronized. Uh, the, Abdul, you are here. Can you just say yes in the chat box? Uh, Someone has put a chat here. I don't know. What is this chat chat about? So, Abdul, you are here? Okay. So, Madhurul, you are here? Yeah. I'm here. Sandeep, you are here too? Yes. Okay, fine. Uh, Siddesh, you are here, of course. Okay, fine. Yes. So, I think uh, uh, he has some problem with his system. Okay, guys. Now, <laughs> what is the next step? See you will see that certain boxes are unchecked. You will have to check them. You have to select them from top to bottom. Don't select it randomly. First, you select action. Then you, then you check the administrator. I can't hear you. Then you select the publish, then select reports, and then you scroll down. You will be able to see more then uh, you can select activity critical paths. It's a new checkbox in the version 21 only. Okay. So, so guys, do you see that a lot of uh, uh, layers of the buttons have been uh, added on the top? Do you see that? Okay. Okay. Now, guys, if you have, if you have added all these layers, so click on the close button. Close it.
Now we are going to optimize them into the into the into one panel. So that is the panel number two. So Kranti, just hold your mouse, hold your mouse. Don't click anywhere. See, guys, this is the panel number two which we are going to build up. Now let us do this thing. I want you to notice something. So, guys, do you notice? On the left hand side of this set of the buttons, there are dotted handles. Do you see that? Dots. You know, this is called a grabbing handle. So with this handle, you can grab the entire set of the buttons. So let me give you the demo. So, uh, okay. So, so I'm going to do it. So Kranti, hold your mouse. Kranti, hold your mouse, please. So, so guys, what you need to do, you need to grab this set of the button and move it gently. See guys, you have to use the mouse. This is very very difficult to do with the trackpad so you move it slowly and slowly to a va vacant spot then you push it up gently okay now kranti you can do do the rest so you move this thing first here and then you place it here but kranti you have to be very gentle with the mouse okay because these uh, these can get uh, into the wrong place okay if you are not gentle so then it can be very difficult. Yeah. Then the next one. Okay. Then hold your screen. Hold it. So don't click anything. So guys, please confirm that you have the same, um, the same set of the buttons in the same place. Why I'm the asking you to do it? It is because so that when I give the demo, everybody can look at the demo screen and you can do the same work. You can find the same button in the same spot on your screen also. Very simple logic. Right, guys? Is this clear? So everybody can confirm that you are at the, um, you are synchronized, you are done, same to same? Yes, sir. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, guys, there is a set of the uh, buttons which I need on the lower panel. See, this is a set of the button which I want you to bring into the green box here okay so kranti just go ahead and do it so grab that one and bring it into the green box good absolutely fine absolutely fine so guys do you have seen uh, that demo and uh, can you do it yeah i've done it <laughs> okay very good so is is someone stuck so guys, uh, let me tell you, if you're stuck, you immediately tell me, I will come to your sc screen and help you out. See, U-turns will be very costly. If you let me go ahead and then you tell me after five, 10 minutes. So that is a problem. So I want you to be synchronized. See, guys, one thing I'm making clear, your speed is my speed. I do not push my class into finishing early. I do not push my class into finishing early. If it takes me two hours extra time, I will give you that because that time has been saved from my driving time. When I used to work uh, in the physical classroom, I used to waste that much time in driving. I'm willing to give you that time. Okay. Is, is this clear, guys? Hmm? Okay, fine. So there is no shortcut in the Primavera and uh, there is no uh, shortcut in my training also. Okay. Uh, make sure that you are doing it. And if you face any problem, I'll come to your screen. This is not a very large crowd, but a close group of friends. Okay. So everybody. Uh, sir, I have a question. Yes, yes, uh, sure. On the top right hand side, uh, sorry, left hand side, the second tab, there is import and export, right? Yeah. Uh, import and yeah. Yeah. So uh, there is, I have import export, but uh, you uh, on this screen, uh, we have two more boxes. I don't have those. We, we will increase by add more buttons. We will check them. So okay. we are coming to that also. Now right. guys, please click here on this triangle. Click here. So in this group of the button, there is a special button, which I want to bring onto the screen and use it. Now click on add or remove the buttons. So guys, I will tell you the buttons to select. First of all, you select to lock all toolbars. So this button will go on to the top. Okay, so I want it there. Okay, expand all, collapse all, and collapse to. Expand all, collapse all, and collapse to. So guys, do you see that these buttons are have been uh, added on the top? Do you see, see that? Yes. Okay, so you have added four new buttons onto the top. 
So after adding the buttons, so what I want you to do, you click anywhere on the blank part of the Gantt chart here. Click here on the blank part, this drop down will disappear. Okay. And guys, I want you to look at this button. What does it look like? Lock. Lock. Its job is to lock all this set of the buttons on the screen. Right? Mm -hmm. So guys, please click the lock. Please click the lock. Now, what do you notice? Do you notice that the handles are gone? The grabbing handles are gone. See, I'm, I'm going to sh show you. See, this is the unlock the position. Do you see the handle now? Do you see this? Yeah. Now, why I'm asking you to lock? It is for safety reason. What kind of safety? Because what happens if you do not lock the buttons in place? Now the button, the set of entire set of the buttons can be misplaced. They, they can go from one part to another and then it becomes and it wastes a lot of time to bring it back. So first of all, everybody, please lock the set of the buttons and tell me that they have locked it. Yeah, locked. Very good. So now we are going to expand the set of the buttons one by one. So guys, please, first of all, you click on this triangle. Click here. The first one on the left uh, side of the first of the panel and select add or remove buttons. Select now, please select a page setup. Then you select print setup. Uh, I my my drop down menu is not coming. No, it will come. So click on this small little triangle next to the printer. It will come. Click on the triangle, black triangle. Then you select page setup and print setup and make sure that you are using the mouse. I cannot no, uh, help you if you are using the trackpad. No, no, I'm using a mouse. It's still not coming down. I don't know okay. why. It will come. Click on this triangle. Please look at the de demo screen. Mm -hmm. Click on this small little triangle. It will come. There is See, you are using the same version and everyone's uh, software has been installed by me. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't trust if people say that, okay, I've already installed. No, I don't like it because mm -hmm. that doesn't give me the quality of the training. Okay. okay, so make sure that you are clicking it. Okay, guys. Okay, now we will expand the next set, set of the buttons. Look at the screen carefully. Okay. So click on this triangle and from this set, you are going to select the button. Click on the add. We are going to select. See guys, please see activity usage spreadsheet. Then you select a resource usage spreadsheet. Then you select the button, arrange children. Three buttons you are going to select. Okay. Yeah, so Kranti, just hold the screen here. So guys, please look. Look at the de demo screen. So I'm, I'm sure you are synchronized. Please look at the demo screen. So have you selected these three? Activity usage spreadsheet, resource usage spreadsheet, and uh, arrange children. Have you selected these, these three? Okay, yeah. if, if you have selected, so then you click on any blank portion here, here. Just click on the blank of the portion of the Gantt chart. Or I mean this, this thing below. If you, if you click on the blank part, so this drop down will go away. Now guys, look very carefully where I'm pointing. So you also click, you look at the de demo screen and click at the same same place in your screen also. Yes, Kranti, go ahead. Yeah, so guys, here you will see a button, no bottom layout. It is a very important button. Please select it. So everybody has selected no bottom layout. Yeah. Okay, the Abdul, you're back. Abdul, just switch on the mic and say yes. Okay. Okay, fine. Now, 
After that, we will go to the next set. Please uh, make this uh, di disappear by clicking here. Okay, now guys, you got to look at the screen very carefully. So mm -hmm. you click on this little triangle, which is near the bottom of the line, not in the middle. Don't click those. Now se select add or remove the, the buttons. In this set of the buttons, you select the first four, new layout, open layout, save layout, save layout as, and then you select the last two, table font and row and user preferences. All these buttons are very much useful. So guys, please look at the demo screen and uh, please be updated and tell me that you are synchronized. Yeah. Very good. So after you have selected these six buttons, then click on the blank space. And now you will select on the last one, on the top panel, last one. Add or remove the buttons. So here you will select the, uh, the button global change. Then you will select the button summarize. Then you will select the button recalculate. Then you will select the button issued navigator. So these four buttons you have to select from the last set on the panel one. So I will pause here for a moment. Everybody please confirm that you have the same set of the buttons on your panel one. Okay. So let me identify the buttons for, for you. I mean the, the, the button groups. So I'm going to mark the button groups. Guys, do you see the button groups? On the, the pa panel one? Yeah. So how many button groups are there on the panel one? Five five groups okay so guys do they look uh, complete as on the de demo screen as per the demo screen do they look complete on your screen too yes sir oh, oh okay uh, yes najam is that you no no that's not me okay uh, yeah but it's complete for me okay uh, madhurul yeah same for me uh, same okay so abdul abdul uh, you're here Sandeep, uh, Sandeep, you are ha you are having the same set. Yes. Okay. Sadesh. Yes, sir. Good. Okay, guys. Now we will work on the next set of the uh, buttons here. So I am going to point it out where we'll start from. So, guys, please come here. And here you select add or remove the uh, buttons. And guys, uh, we actually don't need the check-in checkout because uh, I'll tell you the very simple reason. Check-in che checkout will be used in case we are connected to the centralized database system. So right now in this version, we don't need it. Please uncheck this if, if it is on. We don't. We only need the import uh, export. Right, guys? Is this clear? Yeah. We don't need these two buttons. They might sometimes they come on or off. But check-in, check-out is useful when you are connected to a centralized data. What is the purpose of the checkout and the check-in? Let me explain to you though. See, when I am working on a project and I want to log the project data with me, so I have to do the checkout. So when the project is checked out to you, then nobody else can uh, update the data because only one person can do the uh, updation activity at a time. Rest of the people, they can only see the previously updated copy. So when you are done with your changes and you want everybody else to be able to see your changes. So what do you do from the local memory of your computer? You do the check-in process. So check-in, what it does, all the up updation you have done, adding new activities or deleting the activities or um, or updating any information of the existing activities, add, update, delete, it is checked in and the central copy, which is kept in the central server, maybe in a data center, the data center could be yours, the data center could be belonging to the Oracle. If you, if you are a big organization or a government organization, a sensitive organization, you don't want to use the Oracle da data center, your organization can set up its own data center and the once you check in, it goes into the data center database. So is, is that clear, guys? 
Is is this clear? Yeah. So right now we are going to use only the import export. So we just get rid of these two. So now the next set of the buttons which you have to click is this one. Okay. Now click on add or remove. So now you select the option resource curves. Resource curves. Select the option resource curves. As you have done? Yeah. Okay. Now move to the next one. So next one, let me tell you, just wait. Oh, those are complete. Those are complete. Now, next one is this. Okay. Look at the demo screen carefully and try to re recognize. Add or remove the buttons. Okay. Here you select the option report groups. Select report groups. We need that. Guys, is that right? Okay. You are yeah. the same. Right. So last one was done. So there is nothing to do on that one. Now we move to the left panel. So guys, please come to the left one and select add or remove the buttons. So guys, here you select the two options, commit changes and refresh data. These two are re required. <coughs> guys done? Yeah. Okay, then, then you click on the next set of the buttons. Here is the triangle which you need to click here. Add or remove the buttons. And then you select here enterprise project structure. Then you select here roles. Then you select here OBS. Okay. So these three buttons you need to select. Enterprise project structure, roles, and OBS. So, guys, you have done? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, you will click on the last set of the buttons here at the bottom. So, here you will select issues, only one issues. So, in the prim prim Primavera, while you are executing the project, you can list out the issues and what happens when you list them out here, your entire group can see and you can um, assign and re re reassign to the responsible team members, right, to fix them. So, you know, you, you can keep the track of the small little things also in the Primavera. They are not small. The issues can become risk also if they are not handled or tackled in time, okay? So, what is an issue? Something small which bothers you, but what is the risk which can cause damage? Okay, now guys, on the right panel, you click on this button, this triangle button. Then you select add or remove. So guys, here you will select listen and look carefully, dissolve, link activities, undo, fill down, only these four. Okay, dissolve, link, undo, fill down. Dissolve link, undo and fill down. Okay, so you have done? Yeah. Okay, very good. Now you, you click on the blank portion here. Okay, now guys, you are going to select the next set of the buttons here on the right. So we will check out if some button is uh, required. So here, all the buttons are selected. Okay, guys, there is no need to click any further. So all the desired buttons are on the screen. So guys, please confirm from the demo screen that you have these two panels on the top. Okay. So you have created this uh, brand new panel two that is on the top in the, so I'm going to mark it in the green color. So in the green color, that is your panel number one and the red color that is your panel number two in the blue blue color so that is your left panel and in the brown color <clears throat> it is your right panel guys is that fine yeah correct fine 
So these four panels have icons, icons. Okay, icons, they have got meaningful shapes. Like if you look at the printer, you can understand. So you can print something. If you look at, uh, let's say the lock, you can understand, you can lock something and some other meanings will be clear. After some time of the usage, you don't have to worry about it. Sometimes, uh, you know, many of my students say that, sir, there are so many icons, so many pictures to remember. So then I tell them that uh, if you can remember 15 of them, that's fine. Okay. At, at a time, but uh, that doesn't take uh, much time. Within three days, you can recognize 15 icons. That is good enough to get you started. As you use the software more and more, so that will. So then uh, my students say sometimes, they say, sir, how, how I can remember 15? So I, I remind them that during the college days, they used to remember 15 girls' faces and names and what subject they studied, where they came from, what they did, what they like, what they dislike. If you could remember so many girls in your college day, then use the same talent here also. So what is the problem? Right, guys? Is that clear? So you are all talented people, okay? So you have very sharp memories. You still remember those girls, right? No? Yeah. The, yeah. Ones, the ones you could not marry, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, good. So use the same ta talent here also, and you will be uh, a primavera master. Okay, that's good. So we in in the life we should have uh, everything, and now we are going to learn something which is very very professionally useful. So now, guys, what do you do? You please come to the projects tab here. Yeah, come to the projects tab here. Now, after coming to the projects tab, so you know, guys, what we are going to do, we are going to change the font in all the tabs. See, all the tabs are independent sort of things. You can configure the font size separately for them. Now, to configure the font size and the font name, font type, so please click on this button. It looks like a font it itself. So, so guys, do you have this uh, table font and row box here? Okay, now you click on this the button called font here. You see A, B, C, yeah. Now you will select here, just type here in this box, Vardana, V for Vardana. Now select the Vardana font here. Now you select regular eight number, eight, font number eight. Yeah, it's already selected. So guys, just look at the demo screen, Vardana, regular eight. And click on the OK to implement the font and click on the OK once again, you will see uh, the change you will see. Now guys, the uh, the readability is more comfortable. It looks better and well-rounded here and here, this, this font. So why I'm asking you to select it? Because we are going to use a lot of columns on the screen. So I want to make sure that all the columns are vis visible at the same time. So we will start with the font eight. But after this training, if you feel so that you would like to use the font number nine, you can use it. So you need to learn how to balance the font size and the screen space because the, the screen says is constrained. There is a, a limitation of the screen space. Now guys, please do the same thing in the activity tab, select activities. Sir, one minute, sir. Yes. sir I am actually, I'm working in another screen also. There I am not able to see this uh, gang chart, sir. Uh, so to get the Gantt chart, so uh, right now you don't need to see the Gantt chart, just don't worry. Mm -hmm. So are you able to see the font uh, button on the yes, panel sir. number one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so you fix it. So th that I will uh, tell you. Please come to the activity tab. Okay. Yeah, In the act activity tab, also you select Vardana regular eight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Vardana regular eight. Then do the same for the WBS tab. Vardana regular eight. Then do the same for the resource tab. Vardana regular eight. Then do the same for the re reports tab. Vardana regular eight.
Okay, guys, done. Vardana, regular rate. So you have selected in all the five tabs. Hmm? Guys, please uh, confirm. Okay, I'm pausing here for a moment. So if you have any problem on your screen or something, I would like to come there. You can tell me. We, I want a synchronized till this point, then move uh, to the next uh, learning. Okay, please tell me guys, if you have any problems or something. Excuse so five me. tabs you have con configured as a Vardana, a regular eight size. Hmm? Guys, done? Yeah, we have done that. All okay, fine. now, now uh, we will come and understand the basic buttons, the, the buttons we which, which we might click, you know, 100 times a day. So those buttons I'm going to start. So guys, please come to the pro projects tab. You're here in the projects tab. Okay. I'm going to mark a pair of buttons which are complementary. So you click either of the buttons, either left or the right, you will see a change. If you click on the table, so guys, what do you see now when you click on the table? Black. So what you are seeing is only the table because when you click on the table, you are telling Primavera, I want to see only the table. So why would you do it? Because on certain screens, you will have a lot of columns and then you want to see only the columnar data. You don't want to see the Gantt chart. So you can just click on this. But so suppose if you want to see the columns and the Gantt chart both, so then you can click on the right button. So right button will include the Gantt chart here. So guys, just do this thing. Do the left, right thing 10 times. 10 times you click on the left button, 10 times you click on the right button because uh, then, you know, it will give you an experience. So you will feel that um, you have been using Primavera for a long time. That is the benefit of my training. Okay. I don't want you to feel Primavera like a stranger. Hello, sir. Yes, yes, tell me. Uh, now only I'm joining the session, sir. Okay, so you missed a lot. Just don't, 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 don't uh, the, worry. So you will have to continue from here. I, I cannot clear your backlog and uh, you will have to update yourself from the re recording. Okay. So I'm going to share, share it with you uh, in the evening, but you continue from here. Sure, sir. Because I was trying to call you. I couldn't hear anything. So, mm -hmm. so that's not a problem. So, but you can continue from here. Sure, sir. And uh, 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 there is, you know, there is a creaking noise that your mice, uh, mic makes when you speak something, it uh, adds something creaking noise. And just see that if you can do something about it. Hello. Huh, this time it's clear. Hello. Yeah, who is that? Please tell me. Uh, Siddesh. Huh, yes, Siddesh, tell me what happened. My screen is showing a lot of uh, activities here. Means, uh, Original budget, add completion, total cost, actual labor cost. So which tab you are in? You are in the pro a project tab? Yes, sir. Projects tab. Table uh -huh. tab. Table so just, tab. just don't worry. Just don't worry. So I, I believe that your system has been used for some work. Okay. Right, so, right, sir. Okay. Your system has been used for some work. Maybe someone might be doing some practice. Have you clicked on these two uh, buttons? And yes, sir. Get, yes. The get the feel? Okay, guys. Now, guys, I'm going to show you another pair of the buttons and which you need to click and remember. So this is the one. This is the second. So first you click on the right side. Right side button. So guys, what do you see? When you click on the right side button, what has gone? The bottom details are gone, right? Yeah. Then you click on the left side. The left of the button details have come back. So guys do this 10 times for each of the buttons. 10 times you click on the detail button, 10 times you click on the no bottom details. You know, next time I won't tell you these buttons. I'll just tell you, uh, the Kranti, please switch off the bottom details. Kranti, please bring back the details. So you know which button you have to click. So we have to uh, work and train like that, okay? I won't be identifying the buttons for you. I would be just telling you to bring something back and hide something, right? 
So that's how it, it should be. That is called training. The trainer makes you do things. Okay. And that becomes a part of your memory. So that becomes a part of your experience. And that uh, seems normal. So after the training. So, so guys, you have done that. Show details yeah. and hide details. Good. Now, uh, I want you to do this thing. Just look at the demo screen. Hide the details and hide the GAN chart. Have you hidden the GAN chart? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want you to see there is a uh, pair of buttons here. So, one of them is active. So, please click on the double minus button. So, what do you see on the screen? What happened? Everything went away. Yeah, everything has not went away. Everything has collapsed into one Collapse, single yeah, line. Sorry. That is the enterprise. Okay. Yeah. So, now click on the double plus button. So, everything has expanded. So, you know, the data, the parent-child structure of the data can be expanded and collapsed. Expanded and collapsed. Just do it 10 times. Expand. Collapse, expand, collapse. Okay, guys, you are done with that. Okay, now, now I'm going to identify one more button here, which is on the right side. Guys, do you see a plus minus? Now click on that. Click on the plus minus button. And in this, you select level one and then click apply. Click on the apply. Now, what, what do you see? You see the word only enterprise. So guys, can someone tell me what is the meaning of the word enterprise? What is the meaning of the word enterprise? I believe you have heard this word very frequently, you know. Hmm? Enterprise. Enterprise means a group of companies. A group of companies. Like for example, in the context of India, we have Tata Group. So Tata is an enterprise. Reliance is an enterprise, TVS is an enterprise, Aditya Birla Group is an enterprise, uh, the Adani Group is an ent enterprise. Right, guys? Is it clear? Now, now you click on, on the drop down, then you select level two and then, no, no, you have to, don't stop, uh, close it, uh, select level two and apply and stay, stay here. So, guys, what do you see here? What is written here? engineering and construction, then, then the energy service. Someone needs to talk so that I get a feedback that I'm getting construction, energy services, manufacturing, product yeah. development, corporate programs, information technology. Yeah. So do you see that these look like different businesses, right? Yeah. These are called business units in the normal language. And in the project management, these are called portfolios. So portfolio is a distinct line of business, right? Enterprises, they have got portfolios and under the portfolios, they have programs. Now programs will be at the level three. Now guys, you select the level three and apply. You will see the yellow bands. Guys, do you see the yellow bands here? Yes. The yellow ones, they are called the program. So let me tell you that what is the full meaning.
So the colors are defining them? Yes, absolutely. See, enterprise will be only one. Hmm. Okay, only one. Because, so guys, let me tell you that how does a business, how does an enterprise come into an existence? See, whenever a person starts a business, he will usually start with one business only, right? Yeah. Hmm? yeah. So you can start only one business at a time. So once you start the business, once that business becomes stabilized, that you have got fairly good uh, market and clientele, now what will ha happen that after some time, you will realize that there is some seasonal thing about businesses. Some business, they don't run it all the time. So during the corona, what happened? Did the hospitality industry uh, did good? Like the airlines, hotels, uh, or travel trade? No, they were not doing good, right? Yeah. Some businesses, they are affected by the seasons, weathers. So then as a businessman, you, you think that what should I do for my financial security? So what you are going to do, you are going to start another business which you can handle. That might be in a diverse sector, but you can ha handle this. So if you look at here, maybe this enterprise was started with the engineering and construction. Then the person decided to go into the energy services, then manufacturing, then product development, corporate program. This is what happens. So, you know, in your country also, there would be a diverse group of companies. So in India, for example, the let's say about the Tata. So the Tata group, which is around like more than 150 years, maybe 175 years also, original business of the Tata group is Tata Steel. They started manufacturing steel bars. Okay, in a place in India called Jamshedpur. So they started from there, then they went into the manufacturing of the automobiles. Then Tata Group today is into the IT. It is in the IT sector. It is in the Tata is into the retail sector. Tata is into the real estate construction business. Okay, so Tata is in the online retailing of the medicines. So Tata is making passengers car, passenger cars, Tata is making the commercial vehicles, Tata is manufacturing the diesel engines for truck, buses, and also making the diesel engine for locomotives. That's also made by the Tata. Many people don't know, but those are also made by the Tata group only. So Tata has become a very diverse group. So similarly, Reliance, the original business of the Reliance group was Vimal Fabrics. Okay, after that, they went into many other diverse business like Reliance Geo into information technology and, uh, and they are also, they are basically into the internet services and mobile. And uh, Geo, uh, this Reliance group has Reliance Petroleum, then Reliance Retail, Reliance Digital. So they are into multiple sectors. Okay, so uh, Aditya Birla group is into the manufacturing of the cement. So they have the solar power, okay, renewable energy like that. So businesses, they start with one, then they uh, create multiple businesses, then, then that becomes a portfolio. So in the, in the project management language, the group of companies is called the enterprise. Okay, this is the project management language, enterprise, portfolio. Then inside the portfolio, we have programs. Then under the programs and the portfolio, we have got the projects. The projects are always depicted in the white color. Okay. Some of the uh, portfolios, they are not subdivided into the programs because whenever a new line of business is created, a new portfolio is created, the number of the project may not be sufficient enough to further subdivide it. When a particular, when a particular portfolio expands, when it, when it is going to get more business, more projects, then the top management of the company subdivides it into the program and it appoints program managers. Right, guys? Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So this is the interface which lets you see the level one, level one enterprise, level two portfolio, and level three program. Okay, if you want to see it by the level. So you can use this plus minus button. Now you- I have one question, uh, sorry. Uh, like yeah. programs are also like projects or what? 
No, programs are group of basically, you know, it is a specialized part of a portfolio. If, if expand it, so yeah. basically the program is specialized part. So we will see it right now by example. We will create the program and we will create the program manager also. We will subdivide an ex existing line of business into three programs. Okay, so we are going there only. We will learn it by example. Okay, okay. because unless and until I give an example, it won't be clear. So I can say at this point of time, program is specialized, um, specialization within the portfolio. Okay. 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 So now guys, just do this thing. Please click on the project ID column here on the top. Guys, do you see a small little triangle that comes here? So, you know, the direction of the triangle indicates the direction of the sort. So, Kranti, as per your screen, what is the direction of the triangle pointing up or down? down it is pointing down. downwards. Down. Now, you, you will see the numbers are increasing. You see the project ID. It is increasing towards that direction. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, now if you click on that, the, the direction of the triangle will change. Click on the header. Now the direction is pointing upward. Do you see the sorting is going in, in that direction? Yes. Okay, now you click on the next column, the project name, you will see the sort will move here. See, in the, in the Primavera, you can sort only one column at a time. So you can sort it either up or down. So down means A to Z here as it is the alphabet. So you, if you click on it again, the direction of the sort changes. Now, if you click on the total <laughs> activities, click that. So guys, what do you see? Hmm? Total activities, what do you see? You can see the numbers are getting sorted. Uh, in the, in the 1 to 100 or 100 to 1, like that. Yeah. Okay, so sorting can be done on any of the column, but I will tell you the best practice when you are done with the sorting and examining the data, please bring the sorting back to the project ID column. Bring it back and make sure that it is pointing downwards like this. Right, guys? It is the best practice. In any other tab, when you are done with examining the sorting data, please bring the sorting back on the ID column, which is the leftmost column and place the sorting pointing downwards. In the activity column, you'll have activity ID in WBS, you'll have the WBS ID in the resource, you'll have the resource ID. Make sure guys, the sorting is parked here on the ID, the ID column in the last, right guys? Hmm? Is this clear? Okay, yeah. so that's a best practice. Now. Now we are going to add more columns here, okay? Because if you look at this data, so right now, this, suppose you've got an imaginary boss who is very appreciative of your, um, the, the, the initiative to learn the Primavera and implement it in the organization. So what he says is that, uh, Kranti, it looks very, very good. So, uh, oh yeah. Screens, screen recorder, why do you need that? You are having the Zoom. So let the Zoom do the recording, all the re recording. Yeah, so you know, so he says that, Kranti, I want to see the percentage of the project completion. I want to see the actual duration, plan duration. I want to see the start date, finish date, actual start date, actual finish date. I want to see the planned cost of the project, then actual cost of the project, then the variance in the project. I want to see the remaining cost in the project. So, you know, what he wants, he wants this entire area to be filled with the columns, right? He wants to see the detailed in information about each of the project. Okay, guys, so you are ready to add the uh, columns? Okay, so please right click here in this blank portion. And here in this menu that comes up after you do the right click, you will select the option columns and then select the option customize. Do you see that columns customize? Okay, Kranti, just hold the screen, hold the screen because some guys might not have uh, cashed up with, with you. Okay, sir. No, no, 
just wait so so guys do you see that uh, what what is there on the screen yeah columns uh, yeah. customize so guys can you please click on that customize mm -hmm. okay see guys when you click on the customize so there is a column toolbox that comes up now what you need to do you place it a little bit towards the left and expand it like that just as you see on the screen i i'm sure that you can do it with the mouse so have you the expanded yeah very good now to make it more comfortable to use okay so first of all you click on this triangle do you see this triangle here next to the a yeah click this here select the option table font and rows select table font and rows and guys once you have selected ta table font and rows go into the font button and this time you are going to select vardana 9 vardana regular nine number font here okay here the nine number font is good because you have got space for that so click on the okay to implement this font number nine okay do you see the text has become a little bit bigger and you are comfortable to read it? Okay, guys. I want you to notice this thing. Guys, do you see the, the column names on the top and the columns which are selected on the right side? So whatever you select on the right side, it goes to the top, right? Now, guys, let me tell you one thing. So do not use these buttons. Do not even touch them. Guys, do you see I put a cross on these two? So why I'm saying that, see, this is not just a training. This is a transfer of experience. What happens if you by chance you touch these buttons? So, you know, what these buttons are going to do? They are going to take away all the columns either to the right side or to the left side. They are quite drastic. I don't know why these are here. These are not useful. They waste a lot of time. Right, guys? Is it clear? These, these buttons are not useful, so you don't use them. We only use the, the play button, as you can see, the first one and the se second one. Now, what column we want? Okay, so I want the, I want the column, so uh, percentage complete. So where that, that would be? So yes. if you think clearly, you will see there is a group here, percentage completes. So expand this group. Okay, you expand this group. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys. Do you do you see that percentage completes group? Okay. So within this group, you will see there is a column here. Schedule percentage complete. You select this column and take it to the right side by clicking on the button to select. So click that button. It will go to the right side like this. Guys, has it come to the below the strategic priority column? If, if not, then you, you can push it up and down using this up down buttons. Do you see that? Push it up or down. Okay, schedule percentage complete. Now, now you close this group. Now, if, if I uh, ask you that where would be the duration in which group? Durations are there. Absolutely. So select the du durations. And first of all, you select BL project duration, take it to the right side. Then you select actual project du actual du duration, take it to the right side. Okay. BL means baseline. Baseline means planned duration. Actual means act actually uh, the duration which has been consumed. Now collapse the duration group, close the duration group. Now what I'm thinking that dates. So guys, I'm thinking of start date, finish date, actual start, actual finish. So where do you think I can find dates? Above. Dates. Okay. Now, if you look at the bottom, you have got start. So select start. Take it to the right side. Then you select the finish date and take it to the right side. Then you select actual start and actual finish. Okay, guys. So, so uh, 
I'm holding the screen here. So guys, please confirm that you do have these four columns from the dates. Start, finish, actual start, actual finish. Everybody please yeah. confirm. Yeah, done. Yes, sir, done, sir. Siddesh? Yes, sir, done. Uh, Abdul, you have done? Sir. Done it? The, uh, Abdul? Yes, sir. I'm a horrible to you, sir. Okay, yes, yes, fine. So, yeah, yes. Okay, I just want to make sure that you synchronize from here. So uh, then rest I will see that I will tell you in some break time. I will tell you how to be updated. Yes, sir. So, only that the top of uh, the icons only we are missing. Other than it's uh, pretty fine, sir. Huh, so just, just don't worry. I'll help you get updated. But here from this point, you stay synchronized. Surely, sir. Okay, okay fine. Good. So guys, after the dates, I'm thinking, what do I want to see about the project? I want to see the various cost of the project. So where will be the cost? In which group? Cost. Cost group, you expand it. Yeah. Expand the cost group here. Mm -hmm. Now in the cost group, I want to see the planned total cost. Guys, do you see this BL project to total cost? BL project, select and take it to the right side. Yeah, take it to the right side, BL project total cost. Then you select actual to total cost and take it to the right side. Okay. Then I want you to select the last column at the bottom variance BL project total cost, which shows the difference between the plant and the actual take it to the right side. And then I want you to select the last one. That is the remaining total cost, remaining total cost. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to mark the buttons which have been selected from the cost group. Please have a look on the demo screen. And uh, Kranti, you can read it for your friends, these four. BL project total cost, actual total cost, variance, BL project total cost, remaining total cost. And If you are having any extra button, extra column, so what you can do, uh, you you can get rid of that column. Just just select the column and click on this, click on this button. So this button will send it back home. So this this button. So this is to send any button back home. Okay. If you don't need need a button, so you know the button will automatically go inside its group in the primer and it will show you which group it came from. So next time you can remember to use that uh, button from that particular group. Okay, so guys, everybody please confirm that you have the same set of the columns here. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, very good. Now to implement these columns, you have to click on the okay. Okay will implement and close the toolbox. Okay, guys. Now, what do you see on the screen? Do you see all this? Before button? pressing OK, do we need? We don't need to do apply, right? No, no. OK means apply okay. and close. OK has got okay. two. OK has got two actions in one. Okay. okay. If you do apply, you just stay there. If you do OK, you apply and close. Okay. okay. So, anyways, we have to click on the OK only in the last. So we can click at the click on the OK after selecting all the buttons. So OK means apply the columns and close the toolbox. No, guys, I'll just show you that uh, how we work in the Excel. So in the Excel, so what do we do? We just drag the columns a little bit so as to squeeze some space. See, let me tell you that in the Primavera, it is the uh, name of the column which will wrap, but the data is not wrapped. Data will get cut. As you can see in the project name, it has got cut. So that's okay, name, but numeric data and date should not be cut, right? So you can optimize the date column to a point where you can still see the complete date and, and ensure that in the, in, the, in, the, in the money column, you should be able to see the top row with the currency symbol. If you're not seeing the currency symbol on the top row, it means that some part of the data can go missing because the, the total is greatest on the top, maximum is on the top. If you can see the top row, 
then you can see all the complete data below it. Right, guys? Is this clear? Yes. So can you see that on the demo screen, the these columns are fitting? So project name, if you look at the project name, do you see the project name is cut from the side? That's okay. That's okay. But do you think it's okay if you see the uh, see the cost column with the data which is cut? No, don't ex expand. Don't expand. So we want all the columns to be visible at once. So this uh, the project name column we really don't need to see the en entirely. But but guys, is it right if you cut the cost column like this? Just look at it. It looks good. No. It gives you very absolutely wrong data. You have no idea that what is the project cost. So you should be able to see the data entirely, right? Now it is good. So if you, okay guys, now, See, if the project name is cut, it's not a big problem. No, what is the problem? So guys, if the data in the numeric column, so I want you to sensitize how to balance the space. See guys, if you see the, the par partial data in, in the numeric column, is, is that fine? If you see no. the data like this, can, can you interpret a n n number? No, you can't. But if the, but if a part of the, name is missing that's okay okay so now guys this this thing is called a layout the whole thing the whole way the data is being displayed it is called a layout and we can save the layout okay so we are going to save this layout so guys please click on this button as you can see on the top panel number one it is called save layout as click on this and in the layout name you write the name as projects layout by and then you write your name and Kananti just hold the screen here okay guys guys please look what uh, your friend has done so he has written the layout name as like this and he has got this from this button here on the top So guys, everybody, please confirm that you are up to here. Then I will move to the next step. Yep. Yeah. Well, Sandeep, Najam. Ji, done. Ho gaye. Hmm? Yes. Ah, uh, the Abdul, you have done. Uh, I can't able to see the save icon, sir, because I want to save the. Uh, I, I went to edit the top uh, icon, sir. Okay, so just do one thing. So there might be a zoom panel on the top. You just grab it and shift it to the right. You grab the zoom panel, it can be shifted. Because you might be seeing the zoom toolbar. You can grab it, you can move it left or right. Once in a while, you can take it to left or right to expose the top part of the Primavera. Okay. Where, sir, where can or I? no or, or you do one thing look at your mobile and you when you move the when you move the cursor you will be able to understand that where you are look at it in the mobile okay sir. and on your laptop you take the zoom panel and you move it to a little bit to the right okay uh yes majorul you're fine yes sir okay very good Okay, guys, now after we have done this up to this point, then we save it. So click on the save. And once you save the layout, I want, want you to show, show something here. So, so guys, look at the rectangle here, which I'm marking. Look at this. You, you will see your name here, project layout by, you will find your name there. So this is a layout which you have created. So what is there in this layout? See, the combination of the columns, the color, the font, the way you have represented the data and everything that you have done, it is part of the layout, the looks of the data. Looks of the data is called layout. Okay, so layout can be shared with a friend. You can create multiple layouts to look at the same day data. So now we will understand where is the layout saved. Okay, so guys, uh, sir, layouts small. are saved here. Sir, small, sir. 
हाँ यस इस टेल मी प्रोजेक्ट इज इन डॉलर्स राइट सो हाँ यस प्रोजेक्ट इज इन डॉलर्स यस वांट इट टू मेक इन रुपीस या वी वी विल मेक इट इन रुपीस इन जस्ट वेट वी आर कमिंग देयर सो नी स्लोली फ्रॉम द इंटरफेस वी विल कम टू द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन सेटिंग आल्सो वी कैन डू एन नंबर ऑफ द करेंसीज इन प्राइम वेरा विद ट्रू कैलकुलेशन ट्रू कन्वर्जन व्हाट एवर द इंटरफेस वी आर क्रिएटिंग राइट एडिंग ऑल द आइकॉन्स ऑल दोस थिंग्स सो व्हेनेवर वी इंस्टॉल द द सॉफ्टवेयर इन अनदर न्यू सिस्टम वी हैव टू डू इट राइट इट विल नॉट नो यू डोंट हैव टू डू इट आई विल टेल यू व्हाई See, if in the new new system you want this database to be utilized, you can copy the data database in the new system. You only connect the in interface. Okay. So this all this thing will come. But in a new system, you don't want to use this data. You say that in a new system, I want to start with a new and fresh da database. Then in that case, you will have to do the setting once again. Okay. Sir, we cannot. Copy it and we cannot delete this project, sir. So then we will be. Yes, having... you can do that also. That's a very smart move. Yeah, you are thinking right. So what you can do, you just copy this database and empty it out. Okay. Just get rid of the data, and you have all the settings only. Yeah, that can be done. You can do it in five seconds only. You can delete the data. Okay. And you have the setting. You can create your own structure of the enterprise portfolio. programs and projects that would be nice move yes right good thinking that's good okay so you you can do it also so most of the time people are basically if someone is using friends laptop not to worry so see guys let me tell you what is my business model my business model is forever connect with all my students i am even connected to the students whom i taught in 2006 so when was 2006 how many years ago so 2006 from now would be like 16 years 17 16 now now that guy is now the director of some company he runs his own business earlier he was a employee he was struggling for a foothold in the middle east now he runs a company he is employing more than 500 people so 500 people out of the 500 So four hundred are in India and one hundred are in the Middle East at the client site, right? He is running his own fabrication unit for the petroleum filtration plant, so doing something like that. So you know, those those guys they regularly give me business, right? The consulting. He says I've got some expanded requirement of project, and I'm giving you the raw data created by my engineers in Excel. You please create in Microsoft Project or Prima Vera, create some doc documentation. so guys you have to work a little bit hard with me for 3 days and it's a fo forever connect the my idea is that i will train you to a point where you actually don't need my help but if you do need the help uh, the group is there so how to use the group first of all you ping with your problem in the group so if i am free i will give you the answer if it requires more explanation we'll connect in a zoom call and if i'm not there suppose if i'm training right now that doesn't mean that my students are not getting the help they are getting the help from the other proficient students right so everybody gets help 24 hours okay so not to worry but focus on the learning completely okay now guys what we are trying to do we are trying to understand the layout where is the layout saved which i have created see guys the layouts are saved here so click on this button do you see that the tip of the arrow Yeah, click this button. The name of this is Open Layout. So, guys, please confirm that you are here in this toolbox, Open Layout. Now, in the Open Layout, I will explain to you what is the meaning of the global and what is the meaning of the user. See, guys, the the global layouts are visible to the entire company. You just imagine you are connected to a, a centralized database. the global layouts are visible to the entire company and the user admin is you the layout which is under the user admin is visible and accessible to you only is this clear yes sir because this is your private layout and the global layout is global for all everybody in the company can use it okay so the any layout which is created by you will be stored under the private and uh, any layout which is already presented by uh, is a, i call it factory layout factory means it comes with the product as the product is built in the factory which comes with that 
So the global layout is not only global, it comes with the software. So let's see that what is the effect of a layout on the data, how it uh, reconfigures the looks of the data. Guys, you are ready? So please bring the box on the left side so we can see the impact on the right side. So, so guys, just do this thing. So first you select the chart view here and you click on the apply button. Yeah. So guys, what do you see? Flow chart. It is called the hierarchical chart. Hierarchical mm -hmm. chart, it shows the hierarchy. So what is on the top? See, number one is the enterprise. Number two is the portfolio. Number three is the program. And the last number, it is not the four, actually the last, it is the project. Okay. So, so some of the portfolios, they have the projects directly also. Because these portfolios are small at this point of time. Right? Okay. So this is the diagrammatic representation of the hierarchy of the data. So in the um, in the world, globally, all over the world, people, those who use it, they call it hierarchical diagram. So it is used to represent the hierarchy of the government. It is used to represent the family tree chart also. You can, you can use it to represent the family tree also. I have used actually Primavera to build my family tree. Okay, because Primavera has a very huge limit. Okay, so you can build a family tree. And if you want to build the organization tree like that, you can do it. If you So right now it is showing you the organization of the business line. Okay, so what businesses are there at what level? So this is a hierarchical diagram. Now you select project coding, then click apply project coding and click apply. So you are seeing a different set of the columns. Now, these are not even arranged like parent child. These are flat. Do you see that? You've got project ID, project name. What is the focus? Focus is on the general information, strategic rating, location, sponsor, project. Now, these are very general information. That is the focus here. Now, if you look at the next one, project cost, I believe you will be seeing cost columns. <laughs> cost columns. So guys, someone has done PMP tra training here? No? Okay. So let me tell you cost of the performance index. Cost performance yeah, index. Huh? I already certified. Okay. So uh, tell me, what is the cost per performance uh, index indicating? What does it indicate? Percent. Each three months, it shows the actual value. See, cost performance uh, um, uh, index indicates what is the value creation in a project versus $1. See, uh, let me tell you, do you see this 1.03? See, in this project, you are spending $1 and you are creating a value of $1.03. You are completing that much work as the project is progressing. Now, there is a schedule performance index. Schedule performance index schedule is related to the time it shows the speed of the project do you see that it is one one means the project is going as per the schedule means all the activities are starting on the start time planned start time and all the activities are finishing on the planned finish date so if that happens in 100 percent of the cases you will see one and if the project is going slower then schedule, you, you will see something which is below one. Do you see that in the next one, 0.93? So 0.93 means the project is going at 93, at the rate of 93% of the planned speed, right? Okay, now we come to the next one, standard project view, click on this. Sir, some of the projects have showing the values zero, zero. zero yeah, zero, zero, zero means they have not yet started. Okay. The data not, has not been uh, collected. Okay, that not at started means, but the schedule already decided or else not, sir? No, then the schedule should be also zero. Both of them will be zero. You can't have CPI as absolute zero. That is not uh, possible. Okay. okay. Okay, now you click on the apply. 
Now, guys, you will see a different set of columns. You have the hierarchical structure. Here, the focus on original budget, total cost, actual labor, at completion, actual cost. Do you see that? Here, you are having a different set of the columns. That is the standard projects view, right? Okay, now you want to come back home. So just do one thing, select your own layout and click on the open. Now this time you click on the open, so you are home. So you're back into your layout. So guys, have you got your own layout back? Yeah. Yes. Yes, so you can use your own layout for your own comfort. And now let us start uh, interpreting the data, okay? So there is a lot of data here. Now we should learn that uh, how the CEOs of the organizations they look at the data and how do they interpret the data. Now, let me do a little bit of the fine tuning, not much is required to be done. So this demo screen is good, the resolution is good, the speed is good. Okay guys, now first of all, I want you to click on the schedule percentage uh, complete. Okay. Do you see the sorting zero to greater like this? You you have it same? Okay, yeah. sheet percentage are complete. So after you have sorted this column, the data is sorted in the smaller to greater direction like this. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to look at the screen only. Okay, so I'm going to select the first one. Please look on the screen. Okay, there is uh, nothing to do on your screen. Okay, now I've selected a project which is 0% complete. So, so guys, what is the meaning of the 0%? Not yet started. Not yet started. So you will see actual start column is blank and actual finish column is blank. Do you see that? Yes, sir. And you will also see the actual duration column is zero. Okay. <clears throat> Now you, you will see the actual total cost is zero and the variance is also zero. Okay. And you, you will see that the planned cost of the project is basically is remaining. So planned cost is equal to the remaining cost. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Because this project has not been started, right? Okay. Now we are going to look at the other one in which the project has been completed. So we will have a contrast. So what does a completed project looks like? Guys, please look. This, uh, no, it is not a completed. Okay, so let me uh, select a completed project. Just a moment. So let me select. Sunset, Sunset Gorge. Yeah, yeah. Sunset Gorge I have selected. This is 100% completed. Now, guys, if you look carefully on the start date and the finish date, you see there is a suffix of A in the start and the finish column, suffixed with A. Do you see that? Yeah. So it means that actual dates are available for the start and the finish. And you will notice that start and the actual start and actual finish columns are filled in. Do you see that they are filled in? Yeah. Okay. So these two columns are filled in actual start and actual finish. Now we will appreciate more data. Now guys, if you look carefully, what was the planned cost of the, uh, what was the planned cost of the project? See, uh, I'm putting a red rectangle here, the planned cost. And in the uh, green rectangle, I'm putting the actual cost. So guys, which one is more, the planned cost or the actual cost? Actual cost. Actual. So how much approximately? $5,000. Do you see that? Now, yeah. in the blue rectangle, you can see the difference is very nearly $5,000, right? So, yeah. and it is written in the bracket. So guys, if something is written in the bracket, so what does it mean? Minus. Yeah, minus. So it means that more amount of money was spent than planned. Right, guys? Is this clear? Okay. More amount of money was spent than the planned amount of the money. Right? So planned amount of the money was $92,000. And to finish the project, 
so uh, the uh, the total cost actual total cost it went up to 97 and this is the extra amount of the money now i am going to mark uh, a yellow uh, rectangle so in the yellow rectangle what do you see zero so what what is that column <laughs> Remaining. Remaining. So let me tell you, whenever a project is marked as completed, the financial system says the remaining total cost column should be set to zero. Even if some amount of the project budget is remaining, but it will be set to the zero. Why? Because the any amount of the money which is re remaining should be uh, sent to use on some other work. Okay, so that is why the remaining is never shown when the project is completed. Even if the project is completed with less amount of money, the remaining total cost column is on as long as the project is below 100%. When the project reaches 100%, the remaining column is set to the $0. Right, guys? Is it clear? Yeah. That is a financial role. Okay. So now let's look at a project which is partially completed, not complete, but it is going on. Okay. So uh, baseline will be according to the as per the present schedule, or else a total cost uh, baseline uh, cost, sir. In See, the baseline, of baseline is uh, consisting of multiple project parameters. Baseline has the best values of schedule. Baseline has the best values of the material and resource quantities like man hours, machine hours, material quantities and budgeted expense and baseline has the best estimated values of the cost. So three things go into the baseline and which we use to compare with the actual and derive the project health status and then we can understand how much it is varying. Like, what is a baseline? I'll tell you. So tell me, what is a normal human body temperature? 90, 90, 60, 30. 90. Hmm? 98.65 degrees. Yeah, 98.6 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale. Now, if a person uh, person's reading is coming at 102, so what is the interpretation at this so you can understand the 102 is more more as compared to what the baseline temperature we say the person is having a fever so it means that the person could be having some kind of medical problem right so baseline temperature is there baseline blood pressure guys what is the baseline blood pressure of the human body 120 by 80 yeah 120 is the pressure which is created by the heart when it is squeezing and 80 is the pressure which is re remaining when the heart is relaxing. When the heart is relaxed, the pressure doesn't become zero, otherwise you will die. So it still maintains 80. Okay, so 120, 80, 120, 80, right? So this is baseline. So the doctors have at least 250 baselines to compare against, right? To create a picture of the person's health and determine the quantum of the treatment quality of the treatment right guys is it clear have you seen at your medical report comprehensive one it has got a reference range so from the project management point of view it is called the baseline range right so the medical is medical field is using 250 different kind of baselines to interpret the health of a person Okay, there are more tests which are not basically used in the everyday life, but those tests are con conducted when the person is admitted into the hospital, those tests are seen internally by the doctor. But there are certain tests which are called the general health checkup, which you might know. You might know your sugar level, blood pressure level, you might know your temperature, you might know your oxygen level by using the pulse oximeter, right? So... So we have got a baseline value of the thing. Similarly, to judge the health of a project, we use the baseline. Baseline is not just one value. It is a combination of three values of time, of, uh, of resources, units, and resource cost, activity cost, right? Okay, guys. Now, let us look at this uh, project, which is in progress. This has started but not completed. So guys, do you see the actual is there? 
in the start. You see, see that? Yeah. Okay, now when the A now, is. What does exactly A represent? Okay, so you will see that the actual start the column is filled in, but actual finish column is blank. Why it is blank? Because the project has not yet completed. Sir, what is the meaning of A, sir? A means actual date is there. The project has actually started. If you do not ex expose the actual start column, at least it will give you the indicator that the project has actually started. Okay. okay. Suppose if the actual start is on September 1st and if it is actual uh, actual start happened on October 1st, then so it, is it is late. You can say that it the project started late. Late. No, no, no. Whether it will, A will be shown or it will not be? No, A, A will be shown. As soon as the project has got even 1% completion, A will come up. Okay, okay, okay. Started. Okay. Yeah, A will come up. Say, uh, the, I'll, I'll just tell you what I'm trying to tell you. So, suppose if I hide this column and if I hide the percentage column also. Now, can you tell me that which projects have started? Okay. Do you get the point now? Yeah, yeah I got, I got it. So you can look at the start column and you can find out that which of the projects are having A. Next to the start column, you can say, okay, the projects which are having the A, so they have actually started. And if you look at the finish column, so right now, how many projects have the finished? Just look at the finish column. How many of the projects have A? Two. Two, yes. And you can confirm it uh, like this. Check out. You see that 100%? Okay. Okay, fine. Now, le let us look at the data further here. Now, in this project, this is the total uh, budget. And this is the amount of the money which has been spent in completing 31%. So this is the amount of money which has been spent in completing the 31%. Now, if you look at the variance, so, so guys, the variance is a positive or the negative? Positive. Positive. So what does it mean? It's, what uh, it? it's saved money. Huh, he saved money. Uh, that's good. So this much amount of the money was spent less from the budget means that uh, the ideal variance is zero. Yeah. The ideal variance zero means that uh, you spend the same amount of the money which you budget. Yeah, so this is good. If you are save, saving some money, that is good. But mm -hmm. what is the meaning of the bracket? Bracket means that you are spending more than the budgeted amount of the money. Right, guys? Is this clear? Yeah. You are spending more than the budgeted amount of the money. So here, what you have is the variance. So this variance is a positive amount of the money. So the positive amount of the money means that this much money has been spent less. Okay, now this is the remaining amount of the money. Now guys, who is going to use this dashboard? This dashboard will be used by the CEO, portfolio manager, and... Uh, and the program manager. Now, let me tell you that who sees what. The CEO sees the whole thing. Right, guys? Mm. Hmm? Is this clear? Okay. Now, the portfolio manager can see only his portfolio. One portfolio manager will see only one portfolio. He won't be seeing the rest of the data. No, that is not allowed. So, is, is, is this clear? Yeah. Okay. Now, how much will a program ma ma manager see? See, guys, let me scroll down. Do you see these yellow bands here? A program manager will see only his program. A program manager will see only this much. Oh, yeah. Or maybe I'm going to put a sh shade here. If you are the program ma manager of the product pro program one, you will be seeing oh, only this much okay and if you are a pro project manager then how much you 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 will see you will see only your project you will be seeing like this only guys do you see a big green band there or let me put the the 
so what what project you are doing read the red band hmm? which project you have uh routing uh, oh, wait. yeah johnston routine Johnny, routine uh, yeah Okay, so this is your project. You will be seeing only one project or maybe if you're having three projects, you will be seeing three projects, okay? You won't be seeing the entire company data, right? Because that is not necessary. So EPPM is used by the top level bosses. So this is the EPPM, okay? So you will be in your access, you will be seeing only one project or two projects, whichever you are managing. But if your program manager is kind enough, he might let you see all the projects in the program. You can see all the projects in the program, but let me tell you, you would be only be able to update your own project, only one. Rest of the project will be read-only mode. Do you see that? Yeah. So that's what it will be. So guys, is this clear? So read only, read only. Rest of the projects will be read only. Maybe he wants the all the project managers to be able to see all the project for whatever reason. Okay, but only you will be able to add, update and delete the data from your own project and rest of the project you can only see, you you cannot. You can understand the reason because they their ownership with, is with a different pro project manager, only he can add, update is and delete. Is a, so would, would it be the right thing? If some some other project manager accessed your data and uh, he updated, he changed no. something. No, that won't be good. So you don't want uh, for yourself. So similarly, everybody else will see your project in the read only. They can only read your project. They cannot add if that is uh, allowed by the top boss. Okay, so that's all. So that's a, a policy that can be implemented in the network. Now guys, uh, so what we are going to do that we are going to configure the Primavera further. Okay, we are going to configure the Primavera further. So guys, you are ready for that? Yeah, sir. Okay, so guys, I'm pausing for any questions you have till now. Guys, do you have? You have any questions or doubts so you are ready to go so so guys can you do one thing uh just go to the washroom if you feel like i'm going to the washroom i'll be back in a moment five minute break okay.
Oh, okay, guys. So uh, you guys are back. Let me know if we can start. अभी आपके पास क्या टाइम हो रहा है साढ़े तीन बज रहे हैं ना यहाँ पे बहुत सर्दी हो रही है ऑस्ट्रेलिया में साउथ एमिस्फेयर है ना हाँ साउथ एमिस्फेयर है यहाँ एमिस्फेयर इज ना टिल्टिंग अवे फ्रॉम द सन या Yeah. Angle exactly. has changed. Changed away mm -hmm. from the sun, so it is the winter. Yeah. So winter in the this. Pretty cold. Yeah, Africa, Australia, they're having the. Yeah, peak. South Africa, South America, yeah. South exactly. America, South Africa. Mm. Southern Hemisphere, it is the winter time. It's interesting. It so is very interesting. If you if you fly, right now from say in the month of June to the Australia. Yeah. So you'll be freaked out. So you know. It took me one week to manage. You know, one week to get back to like the winter temperature. <laughs> Pretty cold. Okay, guys. So can we start? Yes, sir. So everybody, yeah. please confirm that you are here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So guys, yeah. we are going to do the configuration. of the primavera further which is called the administrative setup okay we are going to set up the various parameters to make it more conducive for our use because this is a new one brand new setup so we have to do the setting so that it is much more useful for us so guys please click on the admin main menu on the top so select admin preferences number 1 option admin pre preferences okay in the admin preferences so what we have is the general okay now in the general so in the general so what we have is the code separator right so in the code separator so there is a dot so codes separator is used to whenever the parent and child codes are displayed together so this uh, dot is uh, basically you know this is to separate the parent and child code so this dot is fine so we don't change it now here it says first day of the week so first day of the week basically when you look at the calendar the calendar will start from sunday so if you are not going to use sunday as the first working day so we can select here monday so guys please select here monday change it to monday so when you change it to monday and when you look at the calendar inside the primavera various calendar settings will be there you will see from the left side the monday will start and the weekend will be on the right hand side right so please click on the this drop down and send select the first day of the week as monday so guys you are done yeah okay so after selecting as monday so activity duration default see whenever you create an activity normally it will put 5 uh, so i want here 6 it is for a very specific reason because for the purposes of this training we need the default duration to be 6 all activity should be created with 6 days but you can change it so default default doesn't mean rule default means the meaning of the word default means that 
it is a matter of convenience to have sex, but you can change it. That is the meaning of the word de default. So after that, you select the data limits. Okay. Now the data limit says that what is the data limit for the EPS, WS level. So if you look here in the EPS, you've got one, then two, then you have got three, so three is good enough. So, you know, if you look at the whole bunch, it is setting up a lot of levels as compared to what you need. So, so this is quite good. So you don't have to worry about it. So you just leave it there. You will never use the levels of 20. Now we come to the ID. ID means identity. According to the fundamentals of the project management, the project management says that every entity inside a project should have a unique identifying character, unique identifying character. Now, if you look at the provision, the provision is, is for the 20, but if you look at the use, just read how, how many characters are there in this project code, which I'm pointing out, how many are there? Eight, sir. Eight, sir. Hey, do you think you will need to use 20 just for a bunch of projects? No, you will never need it. Okay. Even if you looked at your social security card number, uh, even in India, we have got uh, the UID card. It is equal to something like that. So we have got maximum is 16 characters to re represent the 100 billion plus po population uniquely. Okay, fine. Now, let us come to the time periods. This is very important. So, you know, this is to describe the working day. So, guys, what is the number of the number of the hours in a day? 24. 24. But can a person work 24 hours? No. That is why we are saying that a person can work eight man hours a day. Now, guys, where does the number eight come from? So, guys, the number eight, the eight man hours per day rule was adopted by the countries in the world in the year 1st of May, 1950. There were a lot of labor laws were given by the International Labor Organization, which is part of the United Nations. So, they mandated that the set of the labor laws, including one of the most important law, it says that industry should make people work for eight man hours per day, which is good enough. So earlier, you know, there was no law. People used to be made to work 10 hours, 12 hours, 13, 14 per day. It was there's some sort of exploitation. But after the labor laws came on the 1st of May, 1950. So guys, have you heard of May Day or Labor Day holiday? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 This is uh, celebrated in most of the countries. So the labor, so the people, you and me. So we are happy that we have a certain set of the laws to give the right amount of work and some rest and relaxation to us. Right. So eight man hours of the work has been determined. It is good for the business. It is good for the health of the person. It does not hurt. It does not hurt the worker, nor it hurts the employer, right? Okay, so that is a magical number. So we extrapolate this number. Suppose if I'm going to create an organization which is going to work six days a week. So guys, how many man hours will be there 50. in six days a week? 48. So you write here 48 in this. So we are going to use this. Now 48 multiplied by four because there are four weeks in a month. So how much you are going to write in the man hours per, per month? 192. Now guys, if there are 12 months in a year, what will be 192 multiplied by 12? Yeah, but I would ask you to make it 2400. Why? I'll explain to you. Because what happens if you look at the year, so there is, there are a lot of months which are having the fifth week. And the fifth Saturday is also a working Saturday, right? Fifth Saturday is also the working Saturday. To accommodate those Saturdays, we rounded off to 2400 man hours per year. So 
all it is defined in terms of the man hour. So working day is eight man hour. Working week is 48 man hours. Working month is 192 man hours. Working year is 2400 man hours, right? So that's the idea. Now I'm asking you to change the month abbreviation here to MO. I'll explain to you in a moment. You write the small O, not zero O. And in the minutes, you put single M. Now, let, let me tell you that why I'm asking you to do it. So some of you might be using in the future, uh, Microsoft Project and Primavera both. I just made it compatible because in the Microsoft Project, the month is represented by MO and the minutes is represented by M, but we can't change it there. There it is fixed. It is hard coded inside the software, but in the Primavera, you can change it. So I had uh, some problem which I solved in the year 2010. So I'm transferring my experience to you. It is better to do this setting in the beginning. So in the future, if you have any situation requiring you to migrate data, so you are now compatible. Right, guys? Is this clear? Okay. So that makes it compatible with Microsoft Project. Because a lot of my students, they are using both the software in their organizations. Now come to the earned value. So earned value has a for formula as per the PMI standards. So we don't change anything here. So then we come to the reports part. In the re reports, so in the header label one, you put your name in the footer label, you put your organization name. Why I'm asking you to do it? See, when you print the reports, you might see these two data in the printout and you can know that where they are and where you should be changing them from, where they get placed on the reports and you can come back here and you can change it. Actually, the name should be in uh, the caps and small, mixture of caps and small. And the footer level, it is a central public works department. So that is abbreviation. Yeah, that should be in the capital. That's right. Okay. Now we come to the... Why is it... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, why is it CPWD? Oh. No, actually, CPWD has written central public works department he works there kranti okay. works there. oh okay, okay that's his organization okay. name all right all right, all right. now guys come to the options in the options so you are seeing this url just do this thing quickly copy this url open it in the browser, bookmark it, close the browser and come back here. Yes, you paste it here, yeah. Once it is open, do a control D, it will bookmark it. Okay, you can come back here, you can find a lot of additional uh, information about the Primavera. So you should create a new folder or you can put it on the bookmark bar. Yes. So click on the done. It will start uh, appearing on the top. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fine. Good. So in the fu future, you can come back here. Now you go get back into the Primavera. Now guys, so what do we do? We come to the rate types. Rate types is okay, fine. So there is no, nothing to be done. We use the standard. We select the in industry as engineering and construction. Why is it so? Because engineering and construction option gives you the maximum features of the Primavera implemented. So it is good for us in any kind of project. So it is better to select engineering and construction only, right? It is better to select the engineering and construction option for this reason. Okay. Okay, guys, is, is this clear? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Now, if you have done that, then you click on the close button, close this toolbox and click on the okay. It is saying that it will be implemented when you restart the Primavera. That's okay. Okay. Now, 
one of the administrative option is done. See, in the admin, there are three uh, options. So well, let me show you something. Okay, just hold it here. Guys, do you, do you see that? The same, uh, the options are here as well. See, uh, let me do it like this. Do you see that? These are uh, the options are here as well. The same yeah. options which are there in the admin. Okay. So now to use the second option of the admin, you can click here also, admin categories. Categories means that uh, classification of data as you store the data in the Primavera, how they are to be categorized or classified. So you select this. Okay. So guys, you are here in the admin categories. Yeah. Okay. Now the first is the baseline type. The baseline type is actually whatever has been provided is okay and we are fine with that. We don't have to really change it. Okay, so let it remain the same. Then we come to the expense. In the expense, so what is an expense? Expense is a planned and budgeted amount of money which is used to indirectly help an activity to be done. See, direct uh, cost of a activity is man, machine, material. Expense, what is expense? For example, one of the expense which is uh, possible is staff welfare. Now staff welfare is the budgeted amount of money which is used for the welfare of the, of the uh, workers the, which are uh, assigned to the activity, for example, you are paying for their food, for their medicine, for their clothing, for their transport to and fro from the site. So you can write here staff welfare. Okay, staff welfare. Press enter. Okay, then you click on the add once more. And you write here transport expenditure. Okay. Yes, sir. Sir, your voice is not audible. Hello? Hello? Awaz nahi aari aapki. Sir? Is he saying something? No, no, no. No, no. Not. Someone please call him. Wait, I'll call. Ah. I'll call. Oh, you can hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, okay. So let me check. Actually, I've got three mics here. So now, uh, now, how is the sound now? How is the voice now? I'm using the laptop mic. Yeah. Nice. So this, this is better. Now, I'm changing the mic. I'm using the mic, uh, I mean, which is a USB mic. Uh, it is very near to my face. So which one is better, this or the pre, pre, previous one? Uh, 
This one is better, sir. The present one is better. The present one is better. Okay, fine. Okay, so I just say. Sometimes you know what happens if there is a little bit uh, of uh, basically the wires are shaken, so it just switches back to some other mic. I've got three mics here actually. I've got two cams and three mics here. So this is the mic which is very near to me, and I prefer to use that only. Okay, guys. Now, if you look at the life cycle of the project according to the PMI, it is initiating planning, then executing monitoring and controlling so executing has to be shifted up like this okay and then it is not controlling and monitoring but monitoring because we need to watch something first and then we can control it so you change it like this and we we can classify the wbss with these ca categories okay so please change it as on the screen. Excuse me, sir. Yes. So whatever, when we edit the options, it automatically saves us. Sir. We don't need to do add or something uh, in the Prima or up. See, in, in, the, in the Prima Vera, there is a button here. If you see this button active, then you click on it twice. Okay, so if you don't see the Hello. button active, it means that the Primavera has already saved it because okay. Primavera works in the uh, automatic save mode because when you are moving from screen to screen or data to data, okay, so Primavera automatically saves the data. But once in a while, you can click on this button. Okay. So right now you see that the floppy button is active. It means that you can click at this point of time. So it will save the data into the database. Okay. Okay. Now, now let us come to the document categories. In the document category, see in the Primavera, you can store document inside the Primavera, just like you store the document in the Google Drive or OneDrive, right? SkyDrive is there. So these are online document sharing platforms. So in the Primavera also, you can share the documents to your team members, right? So when you are sharing the documents to your team members, in the Primavera is a very disciplined software. You cannot randomly put the document. No, it's not, unlike the Google Drive, you cannot put it randomly. You select the category of the document to where it belongs, and you can upload it. So guys, what do you do? Go through the list. It's a very comprehensive list. And and you push the category, which is basically, you know, the push the back category, which is frequently used by you. You can push it to the top by using the shift up button. So just have a look, just find out which category you use very frequently, select it and you push it to the top. Just like that. So guys, is this clear? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, now select the document status. The status means what, what is the state of the document? So one of the state of the document which has not been represented here, which I feel will be fair to represent is rejected. Even if your document is rejected, you can use it as a sample. So you write here rejected. And you use this category. Yes, you can sort it also. Yeah. Then you come to the risk. So risk, you know, what is the risk? Risk is an uncertain event, which if it happens, it has a negative impact on the project. Okay. Now here, the risk has been represented uh, in a sort of uh, improper way. Actually, 
the people and the customer should be under the resources. The resources is the generic word and the people and the customer, they are the specific word. Now I'm going to fix it. So what I do, I take the, I select the resources and shift it left. Then I shift it up. Then I select the people and I shift it right. Then I select the, the customer and shift it left like this. So guys, can, can you fix it like this? After you have fixed it, we are going to add two more. That is the machine and another category will be material. Because the machine and material, they are also at the risk. Right? Now to add, so click on the add, it will add a blank row here. Now in this blank row, you write machines. Why the machine resource is a risk? Because if machines are not available in the right quantity and qu quality, mm -hmm. it can uh, it can uh, slow down the project. Okay. Now click on the add once more. Then you add here materials. Materials. You add here materials. Can we add the cost into the resources? Hmm, tell me. Cost. Can we add a cost? No, actually, we are not yet into the resources. So this is the risk categories. Okay. okay. Even so, the cost also a risk. If we not able to get the money in a stipulated time, uh, we get we find it some to a risk. Uh, tell me one thing, Abdul. Are you using a Bluetooth mic or something like that? No, sir. Headphone, sir. Headphone, what kind? Is it a Bluetooth wireless or no, is it a wired Not a Bluetooth, sir. Wired one. Wired one. Okay. Because, you know, each time you are speaking, there is a creaking noise. Yeah. I'm, might be uh, my room is uh, closed because some echo would be... Uh, would, uh, no, no. It's not the echo. It happens only when you it's speak. It's a headphone problem. Mm -hmm. It's a headphone problem. You need, I, yeah. you need to talk to uh, someone and ask someone to record and then you... You can hear it back. Okay, fine. So basically what I was saying is that in the project, we have a risk risk register. So in that register, we have to list out the risk as you may have studied in the PMP process. So here is the categories that we are creating, right? Now, the next one after the categories is the notebook topics. Now, have you heard of WBS dictionary? So that is it. WBS dictionary is called notebook topics. So each time you want to write a note, you have to select a category, but sometimes if you're not able to immediately select a category, so you create a category for yourself, which is called the general notes. You write here general notes. Yeah, general notes. So what is the utility? If you, when you are wanting to write a note, if you can't think of the category where it should go, in the beginning, you put it in the general notes and later when you can think of a better category, you can put it there. So, or you can just keep it in the general note only. Then we come to the units of measure. So the units of measure used for the material, but one unit which is not used is the dollar. Dollar is not used to measure material. You first of all, you select and delete it using the delete button. Okay. I'll just tell you that how a material can be measured. A material can be measured for
Okay, guys, please read it. Length, area, volume, weight, and count. Yeah. So these are the five parameters which can be measured for a material. So is there any more parameter beside this? Okay, now let me tell you. So, you know, there are two kinds of lengths. One is the British and one is the French. How do the British measure the length? Inches, foot, feet, miles, right? Yards. Okay, but what is the French? French is the millimeter, centimeter, meter, kilometer. And so is the area and the volume, the weight. What is the British weight? Ounces, pounds. What is the weight used by the French? They gave us the decimal base, like milligram, centigram, gram, kilogram, tons, right? These are based on the tens and hundreds. Counting, the British counting is like dozens. Okay. What is the French counting like? It is like uh, 10, 100, 1000, million, right? 10,000, million, billion, like that, right? So is, is that good? Okay, so now what I want you to do is to look at my screen and you build up this list. Okay, you can add here and build up this list from my screen. Okay, just give me a moment. I'm going to start my primer and you can have a look at my screen and you can build up the list here. I'm sure guys, now you can see my screen. Uh, someone can tell me. Yes, sir. Okay, now you add this in your list. If something is there, don't add it. Just skip it and go to the next one. So once you're done, you let me know, then we will move to the next one. So I want to delete all the things and I have to make whatever the list is there. That's all right. No, no, don't delete. Just only add what is not there in your screen.
सर यस टेल मी सो यू आर डन यहाँ ये हो गया मैं बोल रहा था कि दस पंद्रह मिनट का ब्रेक ले सकते हैं प्लीज हाँ हाँ यस यस सो गाइस सो आफ्टर यू हैव डन सो सो गाइस आफ्टर यू हैव डन यू जस्ट गो फॉर द ब्रेक ओके सो आई एम कीपिंग माय स्क्रीन शेयर आई एम गोइंग टू म्यूट द माइसल सो इट्स अ ट्वेंटी मिनट्स ब्रेक आई एम गोइंग टू पुट द टाइम इन द व्हाट्सएप राइट ओके ठीक है so guys uh, everyone is back yes sir yes okay yes, fine. fine so you have the see units here so what you can do you can select uh, you can select the meter shift up square meter shift up so if you are going to use this frequently you can do it like this okay so these are good to start but it is not limited to these only in the future uh, you can create more as per your requirement of the project okay so now now we are going to do the currency part of it so guys please click on the third the options of the admin you go go to the admin go into the admin and in the admin you select currencies so in the admin so this is the currency master database so guys do you see that us dollar is uh, written as the base currency and the exchange rate is 1 because all other currency they are the compared with the us dollar and if you are sending any money to another part of the world so you know your local currency will be converted first into the us dollar and the us dollar will be transmitted from your bank so practically they the bank will make you buy the us dollar so your local currency first buys the us dollar okay so then the bank sends the us dollar to the re recipient bank so the re recipient bank what it does it converts the us dollar which is received by it into the local currency then it gives it to the recipient so actually it is the us dollar which is uh, traveling from bank to bank in this world right so all other currencies basically you know they are compared against the us dollar and their value is set so us dollar is uh, Set to the base currency and exchange rate is one, and rest of the currencies they are compared. So, so here, so we are going to create a currency. See, lot of the currencies are here. If the GBP is here, if you want to update, you can update it from a site called xe. dot com. If you go to the xe. dot com, you can find out that what is the Uh, what what is the current value of a currency? So it will be interesting to see what is the current value of the us dollar against the ruble okay so let's go to this and you you can see xc.com so you can update the master here let's see let's say that we have got one us dollar and and we want to see the ruble what is the russian ru ruble now so so guys so one us dollar is equal to 59.48 right so what you can do you can go into the prima primavera and here you can write that it is 59.48 like this 59.48 like that okay now one of the currencies is indian rupees which is not there in the list so what you do so you click on the add so guys please click on the add 
and in the currency code you write here INR, INR, which is the international code for the Indian rupee, and you write here Indian rupee. Rupee and Indian rupee has a symbol, so this symbol can be brought on with the combination of Control Shift number four. If you press Control Shift number four on the Indian key keyboard, you can get this symbol. And let's see that what is the current exchange rate. So I say one US dollar compared to INR. So how much would be that? It is seventy nine. So we can round it off to eighty. So what do you do? Just go into the Primavera and you write here 80. Okay, it's like this. And if you're not able to get the currency symbol, so I'm going to put it into the chat box. So you can pick it up from the chat box. Guys, do you see the Ruby symbol in your uh, Zoom chat? So you can copy and paste it from there. Similarly, you can create a currency for Pakistani rupees and Bangladesh Taka. So Bangladesh Taka, it does have a symbol. It has its own symbol. So that can be, uh, that can be created from the, uh, from the Bangladesh compatible, the keyboard or the window. So you can type that. You should know what is the shortcut for that. Okay. So now, Please look at this positive currency format. In the positive currency format, you select a format in which the symbol is having a space between the number and the symbol and the number. There is a space here. Do you see that space here? So you put this space here. Hello. So, so guys, do you see see that? Guys, have you selected the positive currency format? Uh, someone please confirm you can still hear me. Yeah. Okay, fine. Good. So you, you select it. Okay. And after that, you please click on the close. So make sure that it looks like this. INR, Indian rupees and symbol you can pick up from the, if you go to the Zoom chat, you can pick up the symbol and you select here 80. And similarly, you can create Bangladesh Taka and you can create Pakistani rupees also. And then you click on the close. <clears throat> so here you have stored it in the master database. It is not yet uh, applied. It will not be applied by default. You will have to choose it. So, guys, you have uh, created. So, you are done. Hello, Is sir. Uh, I'm gone somewhere, sir. I can't be able to find out where I am. Okay. So, uh, you are at your home? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So, please uh, show your screen. I'll tell you. Okay, okay sir. Now, screen visible. Yeah. So, so, um, so how did you manage to do it? So it is, uh, it is a miracle that you are able to do it. Okay. So <laughs> even I'm not <laughs> able to do it, uh, even if I tried to, so let me see if I'm getting, so have you applied some sort of filter or what? No, sir. You applied the filter. You just clicked on the filter and you say, uh, currently open. So you just hid away oh. their data. Okay. Okay, 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 sir. Fine. Okay. Where I have to change the currency settings, sir? Ah, yes, yes, fine. Not a problem. So I'm staying here for some while. So you come to the admin. Let's click on the admin. Okay. So you select the, the currency. And in the currency, you click on the add. 
and you write here INR in this column in the currency ID INR that is the Indian rupees and in the currency name you write here Indian rupees Indian rupees okay and you write here in the currency symbol you write here so what do you do you press your control shift and four number button control shift four number okay and in the exchange rate you type here 80 8080 so this is basically this is the cost of the rupee against the us dollar rate of the rupee against the us dollar so now in this positive currency format you select the format here like this the one with the space like this okay sir. done okay. one okay yeah so you it, it it is going to look good now you close this toolbox close it okay so let me do this thing quickly let me adjust your uh, screen quickly because you missed some parts of the training yes so let me guys help him uh, come up to the current looks of the screen so toolbars customize so we will customize action administrator dictionaries find publish reports that's fine so we will quickly customize this so we place the buttons here so this is what we were doing so you can basically you can take the re recording and you can update yourself so what i would like you to do you play the re re recording and then you can redo them once again surely the da yeah. database okay you will have to create a new database and you can do it there yeah. and let me add all the buttons and the first button i click is the lock because the lock stabilizes the buttons in their places then I can bring up all the buttons which you need to use in the training so that none of the buttons are missing. I let me do it quickly. So you start with this set of the buttons in the beginning and then later as you become much more proficient so you can add or remove this set of the buttons so you can have the buttons your way but these are the minimum buttons which everybody requires. Okay so you can add, add more button in the future if you need to so we will need these buttons at all the times. Enterprise roles, OBS, and add or remove the buttons. Let me see what is useful is issues. On the right hand side, you need this. Dissolve, link, undo, fill down. Okay. And rest of the button set is complete. And for uh, now here, we are going to change the font to the Vardana. So Vardana, the best font is the Vardana. So here, so you just type VR and the Vardana comes up, you select regular eight. Do you, do you see the, the font change here? So yes, is sir. it yes, better? Sir. Yeah. Now we are going to open one of the projects. So let's say th this one, it will open more tabs here. So we can, uh, the, we have the activities tab, then we can click on the WBS tab. So then we can click on the resources, we get the resources, then we get the reports. Okay, so you quickly change the font here. So just do do this thing quickly. Click on the fonts of the button and you select Vardana 8. Okay, do it on all the tabs. Okay, okay from sir. activities to WBS. Okay, Vardana regular 8, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Call. <clears throat> yes, I have done it, sir. Okay, do it for the WBS, yeah, because each of the tab needs its okay. own. Oh, each tab request, okay, sir. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. because each each tab can have a different size. Okay. So, sir, in my in my system. Yes. Yes. Except in like in WBMS and activities, my Gantt chart is uh, it is appearing, sir. But in projects coming to the project, that the Gantt chart is the empty, sir. Ha, huh, Gantt chart we just write it down. We don't know. But if you still want to see see the Gantt chart, so you can click on this button, this Gantt chart button. Do you see that uh, the button on the top? I'm seeing the Gantt chart, but it is completely empty, sir. 
So it is completely empty. So let me see. So you know that that is something new to learn. So let me see that what happens uh, when it is empty. Let me share my screen, sir. Maybe it's on the side. Yeah. Now you can see, sir. Yeah, actually, you know, the GAN chart is not empty. Actually, the GAN chart, the if you look at the time scale, it is placed in a different time scale. Yeah. Right now, it is your time scale. Just wait, 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 wait. Just don't click. Okay. Sir, as like uh, Microsoft project, can we find uh, uh, what we say in the mood to some, if we click the same icon. We exactly, see. exactly, exactly. Uh, okay, so the, I'll just tell you that what happens. See, what, see, when you... See, guys, please look at the demo screen right now. Uh, Kranti, give me the control. I'll just tell you. I'll just tell you. Uh, Kranti, give me the uh, remote control uh, approval. Sir, uh, let me give to other systems, sir. One minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One minute. Yes, sir. Now you can. Yes, sir. Okay, good. See, in this system, in this, so when you switch on the GAN chart, so you will not be, uh, you will not be seeing the GAN chart immediately. Why? Because you know, time scale is a very big scale. It is a you scale. This scale can be running into five hundred years. So suppose you are here right now. So how do you get? See, if you select a project, and in front of the project, see, I am going to draw. Uh, the marker point. So if you want to get the activity timeline of this project, okay, in the center here, exactly here at the tip of the arrow, you do it double click. No, at the tip of the arrow. Okay. You see the GAN chart has come? Uh -huh. Actually, you know, the Primavera will find out and uh, now you click here at the at the tip of the arrow here you will see it will be positioned here now you click here at the tip of the arrow on the right side do you see that now you double click in the middle so you will see actually the middle of the activity bar is brought in the center right yeah so, so abdul you were also asking the same question that yes, sir. the game chart is missing I, how see? can i see the entire project sir uh, in, we, in Microsoft, we can able to use the entire project, the oh, yes, yes, view yes, in a single yes. view. Yes, good, good question. So the, I will help you uh, relate the Microsoft project uh, in the Primavera also because I am your Microsoft project trainer as well. Uh, the, I will show you that what is the same and what is better and what is different. Okay, so Abdul, you please share your screen once again. Okay, okay, sir. Sorry, sir. No, Abdul, Abdul. No so, uh, yeah, so he, uh, so I need to make sure okay. that he is uh, come up to the group. Okay, see, sir. Uh, see, okay. Right now, you know, the scale that you are seeing, it is a highly expanded scale. Mm. So it is highly uh, stretched. So what do you do? See at the, see at the project level, the time units will be in terms of the years mm. because the project, they run into years, right? Mm. So you need to shrink the time scale. To shrink the time scale, you need to click this button, zoom out. Do you see this? Yes, sir. Once more. Yes, yes. yes so right sir. now you you are a, a, able to see the time scale in terms of the years and the quarters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who can bring the? Mm. So suppose if your if your act, activity timeline is missing from the screen, either this way or that way, then what happens? So suppose double just, click the. You just double click. And we need and, and then what you can do, you can grab it from here. No, no, no. You can actually grab it. Do you see a hand on, on the top? See. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Fine. So this hand is used to grab and, and do the fine placement. Right? Yes. So sir. this hand is used to. So so guys, please look at the demo screen. Do you do you see a hand? See. Yeah. The uh, the upper portion of the time scale is is grabbable. You can grab it. Okay. If you bring the cursor, it will turn into a hand. Okay. It will turn into a palm with a finger out. And then what you can do? You can place it finally. So, so guys, try this 10 times left, right. Okay. And place it like this. So, okay. You place the timeline very near to the partition, screen partition. That is the vertical partition. So, so guys, grab the timeline and you move it left, right with the mouse and get used to it. 
so so that it feels very much normal after some time sir how can i remove how can i uh, remove the bottom tab yeah. sir? so bottom. the 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 bottom detail can be uh, switched off from here so you click on this okay and if you want to get this thing back you click here okay so sir. these two the buttons are having the uh, uh, opposite Sure. So you you do the left right click thing ten times on the left ten times on the right just do it right now yeah left right you do it ten times so that you remember it permanently you don't have to basically ask me I'll say that Abdul please hide the details so you should know which buttons to click yes sir right okay now guys I'm going to tell you what is the effect of the lower part of the time scale. See, in the lower part of the time scale, what you are seeing right now is quarters. Now, the lower time, part, lower side of the time scale, if you bring the cursor onto the lower side, so guys, do you see that it has turned into a lens? See, see, the, what happens when I drag the lens toward the left? Actually, it is not moving the time scale, but it is condensing the time scale. See, see, it is condensing the data. Now, can you read the quarters now? You can't read. It just says Q, 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 Q. You can't no. read which quarter is that. So the, what you do, you, you stretch it. Now you stretch, stretch, stretch. And if you stretch it like this, is that you, useful? No, even that is not useful because you are wasting screen space. So wh what do you do? You should optimize it to a point where it is comfortable for you to read. And it also... This one is fitting optimally on the screen. So I think so. This is good for me. I can read the quarters and I can utilize the maximum space which is available to me. I don't have un unlimited space to expand here. Right, guys? Is it clear? Yes, sir. See, the first part has hand. The lower part has got lens. The hand is used to place and the lower part is used to size up the data so that oh. it is comfortably visible. Right. Okay, guys. Now let's come to the point. Now we have uh, configured the uh, uh, the currency and done the ad administrative actions. So after that, now guys, let me tell you the story of the admin. This admin bu button you won't see when you join a company. So uh, Abdul, listen to me carefully. You won't see the admin button when you join a company. Why? Because any organization will have only one very highly knowledgeable person as the administrator. Not everybody can be administrator. If everybody has got the admin right, and can you just imagine if someone is irresponsibly changing the exchange rate of the, the currency, then what is going to happen? Totally going to collapse. People are going to see, 10,000 people are going to see the wrong currency conversion. Mm -hmm. They may, might end up doing the wrong things by interpreting the wrong data. So admin, you will not see. But why I'm teaching you the admin? I'm teaching you the admin because you needed to configure your own prime aware. I'm not sure that if you're going to join to tomorrow a company in which you will have the opportunity. Suppose you want to configure the prime aware for your friend. You want to configure the prime aware in another laptop. You should be able to help yourself, right? Yes. So in the organization, you don't have to worry. Another person will have already... Uh, set up the administrative parameters and uh, he will provide you the currency master and everything. So what can you do there if you want to configure for your own use? So, so guys, there is an option called the user preferences. So this button is existing in two places. So uh, uh, Abdul, so uh, don't touch. Okay. Just, wait. Just wait. Let me come. Okay. So guys, this user preference button is existing in two places. Please take note. It is existing in the drop down of the edit menu and also existing on the panel number one. So, guys, do you see the both ends of the arrow? Yeah. So, it is better that you do it from the, you click it from the panel because from the panel it will be single click, right? So please click on the user preferences, the button here. So user preferences means what is the preference of the individual regarding his own local setting. 
because the admin settings are global. If you change the currency rate in the admin, it will be changed for all the 10,000 users. It is such a powerful. So when you join an organization, you will find that on the top, the administration option is missing. It is not there. So Abdul, please click on the user preferences here on the panel number one. Mm -hmm. So guys, you will get the user preferences toolbox. Do, do you see this toolbox here? Yes, sir. User preferences. Okay. So uh, everybody, please confirm you are here. Sandeep, you are here. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So guys, we will start with the time units. In the time units, what is happening right now, you are not seeing the suffix. You are not able to see what is the, what is the duration in terms of day or month or week. So right now you are just seeing, uh, currently you are just seeing a number in the duration column. So guys, if you click on this checkbox, you will be able to see the suffix. So it's going to appear like this. Then if you want to see the fraction of the duration column, like the fraction of the day, like four hours or five hours. So which you, you can get by selecting the hours. Okay. Then if you have purely the hours, you can show the unit label. So select it. Yeah. Only select these three check boxes. Okay. So which check boxes you have to select? One, two, and three. Select these three. So Mazarul, you are up to date? Siddesh? Yes, sir. Um, okay. hey, uh, example, in the example call uh, section, uh, for me, it's only 10 days, but uh, for him, it's 10 days, one hour. Why yeah, that? so you just uh, select the third checkbox. Mm, third one. The third checkbox and also the unit, the subunit here. I've selected all. Okay. See, see this, like this you will get. Mm. Okay. okay, now you will get, okay. Hmm. Now guys, we will go to the dates. We will uh, select a format of the dates in which we can see the details. So please select the dates option. In the dates, make sure that you have selected this option day, month, year, and you select 12 hours. So 12 hours will show you the time format also, time. So it will appear like this. So this kind of a date format in which the month is displayed as the name. So, you know, this is best. This is understood by all cultures. Okay. Everybody can understand that what, uh, what is the date exact what we are talking about. You don't have to reinterpret the month. You do not have to reinterpret the month number because the month name is already displayed. And the date plus the time is also displayed when you select the 12 hour format. Right. Okay. So after you have done that, we will move to the next one. So next one, we will select the implementation currency. What, what currency we want to implement currently. So right now we are going to click into this button and we will select by scrolling down, we will select Indian rupees. Okay, now what it will do, it will do a true conversion. Okay, it will multiply all the values which are in the US dollar by 80 and you will see the size of the column needs to be expanded because the number of the digits would increase. So guys, you select Indian rupees and then click on the plus button. So guys, do you see Indian ru ru rupees here? Guys, please confirm. Uh, have you selected Indian ru rupees here? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now click on the, uh, click on the uh, assistance. In the, the assistance, one thing that we don't need is the new activity wizard. So you can switch it off because activity is a very small piece of data. We don't need the wizard for this. Okay. Okay. So this box should be unchecked and uh, the other box should be checked. Okay, guys, is this clear? Yeah. After this, you click on the application. In the application, you know, there is an option here. It says 
application start of window. So which window you should want compulsorily to be displayed? I'll tell you what is the best window. It is not the activities because many people, uh, when they close the activity last time, they will see a blank screen. It is better to select projects. So guys, please select projects because every time you will start the Primavera, even if you close all the data, your Primavera will display the list of the projects and you will feel good. Because if you see a blank screen, you might be panicked. Okay. So you will feel, feel good that my, date, my data is here. And then you can select whichever project you want to work in. So it is better to start the Primavera with first display of the list of projects. Right, guys? Is this clear? Yes, sir. Now the password is something that we will not touch here because uh, password, we want to keep it simple because one of the students, what he did, so despite my telling him not to change the password, he changed it and after five minutes, he exited, then he forgot the password. Okay. So it is better to keep it simple because you are learning. So when you work in an organization, the password policy will be implemented by the Primavera admin. So guys, have you noticed that in the net banking requires you to change the password in a couple of months? Did you note that? Yes. Why? Because if by chance someone stole your password, so there's a good chance that maybe someone stole your password, but your current password is not matching. So you will be on the safe side, right? Mm -hmm. Because using the net banking interface is someone steals your password, he can transfer money without your knowledge, right? So that is not good. So, so this way your uh, password uh, is safe. So come to the resource. Next option is resource analysis. So the settings here by default is good. So we don't change anything. So all these are good. Come to the calculations. So the calculations, they have been done according to the PMI standards. So there's no need to change them. So that is good. Come to the startup filters. So guys, in the startup filters, we don't want any filters. So basically you select all these. Okay, no filter. We want to see complete role, complete OBS, complete activity codes, complete cost accounts, no filters. There should be no filters when you start the primary and slowly and slowly you can narrow down to what you want to see. So in the beginning, everything should be displayed. And when you decide that what you don't want to see, only then you sw switch it off because you are learning Primavera. So you should not be confused. Okay, guys, everybody, please confirm that you are synchronized here. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, Sidesh, you are synchronized. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are synchronized. Mazarul. Yeah. Okay, Najam. Yes, sir. You are synchronized. Kranti, you are off. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, very good. So now click on the close button. So these will be implemented. So guys, you will see a lot of change here. Now I'll show you what changes you see. So guys, I want you, want you to notice the first change. Are you seeing the fraction of the day? Yes, sir. Okay, now guys, I want you to notice if you look at any of the date columns like yours, for example, if I look at the start. So guys, you see it is now displaying the time also. Mm. Okay, now guys, you will see that your cost columns, they have expanded because uh, numbers have been multiplied by the 80. Do you see that the currency has changed and the numbers have expanded? Yes. Why they have expanded? Because $1 One. has been multiplied with 80. 80. Okay, so you can see that you need to slightly expand the width of the column, right? Not only due to the money, but also due to the date and time, right? So you can see a lot of changes here. The implementation of the duration, you are seeing the fraction of the day. And in the dates column, you are seeing the time. And in the cost columns, you are seeing the conversion of USD into the rupees. So guys, do you note one thing here? The rupee symbol is ticking. Do you see that? It is ticking to the number. So we need to fix it. Okay, so let me help, help him. So, uh, 
uh, whose screen I am? Oh, Abdul. Abdul. Abdul, just go to the admin. Mm. Select the currencies. In the in the currency, you select the post the positive currency format. You select the option with a space. With the space, third one as well. First one, first one. Okay. And click on the close, close it, close it. Okay. Do you see that a space has been? Yes, sir. Yes. It is implementing a space, so that's mm. good. So that makes it more readable and better. Okay. okay. So, guys, everybody's got a screen like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So you might have to sc scroll a little bit from the left to right. So that's okay. That's not, not a problem, but at least you can see it better. Okay. You can see a lot of uh, information. So from the user preferences, you can tell Primavera if you would pr prefer to see the duration fraction, if you would pre prefer to see the time in the date column, if you would prefer to uh, change the currency, you can do it. Okay, now guys, this is all about the interface setting. Now we come to the structuring of the data. So for the structuring of the data, so we have to understand how the Primavera is keeping such a huge amount of data. It is keeping the huge amount of data in a very structured manner. Okay, so let me show it to you. So I will go to the document folder. I will show you. See guys, I have al already shared the slides way with you. So you don't have to worry. You just stay on the demo screen only. Okay, so let me find, find, find. Okay, in the primer where I've got it's manual. Yeah, I've say I shared the slide. Okay, so these are my slides. I, you know, some organizations, you know, they want to see the slides before they give me the training program. It's for them, but I don't use the slides in the class, okay? Now, because I am basically uh, training the engineer. So training the engineer doesn't re require the use of slides. The engineers, they want to do the things hands-on because engineers are hands-on people, okay? But here is a slide that I would like you to see. So I will just go here, go here, go here, go here, go here. Okay, guys, just see this thing. Okay, guys, do you see the full screen now? Yes. See, there are two parts of this. See, the first part in the red rectangle, it is called the structure of business. So let me write here. And the right side, So this rectangle is showing you the guys. What did I write on the right side? Structure of management people. Yes. So which uh, which uh, what is the hierarchy in the kingdom? Okay. So in the kingdom, who is there at the top? King. Okay, the then, there, then there is the prime minister, then there are different kind of ministers are there. Okay, so so similarly, first of all, let, it, let us look at the structure of the business. So what is there at the top? Hmm? Enterprise, Ent guys? Enterprise project. Uh, project and then, then you have the portfolios and pro programs. Programs and then projects portfolios and pro programs, then under the portfolio or, or the program, you can have the project. So which you can see, I don't have to write on top of this. So you can see the project inside the project, how the project is divided. Guys, please see WBS and under the WBS, what is their activity, right? Now, who is taking care of the enterprise? CEO. High, higher management. No, CEO, only one person for the enterprise. And for the portfolios and the program, so what we have is portfolio manager and program manager. Portfolio and program managers. 
portfolio and program managers. Okay. So now the this guy is the PM. So there are various roles here. So this guy is the PM and PM is taking care of the project. And this, this guy is the team le leader, resource. He is also called a resource, but he is a team lead. So you know what does the team lead or in the primary, uh, so in the in the primavera language is called the primary resource. So primary resource is nothing but a team leader. So I, let me write here primary resource. So, so guys, this team lead leader takes care of the WBS and then there are resources those who work upon the activities. So which work upon the activities like the workers, laborers, masons, developers, testers, so they are resources. So resources are main machine material and they are all controlled by something called the calendar. So guys, here comes your calendar. So calendar is controlling the activity, calendar is controlling the resource. So guys, we are going to first of all study this part structure of the business right guys yes so is this clear just keep keep this in the mind take a snapshot so we will come back here and we will again co correlate right so we are going to focus on this part right now structure of the business okay now let us go into the primavera so abdul so you just switch it back you press the escape and uh, I mean, uh, close the PDF file and you switch over to the Primavera. Okay, guys. Now, let me show it to you. Guys, please click on this button. Do you see there is a button on the top? Okay. Do you see that? Chart. Okay. Yeah. Chart view. So, this is called hierarchy chart. Now, click on the double minus. So guys, what do you see here? Enterprise. Yes, all initiatives. What is the meaning? All initiative means all kind of portfolios, all portfolios inside it, it is there. Now, if now you are looking at the level one. So plus minus. Okay. No, don't click the plus minus, click the plus here. Do you see the plus here below? This will ex expand you into the next level. So guys, what is there in the enterprise? You have the portfolio. So what is the portfolio in this organization? What does this organization do? What is their line of business? Please read this. The Abdul engineering and construction, next the engineer energy services, another manufacturing, another product development, another corporate programs, another information technology. Yes. So you know these are various different kinds yeah. of business. So, you know, Sorry, these are yeah. very, very diverse. Do you see that engineering is different from the IT, isn't it? Yes, sir. So, the organization is Excuse doing... Uh, Sorry, Sorry, I'm breaking you up. Uh, I just went to the bathroom. Can you tell me uh, how did you bring this hierarchy thing? Oh, you, if you had gone to the bathroom, you should have told me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just went to pee. No, no, guys, guys, let me make this clear. See, uh -huh. this is a close group of friends, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, for yeah. a friend, we can wait. Okay, so that's not a problem. So next time sorry, any of the that. friend wants to go to the go to the washroom, okay. please tell us. We will pause for the friend and we will start for the friend when he comes back. Okay, okay. so let me come to your screen and let me uh, fix it there. Okay, you just quickly share your screen. You should have told us. See, sorry, going sorry, to the bathroom is not a, the, the apologetic thing. We are all human beings. We are not computers. So we need to go. Okay, that's okay. So please share your screen. And next time uh, anybody needs to go, please tell me, we will pause for you to go and come back. That's natural, that's okay. I'm not running a large group here. So okay. basically, you know, this is individual coaching. Okay, yeah. So I can wait for you to go and come back. Did you get my screen? Yeah. Okay. So now to uh, get there, so basically what we were doing, we were examining the data in a graphical format. So you click here on this button. Yeah. So, you know, it will show a lot of things. So you just click on the double minus button to first of all, condense it. Yeah. So after you have condensed it, what do you see on the top? Enterprise. 
enterprise. So enterprise is nothing but a group of companies in which it is written all initiative. So mm -hmm. what is the initiative of an enterprise? The different businesses that it runs. In the yeah. Primavera or the project management language, different businesses or the business unit is called portfolio. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's see that what portfolios are inside this enterprise. You click on the plus button. Yeah. So please read. So what uh, what are the various uh, por portfolios mm -hmm. here? Yeah, it's uh, ENT, engineering and uh, construction. ENT again, then energy, energy services, energy again, manufacturing, manufacturing, manufacturing. Uh, pro development, product development, product development, uh, corporate, corporate this program. This is name only at the top. At the top, okay. IT. Yeah. Last one. You see, the engineering and construction is uh, diverse from the IT, but it is part yeah. of the same group. Yeah. Okay. So in yeah. India, there is a Tata Ent Enterprise. It has a uh, company TCS, Tata Consulting Services, and it is a multi billion dollar company. And uh, yeah. Tata also has Tata Steel, Tata Passenger Vehicles, Tata Commercial Vehicles, Tata Real Estate, and uh, and Tata. So these are like divisions or departments, right? No, these are portfolios. Portfolio, okay. Now divisions or department comes later. The divisions or the department they are called programs. Now program. let us see that where is where is the program? So click on this, you will see the divisions within the. You see that uh, portfolios, yeah. So actually the portfolio is a product development, but it is divided into program one, program two. Okay. Now who is taking care of the enterprise? So there is a role called CEO. So that's, that takes care of the enterprise. Who is going to take care of the portfolio? So it is taken care of by the portfolio manager. So guys, let me tell you, what does a portfolio manager do? You might be wondering. See, portfolio manager is a guy who is, who is pushing the projects into the pipeline. His main focus is to develop the business in the particular business unit about which he is the owner. So he works like as if he owns that business unit. So the portfolio managers, let me tell you, their salaries are small, but their shares are big, right? You get paid more if you bring more business into the company, right? Guys? Is it clear? See, if, oh, yeah. you, if, you're, if you run your own business, so what do you get? Do you get salary or do you get profit? Tell me. Profit. You get profit. So if you do more business, if you deliver more business, you get more profit. Right? But yeah. suppose if you are not able to run your business, will any the customer come to you and give you some monthly salary or pension? No. No. Customers don't care. Customers, what do they care about? What they can buy from you? So you make sure that you stay in business. Okay, you do very good project ma management and you will be staying in business for a very long time. Now, this is program manager. So what is this program manager doing? So program manager is uh, optimally planning the projects under his program. And he is... Uh, giving the right resources to the, he's sponsoring the right resources to the project manager. Now, his job is to promote and optimize the delivery of the projects under his program. Is this clear? He's sharing resources within his program and making sure all the projects are done as soon as possible. Now click on this. Now what you are seeing here is the project. That is the project, that is the project, that is the project. But some of the portfolios, they have the projects directly inside of them. Why? I'll tell you. If you look at, you look at the energy, uh, the, the energy, it doesn't have any program. Why? I'll explain to you guys. L listen to me very carefully. Uh, the energy is a portfolio which has been recently started. When the portfolio expands, only after that we subdivide it into the program. So whenever a portfolio is created, it might be created with just uh, one or two projects only, which does not deserve any division at this point of time. So when you have, when you are anticipating large number of the projects or when you already have number of the projects which are taking too much time and attention of the portfolio manager to manage them, then what the portfolio manager will do, he can subdivide the projects into three programs. For example, we are going to work upon the energy. We are going to 
subdivide it into three programs. Okay, so I am showing it to you diagrammatically here. So what the uh, what the portfolio manager of the energy services has decided that he is going to subdivide this into renewable energy and uh, then non-renewable -re energy. and then into the nuclear. Okay, so why, why, why is he doing that? So that he can appoint three program managers and you, he can unload the project from his shoulder onto the shoulders of the program manager. So the program manager will get these projects delivered by the project manager. Okay, the program manager will um, the, put the um, he will um, the, put up these projects to the project manager. He will uh, assign the projects to the project manager, the right one. And he will sponsor the resources. He will solve any problem. He will optimize the program and he will deliver the program. And the portfolio manager will continue to put projects into the business unit. He will bring projects. So, you know, use, usually who becomes a portfolio manager? Any person who is very smart, any person who is very, very uh, you know, marketing, sales, savvy. He knows how to win the customers for the company, right? So, so, so such kind of guys, they can become the portfolio managers. Okay, so mostly the portfolio managers are usually non-engineers. Okay, so they are MBA marketing kind of guys. Is, is, is that clear? Yeah. But some engineers, they do become portfolio managers if they switch their mindset. It depends upon mindset that what you want to be. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine, guys. Is the picture clear now? Yeah. Now, this yeah. is what we are going to do. We are going to subdivide the energy into three programs and we will appoint three program managers. Right? Okay. Now, to subdivide it, we will switch back the view to the tabular view. So, guys, please come back here. Okay, so every board body is here in the ta tabular view. Okay, now guys in the tabular view, you click on the plus minus button and you select the level two. Select which one? Level two like this. Okay, so here like this. So the everyone's here? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So I'm going to uh, Abdul's screen. So Abdul, please uh, share your uh, uh, your screen. Okay, sir. Okay, fine. Now, guys, if you look carefully, I'm going to show you the buttons which are there. See, the button which we are going to use, it is existing in two places. One in the menu. Guys, do you see a pyramid, uh, the button on the top? Yeah. yeah. Okay. See, and I'm going to point out by drawing on the screen, the same button is existing on your left panel also. Do you see the connect? Mm. Okay. So remember, it is a pyramid like structure from the enterprise to the project. You know, at the top enterprise, you know, everything merges into the enterprise. Then things slowly and slowly they expand towards the bottom of the pyramid so that is why it has been represented with a pyramid so it it has a meaningful meaning okay it has a logical meaning so enterprises are shaped like that now now you can get rid of the menu you can click on the pyramid symbol here on the left side okay it will it is going to open the tool the toolbox name is so guys please read on the top, uh, top what is the toolbox name ECS, Enterprise Project Structure. Yes. So using this toolbox, so we can configure the structure of the business. Okay. We can configure the structure of the business. So we are going to expand a little bit here. So, so that you can see uh, more data in the display. Now, we are going to click on the add. It will add a blank row here. Guys, do you see it has added a new e EPS? Yeah. Now, no, don't shift it. Actually, people are looking at your demo screen and I'm going to mark. Okay, just keep it still here. See, see guys, just do this thing. 
keeping this uh, selected you push it up just below the just below the energy so use the button shift up just below oh, just below the energy yeah okay. like that okay and then you click on the right arrow shift right no no just wait so guys do you see it, it has cre created a parent child structure here yeah okay yeah parent child structure has been created and then uh, let me do this thing. Let me show it to you. It will, it is creating the same structure here also. Yes. Guys, do you, do you see that? So as, as you are creating it here, it is creating on the left side also. It is creating the parent-child structure. Now, in this, you write R-E-N, capital letter. R-E-N. Okay. Yes, that's it. And you write here, Renewable Energy Portfolio. Because under the enterprise, you have portfolio. Renewable energy portfolio, right? And press enter. Okay. So I'm pausing here for, for a moment and I want you to see something. As you are making the changes here, so they are getting implemented. Right? Okay. So we need one more portfolio that is the non-renewable. So for that, you, you will click on the add button. And after that, you go into the EPS ID and write here non-ren, N-O-N-R-E-N in capital letter. Okay. And you write here non-renewable energy portfolio. You can copy the rest from the top. No, you have to go into the cell. It won't paste. Oh, okay, okay. You have to go into the cell and then copy the text and then paste it here. No, you keep the word non here. No, you need something here. You, yeah, just go into the top row. Just go into the first row. Go into the pre previous row. Okay. Get into it. Click okay. it. You select the text and copy. And now you uh, accept the non, you everything you rewrite paste it like this press enter see th this is a computer in the computer you don't have to write every text as on the paper in the computer copy paste, copy paste yeah copy paste saves on the typing you don't have to type uh, everything so you retype something which is common okay okay guys now you click on the button add click on add we need the third portfolio and in the third portfolio, in the EPS ID, you write NUC. And you write here, nuclear energy projects. No, nuclear energy portfolio. Portfolio, because that's a port, port, portfolio, right? So, so guys, uh, after uh, when you are creating, do you see that it has created the three programs here in the yellow color? Do you see that? Okay. okay. If you are having the same structure, so then you can close. You can close this toolbox. Okay. So, guys, you have this. These three, these three pro programs, and uh, uh, let me expand this one a li little bit. Do you have this here? Yes. And guys, make sure that in the project ID column, uh, this sorting indicator is pointing downwards, like that. Mm. Right? Okay. okay. Now, guys, I want you to do, do this. You select the first two projects like this, as I marked on the screen. Uh, you select these two and do Control X. Cut them. Select these two. Control, Control X. Okay. And then paste them into the first group. Renewable uh, energy portfolio. Control V. Okay. Done that? Yes, sir. Very good. 
Now do the same thing. You select the next two, that is 870 and 910. Okay. And you do control X and place it into the non-renewable. Okay, then you select 940 to 950. Now, yeah, these two, yeah. And then you place them into the nuclear energy portfolio. Now, what is the benefit? The benefit is that, first of all, when the business is expanding, you are able to see which program is doing good. How many projects are there in which program and what is the value of those projects? You can see the value separately for renewable, non-renewable and the nuclear. You can see that which program is doing good and this is the, uh, the, the overall total of the portfolio, right? Okay. Now, why this, this has been done? Because the organization is able to foresee and anticipate more projects coming into the energy sector. So that is why what it has done, it has subdivided the subdivided the energy portfolio into three programs. Now the company is going to appoint the program managers because right now it doesn't have any program managers. So it will appoint three program managers. Which ones? Guys, what will be the role names of those three program managers? Uh, pro undertaken uh, energy uh, each uh, program, sir. Renewable energy, non-renewable, and nuclear energy. Yes. Okay. So we are going to create the organizational breakdown structure to include the three program managers now. Guys, you are ready for that? Okay. Now, guys, I want you to notice a symbol. Don't click. I want you to notice. Do you see a human being, but with a board behind him, board, sort of a board. Do you see that? Yes. You know, what is the meaning of this? The meaning of this, that this human being is a board member. That's why they placed a board behind him, right? That is the meaning. Oh, clarity, sir. So okay. enterprises. Okay. So now, you click on this, uh, the icon on the left uh, panel, and we will go into the organizational breakdown structure tool, OBS tool. Click it. Uh, one minute, sir. Yes, sir, tell me. This enterprises is the main thing. Under this, what is the bifurcation, sir? It comes portfolios. EN, ENC, energy services, manufacturing. What are oh, these yes. for, sir? Yeah, and the new nuclear energy portfolio. These are the portfolios, right? No, these are the, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I am very sorry. Uh, program actually, programs. Like actually, I uh, just uh, made a mistake. So, yeah. please, please change the word portfolio to program. Actually, the uh, an, an energy the services is the portfolio. Let me put this uh, correctly. This is the portfolio. And under the portfolio, there are three programs. So, just write the word program. Okay. This is a program. Yeah. The line of business is the portfolio and the trifurcation is the program. So the next one is also a program. Nuclear energy program and press enter. So when you press enter, the data is saved. Okay, guys, like this. Now click on the close. Now we need three program managers to manage these three programs, which we have created. We have subdivided the portfolio into three programs so, so that it can take care of the expanded business. Okay. Now click on the icon, which is pointed on the left. So, so guys, do you see, see this tool here? What is the name of this tool here? Organizational breakdown structure. Yeah. Now, oh, in yeah. this tool, what you are seeing is a flat list. So, click on this triangle here, which is pointing downwards. Please click on this triangle. And on this triangle, you select the filter by and you select all. Select all OBS. Now, it has changed into the parent child structure. Do you see the structure change? Yes, sir. Okay, now, first of all, we'll make it comfortable for us to read. We will change the font size to Vardana 9. So, guys, please click on the triangle here. Now, you click on the table font and row. 
and you select the font size Vardana regular nine. Vardana regular nine size of the font. Okay. And click on the okay. Okay, guys. Now, guys, you have the expanded font size. Okay, so you can expand this a little bit more because when we are going to add the text here, I anticipate the text will expand like this. So you can see that uh, enterprise. So I'm so you write here the word CEO next to the enterprise. So Abdul, you write here CEO. Enterprise CEO. Yeah, enterprise is basically managed by the CEO. So we are writing. Okay. So you write here the ENC. Uh, then you write the word portfolio manager. P capital and you write portfolio manager. Portfolio. Portfolio manager. Yeah. Press enter. Because this guy, see, all those guys who are reporting to the CEO, they would be the portfolio manager. So this is the this is the energy portfolio manager. So what you can do, you can copy paste the word portfolio manager here. Only the portfolio manager, you can copy and paste it here like this, and it will save time. Yeah. Yes. Now this guy here below is he's running manufacturing. So he's manufacturing portfolio manager. Okay. And this guy below the manufacturing is the product development portfolio manager. Okay. And this guy below the, the, uh, the product development, he is a corporate portfolio manager. And this guy here below the corporate, okay, is a, IT portfolio manager, IT portfolio manager, like that. Okay, guys, is, is that clear? Yes, sir. So these are the portfolio manager. Now, what the portfolio managers are doing, see, CEO is taking care of the enterprise. This guy is taking care of uh, the ENC business. Energy portfolio manager is taking care of the energy business. The manufacturing is taking care of the manufacturing portfolio. Product development is taking care of the product development. Corporate is taking care of the corporate programs and IT portfolio manager is taking care of the IT business. Right, guys? So what is on the left side? On the left side, this is the business. And in the green box, all this is the senior management of the organization. Right? Uh, yeah. Each and every uh, everything that will be assigned by the one single person only, sir, not more than one. See, head of the state is only one. In India, we have got one president, one prime minister, yeah. but each of the state has got one chief minister. Mm. Right? Because there should be a single point of accountability and responsibility because that is something which works. It has been seen normally that... Uh, if you appoint two people in the same position at the equal level, so you know there can be a rivalry fight and there can be uh, accusations of uh, mismanagement. So it is better that you keep only one person at the top. So what happens? The person will take all the credit or the discredit and he will make sure that he takes only the credit by doing good. Yes. Is it clear? Yes. Sir. Okay. So that, that is why we keep only one person at the top in a particular management role. Now, we are going to add the three program managers. Okay. What are the three program managers we need under the uh, un under the energy? Renewable Renewable energy program manager? Nuclear. Yeah. Nuclear. Now, guys, keeping him selected, so we are going to click on the add. So, click on the add. Okay. And then you uh, shift it right, uh, shift it right. Okay. And then you write here the name. Uh, the name should be Renewable Energy Program Manager. Renewable Energy Program Manager. And press enter. Yes. Now you add one more. Below it, you add non-renewable energy program manager. You can actually copy the text and paste it and you can add the word non. No, no. You have to copy the text by going in inside the text. Okay. Yeah. You have select and do control C. Now you replace it and add the word non. Okay. 
Okay, now you add one more. Also. Now you add nuclear energy program managers. Okay. Okay. Now this is how the business is getting mapped. Do you see the mapping now? Yes, sir. Okay. So you know these three new positions, they are going to manage it. Now, if you look at the responsibility of the renewable energy program manager, if you look at the responsibility tab, it's nothing. It's a brand new position. It doesn't have any responsibility blood. But if you compare it with the responsibility of, of the energy, manager, so what is responsible for? He is responsible for the, uh, you know, he is responsible for the entire, uh, the energy portfolio. Then he has got six projects. Do you see the first project here? You see this? And this is the WBS inside the project. So you don't worry about the blue squares. Blue squares are the WBS and I don't know why they are including it here. So these are the second project, third project. So third project, three project, four project, five project. And then you will see the sixth project. And he has got these two groups also under him right now at this moment. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to make sure that all the work is outsourced. I mean, it is downloaded onto the new program manager. He should be taking care of only the portfolio. Why? so that he can be free to do marketing and he can be do the bidding process, tender process, and he can put the new projects into the pipeline. So this guy is going to various uh, prospective clients and uh, meeting with them. And he's trying to get business and he's tendering, he's bidding, okay? And he's trying to put the projects into the pipeline, project after project, right guys, is it clear? Okay, now you close this interface. Now we are going to, okay. Now place your cursor on the energy and click on the detail button. So guys, what do you see in the detail below? The screen when it is subdividing. <coughs> so, you know, after you pull this up and if you, to the general. In the general, there is a box here. Do you see guys, the responsible manager? So who is the responsible manager for the energy? Energy portfolio manager. Okay, now who is the manager for the renewable energy program? Just look. It's renewable. No, right now, right now, who is it? Oh, enterprise CEO. Why enterprise CEO is given? I'll tell you. See, whenever a new program is created, it is usually given to the enterprise CEO. Enterprise CEO will then reassign it to the correct person. Yes, sir. That is the reason. Okay. So, guys, is this clear? Yes. Now, now guys, uh, let me show it to you. How the Primavera opens the project. So, guys, you look at the demo screen. How many projects are there in the memory right now? 630. Huh? No, look at the top line here. Uh, 501. It is one project, right? Okay, okay, now. okay. Now, to unload the project from the memory, you do this action Control W. Do Control W. Control plus the W key. So guys, what it is saying? Close the project. You want to close the project. Yes. So you say, yes, I'm sure I want to close the project. Click yes. Now, now guys, do you see that your activity and the WBS tab is gone? And what does it say on the top? No current project. No current project. So the memory is cleared of the project. Now guys, let me show you something. Just wait. See. I'm going to open the ENC. ENC, so what is the ENC? It is a portfolio. So guys, how many projects are there under the ENC? Six. Six projects. Okay. 
Now, just watch it. I am selecting three projects. Do you see that I have selected three? Mm. Now, if you select three projects and then you right click here. Now, Abdul, you right click here. And then you select open project. See guys, see at the top. So how, how many projects are there? Three, sir. Three. And you can actually see the three, three project here also. Just click on the double minus. Collapse to. Do you see the three project loaded in into the memory? Yeah. Now, what is the purpose? Why the primavera is providing you this facility? This is not an accident. This is by design. The software has been designed that way to provide access to the multiple uh, loading of the multiple projects into the memory. Why it, sh it should do it? Basically, you know what is happening? That is, suppose there is a relationship between activity of project one to the activity of project two from project two to the three. If there is a relationship, if there is a engineering relationship of the output of the activity one from the project one going into the activity uh, of the project two, so you can expose the activities, you can relate them. That is the purpose. Now, just do one thing. Now do control W, control W, close all this project, unload okay. them to the memory. Okay. So now come to the projects. Now, uh, Abdul, you tell me that how many projects are there in the engineering and construction portfolio, count it. Six. Six, okay. Now do this thing. Now you place your cursor on the portfolio, okay. right click, and then you select to open the project. Select to open project. Okay, everything is open. Six now tell me how many projects are loaded in, into the memory? Everything, sir. Six projects, sir. Six projects six. which were there, they are loaded into the memory. And you can see it at, at the top also. You can kind, you can count there are six project codes. Right, guys? Is it clear? Mm, yeah. So if you select the portfolio, you can load the portfolio. If you select the program, you can load the program. If you select the individual project, one or multiple, you can load them. So guys, do you, can you just imagine what is going to happen if you select the end enterprise and right click and, <laughs> and you say, oh, open the project, you know, your computer is going to hang for a very long time. Okay. So don't do it. Okay. Don't, don't even try it on the, in, uh, at least not here right now. You can do it uh, after uh, the training. Okay. So let the training go on smoothly. Okay. So it is not always wise to try the uh, everything. Okay. Yeah. So now unload this project from the memory because they are loaded into the memory. So Primavera is taking a lot of memory right now. So we have unloaded, come back to the list of the project. Now I want you to do this thing. First of all, we will collapse to the level two. Then expand only the energy. Guys, do you see that? Yes. Okay. Now, who is the manager of the renewable energy program? Enterprise CEO, but we want to change it. Who should be it? Uh, sir, uh, sorry, sir, I got some important call. I would just, uh, can you repeat it, sir? Yeah. So please uh, select the energy and expand it like this. Uh, no, sir, actually, I will share my screen. I think so. I have done up to portfolio managers after that. I okay. No, no, just do this thing. I'll just tell you. First of all, you click on this plus minus button. Okay, then you select the level two. Okay. Okay. And then you come to the energy. Okay. And you expand the expand the expand uh, the portfolio and the programs. Okay, sir. Okay. By clicking here, and you are here now on the on the renewable energy program. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. So in the renewable uh, energy program, you can see in the general tab. And uh, you can see inside the general tab, there is a uh, field called responsible manager. Do you see that? So who is the responsible manager here? Enterprise CEO, right? Yes, sir. Okay, enterprise CEO. So, but we are going to change it. So guys, the, what is the first step? I'll just tell you. First of all, you select the program and right click. 
Okay, right click and you select open project. Select open project. Guys, you will see that you go into the activities tab and two of the projects are on the top. So the projects have opened. Now, what do you do? Come back to the project tab here. Please come back. So we were working upon the renewable uh, energy program. Please select it back again. Please place your cursor here. Okay. Now, after selecting, so guys, please tell me you are here. Your cursor is here. Yes, sir. Okay. Now you go to the responsible manager selection tool. Click on this button. And just let me do this thing. See, when you open this window for the first time, it will be small. You make it a little bit bigger and comfortable. And you please change the font to the Vardana 9. So, Abdul, can you change the font? Yes, sir. Yeah, change it to Vardana 9. This, this is to be done only once. Okay, only once. Okay, now here in this, who should be the manager of the renewable? Uh, we need to change, sir. Vardana. Okay. How Energy. Do you Just wait, wait, guys. So let me show it. Um, please click on this triangle. You see the small triangle here? Then you select table font and row, then you can change it. So you are asking about pyramid, sir. In pyramid, you are asking. No. Hmm. How to change the ta table font row? I'm answering your uh, question. I the select responsibility manager, sir. Okay. Ah, so yeah, now I got Now I got you, sir. Okay. Okay, now you select the renewable energy program manager here as on the screen. And then you click on the plus button. Do you see that plus okay. button here? Click it. Would you like to assign a renewable energy program manager as the responsibility manager for the WBS element within yes. the energy, renewable yes. energy program? Yes, now you select yes. So guys, once you select yes, you will see that it has not only changed for the program, it has changed for the project also. Do you see the, the Sunset Gorge manager? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And see the Johnston uh, project in the manager? Yes. So responsible uh, manager. Uh, in, at the renewable energy program, uh, we right click and press what? Uh, Before no, this. We, we right click and open project. Okay. And then we and come then... back to the project tab once again. Okay. After coming back to the project tab, we select the program one, once again like this. And then from here, from this box, we select the renewable energy program manager and click on the plus button. So this will not only change for the program, it will change for the included child project also. Child projects also, it will change. Okay. Oh, mere se koi galti ho hai. <clears throat> Uh, sir, but for me, it doesn't change for child project, sir. Sir, for me, it doesn't change for uh, child project, sir. Hello? Uh, please go for the sunset job. You can find in the under the responsibility manager. Oh, yeah, yeah. For me, it doesn't, doesn't change. Um, under the renewable energy program, does it change? In yes. The okay. And uh, for the sunset job? No, it doesn't change. Energy portfolio manager only it is there. Energy portfolio. May either it won't assign under the child. It won't come under the child. Check with uh, minus under the minus. Does it have both uh, yes, yes. files? Under the minus, I have both the things. Both the projects are there.
Okay, guys, I'm back. I had gone for a while. Okay, now you show me your screen. Uh, who is that? Uh, who is the, the facing the problem? Please show me your screen. Yes, sir. Sir, if you see here, under uh, renewable, I am having the under renewable, I am having renewable energy program manager. Hmm. But under uh, this, ah, uh, yeah, fine, fine. Just wait, wait, wait. Now, just do one thing. Now, uh, right click here and select the open pro pro project. Okay, after selecting the open project, come back to the projects tab again. Okay. Now, you select the renewable energy pro program. Okay. Uh, give it to the CEO. Give it to the CEO first. Yeah, select the CEO and click on the plus button. You know, first what we will do, first we will change from the existing ones. Okay, now it has given the parent and the child to the CEO. You can check this out by looking at this. Do you see that it is the CEO? Yes, CEO. Yes. Now from the CEO, you give it back to the portfolio manager and Primavera is going to change it. Yeah. Now here, you don't know, click here, but Kranti, you have to wait for mm -hmm. my, the instruction. Yeah, and select it, click yes. Now you check, you will see that they are all uh, corrected now. Okay, maybe I have not opened the project. No, 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 you have to understand one thing. See, we are tricking the Primavera. Now what is happening, if by chance the child ones are not changed, the Primavera will look at the parent and it will not change the child. It will think that uh, the, everything is okay. So that's why we change the parent and then we change the child again. Now, what you need to do, you need to right click on the non-renewable -re and you open the group, okay? Open? Yeah. Open project, sir. And open. No, Kranti, you are doing the wrong thing again. You are not following the process. Please listen to me carefully. First, you yes. Can you please explain again because I am also no, confused. Just wait. You have to wait. Actually, you are trying to rush through the thing. So, first of all, you open the program. Open project, sir. Ah, yeah, that's it. That's going to open all the projects under the program. Now, come to the project tab. Now. Here, now you change it to the non-renewable and it will be fine. This one, sir? Yes, yes, yes. That is the one. Click yes. Now you check out the underlying project and see if they look right. Fine? Okay. Now do the same thing to the third one. Open the project. It's going to open the project. Now you come back to the project tab because you know it is out of the focus. Now you change it and it will change it for the program and also the projects appropriately. Previously also I did the same thing, sir. No, you did not do the same thing. Softwares are very logical and consistent. If you do it wrong, it is always wrong. If you do it right, it is always right. I have clicked. Okay. So, so guys, is this thing clear? Now, guys, I'm pausing for, for a moment. Is it clear to you what we have done? First, we subdivided the energy portfolio into three programs, and then we appointed three program managers. Right, guys, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, no, Majarul. I'm, I'm a bit confused. Uh, Majarul, is it clear to you? Yes. Okay, Sandeep, is it clear to you? Yes. Najam, is it clear to you? No, I'm a little confused. Just wait, just wait, just wait. Okay. You'll have to, no, you'll have to slow down yourself a little bit, slow down, come down to the pace of the training. Uh, you'll be able to understand it. I will, uh, I will give you a picture right now. 
So the Abdul, just share your screen and you open the slide. Open the PDF file, okay? Okay, need to open the PDF, sir. Hmm. This one. Hmm. Okay. So, so guys, just wait. So, guys, do you see this diagram here? Yeah. So the, what did we do? See, first of all, we created the three programs. One, two, three. Then yeah. we created the three positions. So this is the program manager for the renewable. This is the program manager for the non-renewable we assigned. And this is the program manager for the nuclear. Right? Yeah. We created the three program and then we created the three program managers and we um, the, gave it to them, right? So this is what we did right now. Mm -hmm. So the underlying projects also got transferred to them. Sir, right. full form of OBS, sir. Okay, so is this full form of OBS? Organizational breakdown structure, you can write the uh, name in your notebook. Okay. This is the structure of the senior management. And project manager is included. EPS, sir. Full form. Included as a resource in the project resources. Enterprise project. The EPS will have the CEO, portfolio manager, program manager, sub program manager like that, deputy program Enterprises, manager. Enterprises, program. Project structure. Project structure. And EPS is enterprise project structure. Okay. And the purpose of the EPS, the purpose of the EPS is to depict the structure of the, the business. And the purpose of the o OBS is to depict the structure of the management, senior management. Okay, is this clear? How the business is organized, what are the portfolios, what are the programs, what are the projects under those programs and uh, the o OBS is to show that, uh, that CEO, portfolio manager, program manager, project manager, team leader, then primary resource, then resource. Okay, how the hierarchy is organized in a project. So basically primary is reflecting the organization of a project team only starting from the EPPM. So, you know, the Primavera was meant for big companies, EPPM, enterprise. Only the companies which are having the enterprise-like structure, they would be buying and using the Primavera. So, guys, now do you realize that why the license cost of the single user is 3,500 US dollars? You know that. Because it's meant for big companies and big companies can pay that kind of price and it is worth it because they are doing the projects worth millions and billions. So it's a small amount compared to the scale of the work it can get done. It can get organized. You Can you organize this scale of the work in Excel? Do you think so? Sir, comparatively, Microsoft project, it is very, very powerful one. Sir. Uh, now when I realize that uh, compared with uh, No, it is too early to compare. It is way to complete your training. See, Microsoft project only works here, only here. But if you if you upscale to the project online, then yeah, that's also an EPPM tool. Okay, Microsoft project is a standalone. It can create only one project. It can only handle the data of only one project at a time. Okay, right guys, is it clear? Yes. Microsoft project, the desktop version is not EPPM unless and until you connect it to the project online. So project online, they're having the uh, having the web-based model only. They don't have any desktop-based EPPM tool at this point of time. If you want to use the Microsoft EPPM tool, you have to subscribe. It is a subscription-based model. Okay, so you can access it from the browser. You can access it from the desktop client. 
but all the data is kept in the Microsoft Cloud. You have to compulsorily hire their cloud center database and your organization's data will be kept there safely. Now, is it clear to you? Kranti? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, Kranti, you can share your screen. Yeah, good. So, Abdul, you are fine? Yes, sir. Fine, sir. Okay, fine. Now, what we have done, we have subdivided the energy into three programs. And your boss is happy. You're, you say that you have an imaginary boss. You are showing it to your boss. This is... And this is Primavera. Primavera can have these various categories of data. It has so much facilities. It can take care of the, your entire enterprise. You can see your business classified beautifully into portfolios, programs, sub-programs if they required. You have a pyramid-like structure. You can have the true currency conversion. So Abdul, I believe you remember in Microsoft project, the currency never got converted. Yes, sir. Actually, only the simple change, the amount remained the same. So, but the currency, for the currency conversion, manually we put and we, uh, as per uh, uh, truly it won't change, sir. It, sometimes it will be uh, make an undulation amount. So, but we can't able to get a perfect uh, predict, uh, correct one, sir. Correct. Because in Microsoft project, the conversion table is not stored in the, in the Primavera. The conversion table is stored. Okay. So, here. Do you see this money symbol? Yes. So guys, this is the conversion table. So here, the US dollar is the base currency. So all over the world, all the money exchanges, all the international banks, they are converting one currency to another using the US dollar as an intermediary currency. Right? So if I have to, so suppose someone from Africa wants to pay me in Nigerian Naira. So I say that I want this much amount of money. So how do I tell him? I actually don't tell him in rupees. I tell him that, look, this is the US dollar payment and this is the amount of the money. Okay. So what he will do, he will go to his bank and he will find out, uh, he will find out that how much it will cost him to uh, convert his local currency into the US dollar. So his bank will transfer the US dollar to my bank and my bank will pay me the local currency. This is how the currency conversion works. So why did the US dollar became the de, de facto base currency? Yes, we can go a little bit into the history. So guys, tell me, what is the most bought item in the world from one country to another? Oil. Hmm? Oil. Now, who discovered the oil in the Middle East and who helped the... Uh, the Middle East countries discover and process the oil? The US. US. So what the US said that you guys will not use your currency to sell the US, do uh, uh, sell the oil. You will sell the oil to us in the US dollars only, not only to us, for the rest of the countries also in the world. Now, the US will pay to them in the US dollar. Now, what those countries will do? they will spend the US dollar to buy the services of the contractors based in the US to create their roads, cities, infrastructure, everything. Guys, if you go to the US and if you go to the Mid Middle East, you will find their infrastructure is a copy paste. The structure of the roads, the structure of the buildings, except the culture. Okay, everything else is copy pasted. Even right. they have they have a contract with the US that their real will stay the same for 50 years, right? Yeah. Now, there was a guy who wanted to change the US dollar, the petroleum money from the US. Now, what is the benefit to the US? Suppose India is a big buyer of oil. Now, India approaches uh, Saudi guys. So, we will uh, buy your oil. So, we are going to pay you the rupees. The Saudi guys will say, no, no, no you please pay us in the US dollar. Now, what will happen? The Indian bank will approach the US bank and they will buy using the US dollar, using what? Using their reserve money in the World Bank. The reserve money in the World Bank is what? It is gold. Mm -hmm. So, 
the gold will be shifted from the Indian vault into the US vault. And you know, US will make a profit. It will charge a commission to sell us the dollars. We will take this dollar to the Saudi guys and the Saudi guys will give us the petroleum. Right? Yeah. And what the Saudi guys will do with the US dollars, since they have a lot of the US dollars, so they will buy a lot of stuff from the US. So they will buy the US-based processed food. They will buy the US based garments, US uh, created toys and everything. If you go to their shopping malls, you'll find uh, their shops are mostly filled with the US stuff only. So, you know, what is happening? The US dollar is becoming strong and strong currency because more and more countries are trying to buy it. And this is what Saddam Hussein was trying to change. He trying to, he was, he, he was uh, basically uh, trying to bully so he told Kuwait to change their selling currency because Kuwait is very rich oil fields it has got. So he told the, the Kuwait ruler to sell the oil in the euro dollar, change it from US because Saddam Hussein somehow did disagreed with the US. Earlier, the US was his best friend and they became the best enemies. Okay. So he told the Kuwait to change it. The Kuwait king said no. So he invaded the Kuwait uh, within 72 hours. He destroyed the country. He set to fire all the oil field. Then he was planning to invade the Saudi Arabia and destroy its oil field. He wanted to have a monopoly in the world, in the oil business. Okay, because, the, because his country was also selling oil. So he wanted the uh, most of the world to be dominated with the with the Iraqi oil and with the euro dollar only. So that was not acceptable to the US. So that is why there was Gulf War 1, Gulf War 2. They got him eliminated out of the way. So guys, so don't try to change the US dollar. So that's fine. So we can live with it. Okay. So is, is, is that clear? So euro dollar rose for some time, but it has come come down. So basically, it is the US dollar which is dominating the market. Okay, okay, fine. Now that was some interesting fact to relax you. Now close it. Close it. Close this box. So this is the master list. Okay. So in the master list, you can insert your uh, country's symbol also. So Bangladeshi Taka, so Taka actually in Bangla language, it means ru rupees only. So, so Bangladeshi Taka has a uh, Bangla, Bangla alphabet Ta. So you can insert that Majarul if you're going to create that Ta. It has a symbol, right? Already I created it. Good, good, good. Very good. Okay. And you should use it practically if you need to look at your projects in terms of the US dollar into Bangladesh Taka, you can do it. Okay, so now guys, what next? Now, as you're sh showing it to your boss, your boss is saying that we will create a new portfolio. So, you know, this portfolio will be a learning and development portfolio. It will be placed under the enterprise. Okay, so he wants to have it. So what is the purpose of the learning and development portfolio? He says, under the learning and development portfolio, all the projects of the learning will be created and placed and a portfolio manager for the learning and development will be a position will be created and appointed right guys okay so let's do it so now click on the pyramid tool from the left side and click on the add button no the, first of all you place your cursor on the end enterprise now click on the add button now, what you are seeing on the screen, just wait, just wait. Okay, Kranti, just wait. So, because your screen is the demo. So, guys, do you see that the new EPS has been created at the bottom? So, you shift it just below the enterprise, just below, one step below the enterprise. Yeah, gently. Exactly correct. Now, what you are going to write... I'm going to write the text on the top. You can replicate that. So in the code, you write l and And in the uh, EPS name, you write. So you can write like this.
Okay, guys, is this clear? So you have done that? Yeah. Okay. So everybody please can confirm Abdul, Sidesh, Sandeep. Yes. Sandeep. <laughs> Uh, Sandeep, I hope you are not feeling tired. Okay, you are fine. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So thank you for for staying up. Actually, Sandeep is in the US. That is the reason. And in yes, fact, it's already uh, morning. Najam is in the Australia. I think he's past midnight or near midnight. Okay. Yeah, almost eleven. <laughs> so Sandeep, in a little while from now, he'll be seeing the daylight from his window. Okay, fine, guys. Okay, now. Close it. We are done. So we have created. Now, what do we do? We have created the portfolio. We need to create a portfolio manager as well. So guys, to create the manager, you will click on the OBS button. So now, first of all, you place your cursor on the enterprise CEO. And after that, you click on the add button. Click on the add button. Now the you write LND portfolio manager. L&D portfolio manager. This is the new portfolio manager to manage their portfolio. <clears throat> now guys, after you have created the manager, please confirm. So just hold your screen. Uh, so guys, please look at the demo screen. Please confirm that you are having the same structure yes. of the data on your screen. So guys, is it the same for, for you all? Good. Now close. Yeah. Now you are done. Now keeping the learning and development portfolio as the selected, go to the manager and change the manager to the learning and development portfolio manager. So here you see the pop-up. Now click on the select and it's going to change. Okay. Yeah. So right now it is not asking you for any confirmation because there are no projects here. This is an empty portfolio. That's why it's not asking. So guys, do you see that uh, the uh, that the floppy is active? Do you see that floppy button is active? If the floppy button is active, it means that there is some unsaved data. So you click on the button twice. Why twice? Because that is my training. Because uh, as per my experience, I've seen that. I made a mistake. I clicked on the button. I seemingly clicked on the button, but I missed it. I clicked on the left or the right side. So that's why I ask all my students to click on this button twice, just to make sure that the data has been pushed into the database. Okay. So after you have pushed the data into the da database, so what do you do? So just as a habit, may make it a habit. After you save the data, you should refresh the data. Why? Because you would be working in the networked environment in the future. So just like you are making changes, someone else is also making the changes. So you will be able to see the latest information on the screen. Right, guys? Is it clear? Yes. OK. So guys, if you are visiting a new site, so if you do not refresh, you won't see the latest news. So the newsroom guys, what do they do? They continue to add, add news headlines. So if you refresh in the browser, you will see the news, uh, the, the latest news will pop up on the screen. Okay, so is this clear guys? Okay guys, please confirm that you are all done up to this point. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good. Now we have this brand new por por portfolio. Now we will select the portfolio and we will create our project in this portfolio. Now, how to create the project? So guys, first of all, you select the portfolio. Done that? Okay, after selecting the portfolio, keeping it as the uh, selected, please go to the right side and click the add button. No, no, add button. Currently, you have to wait. So guys, do you see the selected EPS is already showing you the learning and development because you had plus, uh, your cursor is already placed here, right? Okay, now click on the next button. So in the new project ID, you do exactly as I'm going to do. Okay, so you, uh, Kranti, I'm, I'm going to type it. 
guys do exactly the same lsn in capital then dash one and you write the lesson name as i mean the project name as scheduling with calendars scheduling with calendars so you you are going to write it so kranti you write the uh, yeah s ca capital please No, scheduling with calendars, uh, there's no need to write the word the and calendar C capital. And calendar spe spe spelling is D A R S. You know, English is a very strange language. D A R S. Okay. Yeah, it's like that. So, guys, please confirm that you have written like this. Have you created like this? Yeah, sir. Uh, okay. Yes, tell me. Tell me, tell me quickly. <laughs> so, do you are you facing any problem? If you face any problem, I can fix it at this step. Now, guys, go to the next. So, here you have to select a date. So click on the date selection button. So you scroll to the month of May 2023, 2023, because we plan for the future. Okay, 2023, May 1. You select 1st May 2023. And Kranti, wait for me. Wait for me to tell you. So you click on the scroller till you get 9 a.m. Click on the scroller button till you get 9 a.m. Okay, like this. Yeah. So guys, please look on the screen. We have selected May 2023, 1st of May, and the time is 9 a.m. So once you guys confirm that you have done the same, then I will move to the next step. So oh, why am I asking you to select the month of the May? If you look at the month of the May 2023, do you see that it is starting from Monday, first Monday? You know, it's easy to teach the scheduling. It becomes very easy to, to show you that first is a Monday, second is a Tuesday. And why I'm asking you to do it for the year 2023? Because I look forward to plan my project as soon as possible. That should be your mindset. Right, guys? Right. So, guys, so let me tell you one thing practically. If you work in a, a company, Sir, we are not getting your voice, sir. Oh, uh, because I'm quite uh, quiet for a moment. Just wait. Okay, guys. Now, let me tell you. See, if you're working in a company, your mindset should be to plan your project as soon as possible. As soon as you get the hint a project is coming your way, you should prepare to plan. Why? Because the planning itself takes time. Planning is not an overnight job. Is this clear, guys? Planning is not an overnight job. It's not like that you plan in the night and next morning you execute the project. No. Planning itself takes time. Then you need the time for approvals. You need the time for the resource mobilization to the site. You have to mobilize men machine material to the site at least for the starting first month or the three months. Okay, so that's why it is good because if you plan early, there is a good chance that uh, you or some other team member can spot any problem in the project plan and you can find out your bottlenecks, right? Any trouble because 80% of the trouble they originate from faulty planning and scheduling. Let me tell you the fact. And then people do firefighting, struggling, blaming each, each other. That is not the way to live your life or this is not the way to do anything professionally. Plan well, execute well. Simple mantra. What did I say? So I'm going to write this. Okay. Plan well, execute well. Yeah. So how do you plan? So you plan using the Primavera and 
PMI process. Okay, what does the PMI process say? Initiating, planning, uh, executing, monitoring, controlling, and closing. Very simply, it has simplified your life. Okay, so if you guys want, I can share the PM book with you to read later. But for the time being, I am telling you some extracts. Okay, so it is a sort of guidebook for the project managers. Okay, now click on the select. So guys, please confirm that you are selected first May 9. So, you know, this is a project creation wizard. This is a wizard. What is the meaning of the wizard? Wizard comes from the word wisdom. So this is a wizard which is asking you the information step by step and helping you create the project. Okay. Now, after this, you have entered. So you click on the next button. Responsible manager is the correct one because it is already inside the learning and development portfolio. Now you click on the next. Our rate type is the standard rate, correct? Then click on the next. And congratulations. So you have completed filling the data and click on the finish. You will see a project created here. So guys, do you see a pro project here on the uh, in the list? Learning and development portfolio scheduling with the calendars. You see, see that? Yeah. Okay. Now, guys, we are getting into the scheduling with calendars. So I will take another 30 minutes and close it. Okay. Because we are on the schedule. So, guys, any problem, any question, then I will tell you something. Tell me, did you face any problem in creating this? So, guys, once again, I am asking you to confirm that you are seeing the start time as first of the May 9 a.m. Please make sure. Okay, now guys, just do do this thing. For this project, you go into the default. Can you see the de default tab here? Hmm? Yeah. Now, in the duration type, you please select fixed duration and units per time. So, guys, please look here ca carefully. <laughs> what I am asking you to select is this number two option: units slash time fixed duration and units per time. So, you know, this has an effect upon the cost calculation of the labor and non-labor resources. So I will explain to you when I come to the resources, but for the time being, you select it. This is the best option, simple to learn. It is easy to teach first, then I will teach you the rest of the options. So first you select this. And in case, if you want to change the date of the project, you can change it from the dates. But right now you will not change it. So guys, please once again confirm your project plan start is 9 a.m. First of the May 23. Because we are always planning for the future, not for the past. Yes, okay. sir. See guys, let me give an advice, practical piece of advice. When you plan for the currently running project, do not plan from the past dates. Only plan for the remaining part of the project. Is this clear? Okay, sir. Suppose you, you suppose it's a one-year project, you have already completed four months and the remaining is six months. You should plan for the remaining six months only, not for the past four months, right? Don't try to do it. I've, I've tried doing it and then got stuck. So okay. what happened when, when we completed a task, what to do, sir? When we, when we take an, uh, in the middle of the project, we uh, try to schedule what to do with the completed task. You must nothing, or... nothing, nothing, okay. nothing. I'll just about to tell you that why you should not do it. See, let me come on the camera. Okay, let me show you something visually, just a, a moment. Let me switch, switch on my cam. See, I'll ex explain to you why you should not try to plan for the past. See. You're standing here in a, in a open space. A guy comes to you shouting, oh, there is a horse running. Please catch it. It's my horse. It's, it's my horse gone wild. Okay. Now, guys, you tell me what will be your reaction. Are you going to ask him the question? What is the name of the horse? What is the breed of the horse? What is the size of the horse? Or you are going to catch the horse or are you going to ask this question? I'm going to catch the horse. Yeah, first you catch the horse. Okay. Yes. 
and you give it to that guy and he'll be very thankful. And you just imagine you're asking that guy, that guy shouting, Abdul, Abdul, my horse has run away from the stable. Please catch him. Oh, what is the horse name? What is the breed of the horse? What is the height of the horse? And the horse is gone. <laughs> so projects are like that. Okay. Now, do you understand that why yes. I'm asking you not to plan for the past? It really does not matter where the horse has come from. What matters is that you catch it and ride it. Just curiosity, sir. What to do when it was the such situation? <laughs> right. Is that clear? So yes, I made a mistake. I'm, I'm transferring my experience to you. I'm not training. I'm transferring whatever I've done wrong. I'm keeping it here, here and giving you the best parts yes. of my learning. So that you guys start at a point where it is the best for you without any mistake, you are able to uh, manage the project. See, project should be visualized like a wild horse. It is trying to run away. It is trying to throw you off its back. You've got to ride it. And you know, you are using the prima vera to control it. You get hold of its two ears and you just squeeze the ears like this, just like you drive a bike and make sure that you drive the horse, right? Okay. Is that clear? Yes, sir, clear. Sir. So you need pri prima vera. Okay, so now you share your screen, okay? Okay, sir. Now, now you minimize this and you open the document folder. Okay, you open the do document folder. You go to your Primavera and work area and the do document folder. Primavera document here. Yeah. Okay. In the document folder, you open the Primavera notes. It is my whiteboard. Actually, if in a classroom, I will write something on the whiteboard, explain to you, then come back to the Primavera. Okay. Now guys, the Primavera is based upon the scheduling rules. Okay. So any project management software is based upon the scheduling rules. And why did I create these rules? No, I didn't create these rules. These rules are actually naturally occurring inside the project. I only di di discovered them using my experience and I'm bringing them up to you in a condensed format. So that whatever I experienced during the last 20 years, so you can learn it quickly. You don't have to basically learn these things by mistake over a large period of time because no employer is going to tolerate any mistake. So guys, have you heard something like this, that the airline, while hiring a pilot, it will tell, oh, if you make one or two crashes, we don't mind. But you learn to fly after one or two planes are crashed, right? So will any airlines do it? No, sir. No, no airlines will do it. Every airline expects a perfect project manager. Similarly, will you hear any organization say uh, that, uh, Abdul, you know, you can create a loss. You can make a loss in one or two projects. We don't mind. But after that, you should show some good performance in the Primavera. No one, sir. No, that is not possible. So you guys got to be a finished product. You guys got to be perfect. Okay. The employers are waiting to buy the finished product off the shelf. But who is going to put it there? You are going to put yourself there and I'm going to put you there. Okay. So is, is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So now you guys please read these rules a little bit loudly. Why? I want these rules to be embedded inside your brains forever. Okay. So guys, please read these rules one to six. You have to read it. Kranti, re read it. Schedule is created by calendar. Schedule is adjusted by critical path, non-working days like weekends and holidays. Schedule is adjusted by dependencies, lead and lag time. Schedule is adjusted by date constraints. Schedule is adjusted by activity types only in Primavera. Schedule is adjusted by resources, labor and non-labor. Yes, guys. So guys, the first one is the very, very important. It is the foundation. What is that? Schedule is created by the calendar and that is where the people make the mistake and everything else goes wrong. The costing of the project goes wrong. 
So sometimes uh, the synchronization between man, machine and material goes wrong. What happens that on the site, man and machine is there, but material has not reached. Man and material is there, but the, the machine has not arrived. Machine has not been allocated. Now what happens that sometimes the machine and material is there, but the man is not there. I've seen that happening with my clients. So then when I stepped in and told them that you have to plan early and you have to make sure that you can obtain all the resources which you need. So if you're going to do a one year project, make sure that on the site, you at least put the resources for doing two months work minimum, you should mobilize onto the site. So after you have put the two months worth of the material on the site, then you should st start to mobilize your men and machine. So as you are doing the work, you start your procurement management process and you bring the material for third and fourth month, fifth and sixth month, eighth and uh, ninth month, and then the 10th month like that. Okay, guys, is it clear? Yeah, so yeah, for sure. that, we need the calendar. Now the word the calendar is a very common word. Okay, guys. Now, why did the mankind create the calendar in the first place? Do you know that? Because the earlier the mankind was a hunter gatherer and hunter gatherers don't, don't need a calendar. If I feel hungry, if I am a hunter gatherer li living in a cave, so, you know, I've got a lot of females and uh, uh, the 50 children. Okay. So my children are crying. The females are crying. Uh, food, food, food. I will just pick up my spear and hunt something and bring it and uh, burn it and eat it. Right. So that's uh, how our ancestors were in the beginning. The mankind started their life in the caves. So after some time, the mankind got the taste of the, 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 the vegetarian stuff, like some fruits or maybe some roots. So then mankind realized that a certain kind of foods which he likes, it grows in certain season. Mankind had no idea of the year, season. Mankind had the idea of a season. So mankind started to recognize the seasons, okay? So mankind realized that the particular season starts after approximately 365 days. So mankind started to plant those fruits and vegetables and nuts which were useful to it. Because planting is less effort than hunting. Right, guys? Is it true or not? Yes, sir. Hunting requires a tree, team. And if, but if you plant a fruit tree and a lot of fruit trees and you can eat a lot of fruits over a lot many years and you can be happy. Once in a while you can hunt, then man can stop hunting. What mankind did, it domesticated the wild animals. So all these buffaloes, goats, and uh, camels, they used to be wild. Horses are still wild in some parts of the world. So mankind started to domesticate these animals for food, for milk, and for, for locomotion, for movement. For movement, it used the horses and the bulls. Okay. So now what happened? Mankind started to recognize the pattern. So it created a 365 days calendar and it created four seasons on the calendar. But later on, mankind has become more and more civilized Then mankind invented religion. So then the calendar was used for religious purposes and festivals. Okay. Is that right, guys? So in India, we have a Hindu the calendar, which is running into the year 2079. The calendar which we use internationally, it is CE, Christian Era Calendar. So that calendar has the zero year based on the year of birth of Christ. So there is a calendar used by the Arabs. So in this, um, in their uh, calendar, so it is running into the year 1425. Okay, it is used in the Middle East. Okay, so they used it to schedule their festivals and their religious functions. Okay, so mankind requires a calendar not only for the for the religious functionals and for the season, we require a calendar for the projects. What is the purpose of a calendar in the project? To schedule the start and finish date of an activity so that we can finish within the time constraint. Right guys, time is a constraint or not? If you don't put a start date or a finish date on an activity, can you track it? No, you can't, you would be late. Client will definitely track the project. Client will definitely come back to you 
that you are late, but you should also know that you are being late. If you don't know that you are being late, you would never be able to take a corrective action. Is that right, guys? Okay. Yes, sir. So the first rule is that schedule is created by the calendar and calendar is like a baby. And this baby is sent to the schools, mm -hmm. number two, three, four, five, six. And number five, what is written in the number five, guys? Only Primavera. Only Primavera had this kind of the feature and facility, which is highly appreciated by engineers, activity types, and no other software has it. It is there in the Primavera. It helps you fine tune the schedule. So schedule is created by the calendar. Then fine tuning happens in the step number two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Okay. So that's what, what we will do tomorrow. Okay. So right now, so Abdul, can you please share your screen? So, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. So, open the project scheduling with the calendar. Project? Open. You right click and open this project. Okay, sir. Lesson one. Only one project should be open. Lesson one. So, so guys, do you see some columns here? Yes, we see some columns. You switch off the Gantt chart. Have you switched off? Okay, now there are certain columns we don't need. We don't need the remaining duration. We don't need the scheduling percentage complete. We don't need at this stage. Actually, these columns are useful when we are executing the project, not right now. In the planning stage, we don't need these columns. Oh, okay, guys. So guys, we are going to configure the columns. To configure the columns, you right click here in the empty space and you select the columns option. So guys, do you see a column toolbox here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let us expand it and let us increase the font size to the Vardana 9. So Abdul, you change the Did font I, size. For some reason, I cannot right click and open. So uh, right click is to be done with the mouse. Uh, see, okay. I'm, I'm sure uh, you are not using the trackpad. No, no, I'm using a mouse. Okay. Because... I've been using laptop since a long time, but I still can't use the trackpad. Okay. Okay, I'll wait for you here. So I'm holding here. So make sure that you can get the column toolbox. See, if you can't right click, then I can right click. You just share your screen. I will right click for, for you. One second. <clears throat> Maybe there could be some uh, some problem with the mouse, so that's not a problem. So what happened with your activity? Okay, so first of all, we get the GAN chart. So why is it hanging here? Part of the screen, no, it is hanging here. Is it hanging? Oh. No, what is this on the right-hand side? It's, I don't know, it just came just now. Okay. Okay, let, let me see if I can right click here. So I should be able to right click here and columns. Oh, okay. So are you using the double screen? It is a part of the double screen or what? Yeah, double screen, right? Yeah, so you uh, grab it and bring it here. Yeah, yes, yes, fine, yes. Okay, so after that, so you just touch it. See guys, see if you drag it from the corner, you will see a double-sided arrow, right? So it expands at a 45 degree angle. Now here, you click on this small little triangle and then you select a table font and row. And then you uh, select the font Vardana 9 number because we have got some space here. And so that's why we'll select a bigger font here so that we are more the comfortable to read it, okay? Because you know why I'm asking you to select the Vardana font? Because uh, after some time, you will be working at a very fast pace. You will be in the middle of a project. You will be surrounded by people. You will be under pressure from boss and client. So, you know, you should not be making a mistake in reading things on the screen. So in the, in the beginning itself, the environmental factor should be made conducive. 
Okay. Now, select the remaining duration column and send it back. Send it back home. See, this is the home. Do you see that it has gone to the group durations? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Logical. Yeah. So it shows you. See, Primavera is also telling you where this column belongs to. Okay. See, this is interesting. Now you select the schedule percentage complete and click on the return button. You will see the home. So guys, which home is this? Percent completion. Percent completion. In, in the future, you want to get this column again. If you can re recall from your memory, so you can come to this group and you can select the schedule percentage complete and take it back. Okay, but for the timing, we don't want it. So I just close it. Okay. So what is the column I'm here for? So guys, please place your cursor on the finish like this. Have you selected the finish? Actually, I'm, I'm looking for a column called calendar, but I don't know where it is. I really don't know which group has the calendar. Now to find it, I will use the option find. So guys, please click on the triangle here. And on the top, do you see a find box? Find, click on it. And you type the partial word Kalen, C-A-L-E-N, Kalen. And then click on the find next. Okay, and close it, click on the cancel and close it. Okay, now the calendar is selected, click on the button, select button. Guys, do you see that the calendar has moved to the right side? So I'm pausing for everybody to please confirm. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, guys, there is one more column I need. That is the predecessor detail, but I don't know where it is. So what I'm going to do that, uh, first of all, I will close the group general. Then I'm going to click on the this triangle and uh, control F. Point. Click on the find and type PRED, P-E-R-E-D, just the partial word only. Okay, click find next and close this box. So guys, do you see predecessor details here? Yeah. Okay, and you select it and place it next to the calendar like this. So guys, please have a look at the demo screen here. On the demo screen, you have this... Uh, uh, columns. Um, so, Najam, you please read it out to your friends. What columns <laughs> you have? Yeah, activity ID, activity name, original duration, start, finish, calendar, predece predecessor details, and total float. Okay, guys. Do you have the same thing? Mazarul? Yes, sir. You have the same? Sandeep, you have the same? Yes, sir. Same. Yes. Abdul? Siddesh? Yes, sir. Yes, same. Okay. So, everybody, guys, please confirm that you have the same set of the columns. Actually, what you did, you have created a new layout. Yeah, this is a new layout for the activities tab. So, click on the OK. Okay. So, you have basically created new set of columns and activity tab. Now, We are going to save this layout. How to save a layout? So guys, please click on the Save As button. And you type the name. I'll just tell you what, what to write. You write here, Activity Layout By, then you write your name, Activity Layout By. Then you write your name. So in case of uh, I'm on Najam screen, he will write Najam. Guys, is this clear? So this combination of columns, you have created a layout, then click on the save. Okay, so you have done. Okay, so now, so if you have these columns, and if you have the Gantt chart, so fine. So now you go to the add, add button on the right side. You can see the add button on the right side. And you click it 14 times, one four. 
you led 14 activities. So Najam, your screen will not display right to the participants. So I'm going to Majarul yeah. screen. Okay. Right. Yes, Majarul, right. can you please share your screen? Yeah, guys, look at the demo screen. So insert 14 activities by clicking on the plus symbol. So you just see you have got seven, you can add more. Good, correct, very good. See guys, you have got 14 activities now. What do you need to do? You need to optimize the size. See, you give it the right size to the columns, right? So that you can see the maximum data, start and finish. You can expand till you see the time part and uh, you can see the corporate. Then what you do, switch on the Gantt chart and bring the Gantt bar in the middle like this, right? Now, how to get the activity timeline? So you click here in front of the tip of the arrow, double click, kit kit. So once you do it, the activity bar will be traced and find out. Click on the Gantt chart here, on the tip of the arrow here, double click. Do you see that? Huh? Okay, now if you click here at the tip of the arrow, see the bar will go to the point where you do the double click here. Now do the double click here. Okay, now guys, you are seeing a red line to remove the red line. We don't need it right now. So you click on this button to remove the red line here. So this is the data tracking line. We will need it on the tracking time. Okay, click this progress line. We don't want to see the uh, progress. We don't need it because we have to first plan. Now guys, if you look at the scale, so what is the scale showing? It is showing you the quarter and the month, but you know, this scale is too condensed. So these activities are small duration, right? So it would be better if I could use the scale of week and day. It will show the week and then it will show me the day. Now, how do I expand the scale? Very simple. To expand the scale, I will click on the lens plus button. Do you see this lens like button plus that is the zoom. So once more. Okay, guys. Now, what do you have, guys? You have the, you have the week and the day. So once again, double click here and the activity. Now, do you see the activity bar is now clearly visible? So, you know, you can little bit trim your display like this stretch and stretch to a point where it is comfortable and yet optimal like this. Okay, guys, is this clear? Okay, you have done to the same point. Okay, yeah. now guys, what do you do since you have just made changes in the layout? So you are going to click on the save layout. Save this, save the existing layout. Save layout, click it. Yes. So the structure which you have created, it includes table, Gantt chart and the details. So three parts will be saved exactly like this. And it's going to look the same when you load the primavera next time. Okay. Now guys, just do one thing. You close all the tabs one by one. So come to the, this cross button and click it, close it. Close this also. Close this also. And close this also. So guys, what do you see? It's a totally blank screen. Hmm? You see the screen is totally blank. Now, what do you see on the top? Hmm? LS, LS and one. One, one, calendar, yeah, this calendar. project is still loaded in the memory. Only the activity view has been closed. So guys, there is a button here. I'm going to mark it. Please note the shape and the color. Okay. This is going to open the activity tab. So click on it. Do you see the activity tab has come? Okay. Now... Yeah. If I ask you to open the WBS tab, it is the next one. It is the blue one. So that's going to open the WBS. So WBS and activities are inside the project. If the project is loaded, then these tab will come. Otherwise, they are not going to come. Now do control W. 
if you do control w see that what happens to most of the buttons they will get deactivated unload the project from the memory control w yes done okay guys yeah. now if you look at the inter interface you'll find most of the buttons are inactivated why they are in inactivated because these buttons are connected to the project work if the project is not lo loaded into the memory you can't work on them right so that is why primavera deactivates this button and what does it say on the top read no current project yeah so it means the complete sentence is like this no current project loaded in the memory right okay right. now guys what we will do we will exit the prima where and load it once again and what do we expect to see tell me if i exit and then we did some setting what we wanted to see in the beginning we did a the setting in which we told the prima vera even even if i close all the project show me a list of the projects once again when you load okay guys okay now let's see that if that is happening i should not be seeing a blank screen so do file exit and load the prima vera again exit yeah so log in into the prima vera So what do you see guys? You are seeing the list of the projects here, right? Yeah, yeah. That is good. Why that, 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 that is good? It gives you the, the assurance everything is fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Suppose if I saved with the layout in which I've removed the bottom portion. See, I just made a setting. I removed the bottom portion and I am going to exit. Okay. So if I exit and I load the Prima Vera once again, so, you know, it will show you the same, exactly the same structure of the layout. See, see this, do you see that? No, uh, no Gantt chart and no bottom layout. Okay. Now just watch. Now mother, just do this thing. Uh, click on the Gantt chart and include the Gantt chart also. Now you divide the screen 50-50. Vertically, you make it 50-50. And note one thing. See, mm -hmm. see, in, engineers should have a very sharp eye. See, it is uh, aligned under the filter icon, right? Okay, so keep that in mind. Now you save the layout here. Save the layout here. Yeah, okay. After you have saved, now guys, exit. File exit. Okay. Now load the Primavera again and look at the structure of the screen finally. What do you observe? Where is the divider bar? Is it exactly in the same spot? No, it is not exactly no. in the same spot. Maybe you did not save it, but someone can confirm uh, is your divider bar has come on the, the same spot? Wait See. A second. If I place it here and save the, the layout, let me refresh this. Let me save the layout. Let me see. See, normally it happens. It comes exactly on the same spot only. Uh, let me exit. And let me start it once again. So you can enter the password. So normally it should come exactly on the same spot. Okay. It does. It comes with the same structure, same layout, same spot. It remembers. So it's not happen, happening exactly. Okay, so that's not, not a problem, but at least it is showing you the data. Okay, and it is showing you two parts of the screen at least. Okay, so guys, is that fine? Okay, now to, tomorrow we are going to learn the scheduling with the calendars. Okay, so scheduling. 
Okay. So sh scheduling means creating start and finish time for activities that is scheduling. Right. Perfect. So guys, we are on time. Okay. Now, be, be, before I close, I want you guys to ask me questions. Questions, please. I love questions. Any questions on project management? Any questions on the Primavera interface? Sir, if I, sir, suppose if I want to have my own project, I don't want to see all these enterprises, all those things. If I want to build my own things. So, good question. Every time if I am opening, I am getting the same thing, right? Uh, yeah, okay. good question. See, guys, what Kranti is asking, he doesn't want to get into the lesson or the training database since he's working in a company. So he would like to keep the company database separate. Right, guys? Is it clear? You would also need it. You will also, because his question is your question and his answer is your answer also. You also need that answer. Now, see, now, uh, Kranti, please share your screen. I will make you create, uh, let's say you want to create a database for the company. You will create it step by step. So first of all, you exit from here you exit then you start the primavera once again and hold it here hold it here see see guys step by step how to create your own blank database blank without any sample data okay nothing will be there so you click on the edit database at the configuration now you click on the add here okay click on the add now here you select SQL light on the right side and write your desired name of the new database, write your desired name, your company name or, or whatever it is that your department. Yeah, good. Very good. Very good. Yes, correct. Now you have to select add a new because you are creating a brand name, right? Okay. Now click on the next. Now enter the login and password here. Login and password. So you here you can use something which you want to keep confidential, not the admin admin stuff. Now click on the next. Here you uncheck this box. Hold, hold, hold. Uncheck this box. See guys, what is the meaning of this? You are no longer learning. You don't need any sample data, right, guys? Is it clear? Okay. Now definitely you wouldn't keep it here you will browse to your primavera database folder now you put the same name here which you created in the connection string here to write the name of the database and when you're writing the name of the database instead of the space you put here underscore character it is a best practice do it it is good Now you save it. See, this is the location on the hard disk and this is the database. Nasin main work DB with underscore of course. Okay, now click on the save and uh, click on the okay, click on the test. So that's fine. See, right now, guys, I want you to notice something. Where is the tick mark on the NASIN or the training? Okay, NASIN. NASIN. It means that when you do the login, it will be login into the NASIN. Now, you have to exit from here. Click on the cross button here. Now, you enter the exactly the same admin and password which you created at, for the NASIN. Now, what do you see here? Nothing. What do you see? The brand new configuration, which you have to do all by yourself. Right, guys? Is it clear? So not even this uh, layout also. See, layout, tabs, yeah. everything is, has been changed. Everything you have to do it. You have to do it only once. Or else, what you can do? As someone was asking, what do I do? So what you can do? You can create a copy of the training database and remove the sample data. Empty it out. Or what you can do just for the sake of practice, you do the 
uh, configuration of the buttons once again. You will have to do configure the button. You will have to configure the currency. You will have yeah. to do all the setting. You have to create the material master. Sir, uh, how can we uh, enter a file, sir? A format file or as a format into this new one? Old no, format. That is not possible. It is database based. It is not a file based. Okay. It is not possible. So when you are creating a new database, it is creating a new one. Okay. It's yeah. a, it's just just like a landing on the planet Mars. Okay. And you have to do can everything. We and, can we open a new file, sir? A new file from the a new file means already a worked file and transferred right. from our database. No, can you're going to transfer, but what you can do, you can do a trick. So let me show, show you the trick. Okay. Let me show you the trick. Okay. So what you can do. See, th this is the trick. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do. I'm going to name it as student. Right, guys? Is it clear? Yeah. I've created a co copy from the training. Now, you start the Primavera. <coughs> And click on the uh, edit database configuration. See, I'm going to add it like this. Okay. And add a connection to an existing, not a new, because I created the database all the already, right? I'm going to click the next and I will browse to the folder. So this folder is on your D drive and D, D, D. Okay, D drive, where is the D drive? Just wait. Okay, work area, Primavera, database, Nasin work tool. And then I'm going to save it. So it is a connecting test connecting. So test connection is successful. Now you enter the login and password for the training database because it's a copy of the training. Okay, right guys. Actually, it's a co copy of the training. All the settings are here. Everything is here. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to just get rid of the data. So I go into the WBS. Okay, so right now, so let me do this thing. Let me see if I can delete. So let me uh, delete this, not like this, but uh, let me select the level two. You are about to delete 63 EPS element. This action cannot be under. Are you sure you want to continue? You said yes. So what it is doing right now, it is delete, deleting the portfolios. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, another one question, sir. Just wait. Uh, Just wait. Wait for it to complete. Absorb it. Absorb it. Okay. Now see. Now you have to rename it also because you have renamed it outside. Right? Yes. We don't need this also. So wh what do you do? You have all the setting. You just add um, the, just one one second. Uh, oh, I need to save the, save this time. Uh, just one second, one second, one second. You need to add a portfolio. So you can say, Nasin, just wait. Uh, let me help you. Nasin one. You can re rename this later. Now, let me add a project here. So, so new select the new EPS. So we have selected next. So new project. So you can say project 
वन प्रोजेक्ट वन एंड यू आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट दिस प्रोजेक्ट फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट ऑफ द जैन और यू आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट इट इन द न्यू ईयर सो सपोज इफ इट इज ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड सर देन आल्सो आई कैन डू राइट see already you, if you have started you should select a date from which you plan to do the work in the remaining part okay. i have already told you do not plan for the past no sir i will not plan the things but i can uh, uh, suppose if i if i say suppose in a building there are 10 activities only one activity has been completed i will name it but uh, if it is, i i have to enter the progress right at least i need to schedule it right no you will ne ne never be able to catch up and complete the project and the project will be slipping away while you are planning for the past activities okay so that is my experience and i am telling you straight away okay see once you add the first activity it will be scheduled from the first date of the project what is the first date of the project 2nd january monday 2023 it will be like this okay so you plan for the activities which are re remaining okay after you have completed the project so what you can do for the archival process you add the past activities separately okay then you merge the two and you will have a complete pro project data for someone to refer in the future okay so this way so what trick did i do i created a copy of the training and i removed all the data now you have all the setting minus the data right guys is it clear yes sir yes sir okay so toolbar so i go to the activity create you don't need this toolbar okay guys so this is the best that you can do so right now you exit and whenever you load if you want to load into a particular database just make sure that you select it from here so right now which one is selected right as in main work 2 it is having the tick mark suppose you want to go into the training so you bring it here after selecting you should do test the test will tell you whether you are able to connect because your database could be in the us you could be connecting you should test that the connectivity because if you come to know at the time of logging that the, you are not unable to connect the database either due to the internet connection gone mi missing or uh, there is something wrong in the database so you will come to know now after you have Okay, now you enter the admin and the admin password here. <sighs> so now you will log in into the training, right? Okay, so I'm sure that answers your the question. Yes, sir. Satisfactorily. Yes, sir. Good. So any more questions, guys? Relax, feel relaxed. We are not going to rush out of here. We we don't have to catch a train or tram or metro or we don't have to catch a cab. okay so sleepy sir ha <laughs> ah, sleepy yes you should be sleeping okay. i am so tired i'm so tired okay, guys now what to do sleep go to sleep <sighs> do nothing no facebook no whatsapp okay no no just sleep just relax yourself but guys you'll have to leave your laptop on for the 3 hours because 8 hours of the training would require 3 hours of the conversion time so let your laptop convert the data leave the laptop on okay now it will start the conversion process so one more thing tomorrow everybody will come with two questions so guys please think two questions write it and come to me with ma in the morning okay tomorrow morning we'll start with two questions two questions for what regarding the project management regarding the primavera interface regarding the setup regarding what you can do just like kranti asked this question that's a good one so like that you should come with two questions everybody sidesh right sidesh Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Good questions. Okay. Okay. Fine. Good. So, guys, good night and relax and rest. And do not think about the rest of the world. Okay. So for three days, you just keep yourself in the the isolation mental. Okay. Okay. Rest.